Right. Welcome back. All you plague, egg, and rot-ridden devotees of Nurgleth. Gonna have another look at um, gonna have another look at Nurgle mechanics. Um, I'll just jump into the campaign now. So playing a legendary difficulty. Um, these are the faction effects of Nurgle. Should all be familiar with that by now. Jumped in here. Um, yeah, I've tried. I've had a couple of goes at Nurgle already, but um, I think there's still. I think there's still a general like dismissal of Nurgle in the community that Nurgle is just bad. Um, and I think Nurgle is different and maybe Nurgle is a little bit weaker than the other factions, but I think there's a lot, there's a lot of cool stuff in Nurgle basically. And, you know, I've, I've always felt that way since I first started playing, playing the faction. I always felt there was, you know, good stuff in Nurgle and um, we just have to kind of find it. So I'm, um, yeah, thought I'd have another look at Nurgle and, uh, and uh, see if we can... Approach. Find some gold. Advise it or shut the fuck up. Um, yeah, so. Um, okay, so basically, a couple of things I wanted to check out with Nurgle. So, the first thing is their, is their units, right? So, by now, probably most people know that the Kugath plus Nurglings is really, is really strong. The Nurglings become super tanky, um, and you just have this kind of like indestructible blob that just regenerates and can soak up missile fire and all this kind of stuff. Um, and you can just, even though they're not that exciting, they just eventually will grind down enemies um, as long as Kugath's there to like buff them and, and keep them regenerating and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, Kugath himself gets gets the hell crap shot out of him. Like he's a big target for missiles, even though he has a lot of, he, he has a lot of health um, and that's pretty much his own defense, his only defense against missile fire. Um, <clears throat> it does work in most cases, but yeah, you can find him really suffering under missile fire sometimes. So that's probably like the one weakness of the, um, uh, and, and sort of really powerful AOE magic that hits all of the entities. That's like the two things that are really powerful against the Nurgle, the Nurgle blob, I guess. Hey guys, welcome, welcome everyone. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of known, um, with your starting units, early units, you get the Beast of Nurgle that regenerates and also gives you this extra um, debuff on enemies of the Slime Trail, 15 meters around him, um, and also gives you your uh, Cloud of Flies, um, although Nurglings also have the Cloud of Flies. <coughs> um, you also start off with some Rot Flies, um, which are really, really useful. Um, but with a, with Nurgle's weak, like economy being weak early on, I'm I'm sort of still tossing up whether or not you want to keep them or you want to get rid of them. 300 gold, you know, is a lot, especially when your Nurglings are, um, you know, heavily discounted by um, by Kugath when they're in his army. So like compared to Nurglings, they're expe extra spe extra um, expensive, and they are super useful when you use them. But in a lot of battles, you don't really need them. Um, so I'm sort of tossing up whether to keep them or not. Um, the plague toads are okay, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, f I don't feel like they're really worth keeping at the start of the game with the, you know, um, the um, and same with the plague the uh, plague bearers that you start off with. I, I mean, they they're good, they're okay, you know, um, but I don't know if they they really do anything. They're really that great in the start. Um, I think that the things that you want to go for probably with Nurgle are their heroes. Um, so they're plague ridden hero uh, that you can get at tier three of their main building, and their cultist hero that you can get at tier three of their minor settlements. That's where you, that's how you unlock um, construction of the heroes. The the main the main settlement building, the primary settlement, has unlocks uh, plague ridden, and the minor settlements um, unlock cultists. But neither of those increase capacity. In order to in order to increase your hero capacity, you need to get um you need to occupy settlements that have trade resources. Every trade resource gives you plus one capacity for plague ridden and plus one capacity for cultists. So yeah, so the heroes are both really good. The um the plague ridden can be massive heals and damage dealers and um, fly around on rot flies, give them mobility if you want, or you can keep them in the blob on foot in your blob of nurglings or whatever for protection. Uh, the cultists are great because they can be mounted on horses to give you speed, uh, which is one thing that the nurgling, that nurgles lacking. Um, so if you get cultists, put them on horses to give you the speed and, you know, you can use them to like dodge enemy, uh, you know, waste enemy ar arrows. Um, they've also got summons. So you can summon, put summons on enemy artillery, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so I think focusing on getting heroes as early as possible and getting as many of them as possible is probably a good idea. Um, uh, soul grinders. So everyone says the soul grinders are like the best unit of Nurgle, and um, yeah, I 
yeah, that probably is probably correct. I probably agree with that. Um, but they are tier five um, and they're pretty expensive. So you've got to overcome that economic difficulty to be able to afford them and you've got to get to tier five. Now, tier five is not like hard to get to for Nurgle. Nurgle's got like what the highest growth rate in the game, probably. Um, potential growth rate with all their plagues and everything. Um, they're tier three. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, tier three. Yes, they are, they are tier three. Yeah, sorry. I, yeah, I just saw the five there and yeah, totally forgot. Yeah, sorry. Um, thanks for that. Um, thanks for that, Patrick. Uh, you're completely right. So yeah, sorry. Um, Soulgrind is a tier three. Um, but yeah, you can get to tier three like extremely fast with Nurgle because you've got um, probably one of the highest growth rates um, of any faction, except for maybe Corn, I guess. Um, uh, with corns, um, with corns, blood hosts, but um, but yeah, you can stack multiple plagues that give you growth. Uh, plus, you get decent growth from your buildings as well. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of all I wanted to say right now about units. I'm not going to go on talking too much more in the preamble, but um, yeah, also want to quickly talk about plagues as well. So, with the plagues, um, a lot of people have commented. Uh, a few people have commented that on legendary difficulty, the plagues that do attrition to the enemy don't really um don't really do much damage to the enemy like the on legendary the enemy doesn't take that much damage from attrition they're able to, able to overcome it and stuff but some other people say that um uh stopping the people stopping the enemy's replenishment can be really good um you could have damaged them and then their armies don't replenish and, and stuff like that um where's your face okay i'll put my face on sorry guys i just wanted you to listen to my words you know care about my my informations. Where is my face? I don't know, my face is not working today. There you go. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't know what happened to the, um, you know, the webcam. It was like, it was on before. And yeah, I just, I don't know, it stopped working for some reason. That's weird. Um, you basically spam soul grinders for recruitment in a single province. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things I want to go for in this campaign. Um, so yeah, I just want to give a quick quick shout out to the to the um, plagues. So how I normally do it is I use um, transferring units between um, between armies to get lots of in, lots of um, uh, transfer like infections um, and um, sorry lots of plague spreads uh, in order to get this line first. Mainly because I want to get lots of nurglings unlocked straight away. Um, and then you can, if you get down to here, then you can get your Plague Bearer Summon, which you can, if you put this Plague onto your own army, then you can summon two units of Plague Bearers per battle, which is really useful. Um, and then um, you can get this um, this one for your, um, later on for your armies, which gives you the Plague Bearer Summons and it gives you 250% sacking and income, uh, sacking and looting in income from settlements. So if you have this on your own army and then you take a settlement, you'll be able to summon two units of Plague Bearers and you'll be able to sack the enemy army for, um, for plus 250% um, of them, what you would normally get. So you get decent money that way. Um, another way to do it is to get um, play and, um, like and then if you unlock down to mucus runs you get this really powerful symptom vanguard deployment for all units in your army so another way to do it is put another put a plague on your army that combines that you make yourself that combines this and this so you get plague bearer summon and you get vanguard deployment for your whole army because you're very slow this will allow you to just you know deploy directly on you know, in front of the enemy army so there's less time they can shoot at you and you can get to them faster and all that kind of stuff um, I've also found that this symptom that gives plus plus 150 um, gold when plague is spread, it's not that great, like early on especially, um, and it doesn't seem to give you the gold when it spreads um, plague between armies. So if you're spread, spreading the plague back and forth between your armies, you won't get heaps of gold. Um, it seems to g give you the 150 gold every time it spreads to a settlement though. So if you can, um, yeah, if you can get this get this plague um, out, spread it out onto some cultists and spread you know, spread it around to a few, you'll start getting, you'll notice you'll get 150 gold in, uh, straight away when you infect a settlement. And then, you know, you'll get a few hundred gold as it spreads around to different settlements. So it can help a little bit. Um, <clears throat> um, if you've got the extra infections to be able to just kind of spamming out plagues everywhere, you, you know, if you can get this going, it's 150 when you first create it. Plus, you know, if it spreads, you get more. 
Um, and then I oh, yeah, just I think probably oh, there's probably heaps to talk heaps to talk about with plagues, but just one more thing I'll just talk about with growth. So if you unlock this plague, you have to unlock plague pox, brain fog, and paroxysm symptoms before you can create this plague. Um, then you get um, plus fifty growth on Nurgle settlements, right? Um, and then there's also um, where were the other one? And then there's also this one that gives plus 25 growth on Nurgle settlements. So you can, in fact, actually infect settlements with both of these symptoms at the same time. So you get plus 75 growth per region. Um, so if you have a four, if you have a four region province, you know, then that's plus 300 growth just from these, you know, from these two plagues. So that's why, you know, you can get quite a lot of growth, basically. Um, then there's actually other growth stuff you can get as well. Um, all right. So that's pretty much all we've got to say about plagues right now um i'm just gonna quickly try to fix the uh webcam um boosting military cycle time helps get excess quicker too yeah thanks harry mitchell yeah good call um i really don't know what's going on with my camera like it was just working a second ago i'm just gonna stop the stream like the stream will still be on but you'll just be seeing a black screen i'm just gonna stop that for a second and restart my obs and see if that does anything <clears throat> Oh, there we go. I'm back. My beautiful plague ridden self. All right. Um, all right. Let's get some. Uh, let's get some campaign play going. But anyway, so that's where my head's at. That's the stuff that I'm interested in investigating. Um, you guys have already uh, already contributed some. Thanks for correcting me on that soul grinders tier three thing. I knew that they were tier three. I don't know. I just I was so into what I was saying. I just was like reading off the screen and yeah. Um, if you jump between Chaos Realms when an enemy faction is present, you can summon plague cultists to infect their army. Good for faraway factions. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great call, Harry Mitchell. If we get to the plague, if we get up to the uh, rift uh, area, then we can um, we can uh, do that. Um, I might just infect Nogleth with, um, with this plague straight up. That's going to give us um, uh, one plus one uh, Nurgling. There's some. So currently, if we want to summon some units. We can get six Nurglings. Um, so if we just uh, quickly infect Nurgle, infect Kugath with this. Um, that will give us, um, that will give us seven Nurglings. Um, so I might hire all of them. I'll reduce you to pass. What's that? Uh, yeah, and that. What's that? 4785. This is pretty broke. Hmm. That's right. That's, yeah. Cool. I was just trying to think if we needed any money. But yeah. but no, we're, we're fine. We don't need money. Um, and uh, oh yeah, technology. So yeah, this um this one's good. Gives you the plus 150 gold per turn uh, per plague. Sorry. Um, growth. Uh, no. Um, Leadership for Nurgling units could be okay. You just want to get like you need to get four of these to like kind of go to the next tier. Um, Stand growth with please. is plague fresh poppies the build the uh, no rancid aloe is the one that we want for uh, our soul grinders. Uh, plague fresh poppies is this one. Um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, if anyone's got any thoughts about the correct order to research the technologies, let me know. Um, I guess we're going to go. We're going to go for four of these. So I guess we'll go for this. I want to unlock this eventually. The plus one fifty gold. Um, I guess we could go for growth. Kind of want the plus four and the leadership on Monoglings. And I guess we should go for the cycle time. It's not like the fast. Like if we went for like two, two, three, three, that would be the fastest possible way we could get into the second tier. But you know, we would miss out on some stuff that we probably want to get, come back and get later. So you know, um, this isn't going to be that useful early on. I'm just go for the growth first. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. It's not like a huge difference. Get into a battle. Uh, yeah, so I'll fight this first battle manually just so I can get some 
like the maximum amount of infections that we can get out of it. Hey, McLeod, finish your guard duty. Good job. I uh, enjoy the heroes for Nurgling, Nurgle, especially as you can get infinite wins. Oh, yeah, that's something I didn't even talk about. Uh, sorry, Harry. So, yeah, so their offensive, offensive capability is the thing that, like, a lot of people, like, decry, is decry the right word, about um, Nurgle, that they don't have much offense. Um, but, yeah, if you get um, if you get the heroes, the heroes can get pretty good magic. Um, and, um... Yeah, heroes can get pretty good magic. And, um... Um, also, you can get allies. So yeah, another thing that like uh, I heard about that was pretty fu pretty fun that I kind of wouldn't mind doing as well is um, getting allies from um, getting allies from the from Throt. Um, so you know Throt can give you plague sensor monks, uh, you know plague mortars, plague claw ca catapults, all like all very thematic pl plague you know all very thematic plague uh, things, and also um, and also. Um, powerful ranged offense, you know, which is something that that Nurgle lacks. So yeah, so going allies with um, going allies with um, Brot could definitely be a, go a goer. Skaven units are amazing with Nurgle. Yeah, I think they would be pretty cool. Yeah, a little carpet of Nurglings. This is what I love about Nurgle, just this like carpet of blob. Just all these like filthy, disgusting things like all mixed together. It's great. That's oh, shit. That was not meant to be like that. Oh shit, I already screwed up. <laughs> no, I can't get my uh, beast killed. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I put my beast in that group. I meant to just have the rock flies with the with the bats, but I don't know. Just sent the sent the beast out there as well. Yes. Um. Yeah, we can cast uh, this spell to uh, weaken the enemy ogre lord, so it doesn't do as much damage to us. Let's take our Furious. It's okay. I'm going to disband them after this battle anyway. Actually, no. I was going to disband them after I took the settlement, but that's fine. Hellpit Abominations and Brood Horrors work so well in Nurgle Armies too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be really good. Because you get that regeneration. Oh, yeah. So we're going to kill like all of the fleeing units. So we get the maximum amount of infections. Shouldn't take too long. Keep debuffing this Lord so it doesn't do too much damage or we slowly grind him down. was pretty fun as long as you do everything possible to speed up the building cycle and unlock all the plague symptoms roster feels ironically thin though <laughs> yeah that's right yeah you gotta unlock all the plague symptoms um the plague's pretty fun to fun hang around with you also want to maximize every like field battle to get like heaps and heaps of infections then you can really play around with the plagues um yeah we got our regeneration back up on our beast our beast now should be at full health really but i screwed up and nearly got him killed at the start there that's a bit of a good work at my start but it's okay 
We need you to stay in this blob, otherwise we're going to have trouble catching him, so... Just to keep... Yeah, it's not point putting that on him, actually. It doesn't do anything. Uh, we could poison him, but it would poison our own guys as well, so it's not really that good. Um, how many of these guys left? Nine. Having trouble killing these Nublars. Thin, yeah. It's ironic. Yeah, the blob, the blobs are really inefficient for like doing fast damage, which is good for you because you makes you more tanky, right? But it's bad for like killing stuff because, um, it may, like all your units kind of get in each other's way and they barely actually hit the unit and stuff. So it takes a, it takes a while. But um, who guys should personally take him down because he's got the mass to push through the other guys and should occasionally hit him yeah we're like slowly doing tiny little bits of damage just getting there rot flies rot flies rot flies yeah um last time i used rot flies it really it screwed my economy um but i did i was playing pretty non-optimally economically so you know maybe that was partly my bad i don't think i'm gonna migrate so hard this time i might sort of migrate up to the i was sort of I think you might migrate up to the northwest. Actually, that's a good idea. Yeah, what do you guys got any um, thoughts about strategic play? Like, who should you take out first? You know, that kind of stuff. My basic plan is to occupy all of my starting settlement and maybe wipe out the dwarfs or maybe not. Um, and then um, I can either spread from there northwest. I was sort of thinking keeping this as my front line and spreading backwards towards the le top left corner um, or actually trading one of my regions to the siege faction to, to which basically sort of cuts you off. And I found in multiple previous games that if you've got that as each infection guard guarding your border, just no one crosses it. And they, you know, you're, um, you can just leave your capital there undefended basically. So we could do that once we get to tier three if we wanted to. All you need is one rot flies to act as your act as your blob anti single entity unit. <coughs> yeah, but we don't really need a single entity unit though. I've found. And like, and normally you spend the whole game babysitting them. Like they, like I, I find like ninety percent of battles, the rot flies just sit at the back, out of range of the enemy uh, enemy shooters, just to not getting shot. So we've got eighty nine infections. If I'd have auto resolved that, I probably would have got about fifteen infections. So yeah, that's why you want to like. Put, like if you can auto resolve a siege battle without taking highness casualties which probably you won't be able to do um then you know that's um that's good but for field battles you can get like hundreds of infections from um from fighting them manually so you probably want to do that in most cases ally has joined your ranks embed them in your army Lemon Fledge says he's done quite a bit of testing with Nurgle and next Northwest is the best option. Yeah, um, yeah, I've done Northwest as well and it was pretty good. But um, yeah, so basically you've got like, so basically we want to take over, we should be able to take um, all four of these regions in about six turns. I think it takes six turns to take these. Um, and then by that time the dwarfs will come down here, we can ambush them and destroy their armies. And then we can follow up and destroy their settlements if we want. Um, and then we can kind of like maintain this area if we like and then start to like kind of spread out this way but it's going to be hard to defend this like without if our main army is up here so another option what we can do is just hold this for a little while until we get this up to tier three then trade um trade this region to um the flaming scribes of zinch and then just abandon these two regions so we'll just have our capital with our uh, with our soul grinder factory um but that, but I find that yeah, if you put if you trade these units as each, like the, nothing down here will attack you, at least not for ages, um, and you can just yeah, just leave it there by itself, and it'll just like not get attacked. Having you know, that's in the last three campaigns I've done that and it's worked. But obviously, having said that, like this time it won't, it won't work, obviously. But you know, it's Murphy's Law. But you know. um, who gets campaign rock flies only? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey Christian, here you go, man. Um, yeah, so I'm really torn on the rot flies thing. Like, I want rot flies because they're a fun unit and they're fast and all that good stuff. But, like, do I nearly need them? Like, is it really just... Am I just being greedy by having them, you know?
Uh, and yeah, we got an infection then, by the way. So we just infected the enemy army before they got wiped out. So that was pretty pretty cool. Settlements are pretty easy to do the towers. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, which which tower do you think is the best for Nurgle, uh, Lemon Pledge? Do you have an uh, uh, idea on that? Perfect experiment. The fated Blue Master. Such power. Nurgle has not a single unit that can deal with large single enemy monsters aside from lock rock flies. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying you don't need one. Like, you don't need one. You just kill all their troops and then you just, like, exactly what I did then. Even though it took forever. You just, like, kill all their troops and then you just surround their like, their lord with the massive blob and just wait till they die eventually. You know, what, they can't do anything, so what difference is that? Like? That's what I'm saying. Like, you don't really need the rough flies. Like, the rough flies are cool, like, you know, if you ever need, if you ever need them, but you just never really need them, I've found, you know? Hey, um, do you have a, win a video explaining how to get infinite wins? Haven't been able to figure it out just yet. Um, yeah, uh, Brian, now I don't have a video of it. I should make it. I make a video. I feel like it's sort of like Legends thing though, but I don't know, whatever. It's fine. Um, oh yeah, this guy doesn't have it, but basically what you need to do is there's a there's a skill that um, un that um, Plague Ridden of Death, so not the Plague Ridden at all, Plague Ridden of Death. They have a passive um, called, I ah, forget what it's called now. Um, they have a passive anyway that gives them like um one percent uh one percent one uh, one wins of magic per second or something i can't remember what it is now it gives them it gives them a certain amount of magic per uh, reserves uh magic reserves per second while they're casting a spell so um for like 10 or 15 seconds after that and the way that the game works is like every time if you're down to zero wins of magic right then so you got no reserves at all. Then when you cast that spell, it'll give you like 0.1 or 0.001 or whatever of a wind of magic. But then the game rounds that up to one. And then because your um, life leeching is the name of the skill, yeah. And then because your um, replenishment is, you know, replenishing all the time, as soon as that one, like one, one comes up, it'll go into your active pool. And then because the life leeching is still going, increase another point one, and then it'll round up to one. And then the, and then your replenishment will put that into your pool. So um, it, it's like basically it'll slowly give you, give you wins of magic. But then if you have like arcane conduit that increases your power recharge rate by 40%, then that means... 40% more often, you're going to get a recharge come from your reserves into your main. So it'll it'll happen faster. And if you have like five guys with Arcane Conduit, then it'll happen much faster. You know, so basically you just have to have one guy with life leeching and that guy cast a spell, ideally a spell with a low winds of magic cost, and then have heaps of guys with Arcane Conduit so that it's just leeching it in really fast. Yeah, it's basically, it's basically the simple version is you just need to have lots of guys, you need to have lots of power recharge rate. So lots of guys with arcane conduit and you just have to have one death caster that's got life leeching and they cast spells and then they cast a small wind, winds of magic spell. It'll give you back more wins than you spent. Right, Rift Flies are surprisingly good against Dwarf Artillery and Crestbot. Oh yeah, that was the other unit I was actually thinking about. Like, um, forgot to mention. Um, yeah, so the other one is if we're gonna go, if we're gonna build this building right to go for uh, Soul Grinders, the other thing it gives us access to is Forsaken of Nurgle. Now, Forsaken and Nurgle, like, they're they're pretty cool. Um, but the big thing about them compared to other Nurgle stuff is they're fast. You know, forty-two for infantry. They're faster than any of the Nurgle infantry, and they're faster than all other factions' infantry. Well. They're, they're faster than normal, like, human-type infantry. They're not faster than, like, slash demons and stuff like that, I don't think. But, um, but yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're fast, basically, is what I'm saying. So you can use them for flanking and stuff, which you can't really do with um, any of your other, you know, any of your other guys. So, um, so yeah, that's potential, another potential thing to look at. Uh, Dasha says 120% recharge rate, so that would be three guys with Arcane Conduit, is 0.1 wins recharge per second, is around six wins recovered, and 180% is around 10 wins recovered per cast. Nice. So yeah, I don't think you need, like, you really need infinite magic, but um, but it does allow you to do stuff like have, um, you know, a bunch of plague ridden on rot flies just flying around, like dodging the enemy and just casting spells on them endlessly for the, and, and defeat them that way. Um, so yeah, we probably, I guess we should probably make an effort to do that. I wanted to make an effort to get lots of heroes anyway, just to show off that, 
you know show heroes being good basically um but um but yeah we should definitely get some infinite magic going it's just a good tool to have in your toolbox uh there's a certain i might actually try this method this direction i should just go with this direction something different Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just gonna like walk into their settlement with that blob. I'm not gonna get fancy on it. Yeah, I was thinking about um, destroying the towers, but then I thought, oh, we could probably just walk up here and then kind of avoid the towers to a degree. Oh, we could destroy them, I guess. Yeah, the rough flies will take out the towers fairly handily. They're better than Furies at doing it. Hey, Nicholas, time to download IWD since you asked in the B-Bot Battle Brothers stream, Icewind Dale. Oh yeah, Icewind Dale, is that, that's sort of the new, it's not one of the old, old Dungeon Dragons games. I used to love those really old Dungeon Dragons games, like on Commodore 64 back in the day. I know you have to be pretty old to remember that, but, um... Is that movement? Hmm. Yeah, so Rough Flows are getting effed up by the other tower. They're doing it, they're taking it out. They were taking no, it, oh, they were taking it out, then they just stopped attacking it. Um, but yeah, is it, yeah, this is what I mean, it's like, you can use them, but they kind of get wrecked, and I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to bother taking out the other one, because it's like... I'm going to park them outside of the tower range and keep them safe now. That's the thing, I feel like, like they are good, but um, they are good, like the rough flies, they're useful, they're great, you know? But, like, I spend, like, most, I spend more time worrying about them getting killed than I do actually using them for anything. Because it's just like, they're just so much less tanky than the rest of the blob, you know? Uh, we'll check some poison. Check some poison on these guys. Pretty safe from this tower now, I think, but uh, now we're getting so damage from this other tower over here. We'll see in it there. Just for a dash dash, we can get our rock flies in to attack him, but I don't think they're going to do too much. Oh, 
This is all going, uh, all going according to plan. Pretty much. Alright, we got their lord down. It's probably due to those rut flies. Thanks, Dash Dash. Slow him down so he can't get away as easy. Get him. Get him. Flies are getting wrecked. Um, I will probably go for the um, probably go for the mortis engine in progress tree first. Took out all the towers. See, we're doing very intense staring today. How wonderful! <laughs> God, how little. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, just you know, I'm I'm focusing. I'm trying to concentrate so I can deliver the best possible gaming experience for you guys. Sorry, it makes me a little bit less uh. A little bit less, you know, vivacious. Uh, we might just fast forward a little bit, get our like Nurgle back up, Nurgle Beast back up to full health. He's probably gonna generate replenish over the end turn anyway, but yeah. May as well get that little bit extra. <sighs> Hunters on stone horns and butchers for healing and offensive magic. Yeah, that's probably the strongest sack you can make. And the fur um yeah, the literal strongest that you can make, I'd say for Ogres would be stone horns with butcher healers. There's more note on the thumbnail, very iconic. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, I hope that wasn't too gross. I wasn't too really sure if that was like too disgusting to put on the thumbnail or or what, but I don't know. I thought it would be eye catching. Sorry, but the best game experience is when you play yourself. Well, I can't really help you with that there, everyone. Sorry. I can't play yourself for you. You're going to have to handle that. Some things you have to handle yourself. You love it? Okay, good. At least, at least somebody loves it. Manual aim on Cathay Junks is amazing. All right. I don't see how that's directly relevant. Oh, we lost the unit of Nurglings. I saw, I saw, I saw something pop, but I wasn't sure what it was. Um, I mean, there's going to be plenty more where that came from, but 
You know, Nurgle does like love all of his children, so I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad about that. I'm, I'm sure I could have managed that better. I should have, I should have noticed they were getting pummeled because everyone else took pretty even damage. That this one was one of the. I sent these three units in first, and um, yeah, I should have been aware that they might have taken a lot of damage. Anyway, it's okay. Um, I wonder if we would. Yeah, no, I think I'll just go with the straight occupier. I wonder if we get another infection. No, we don't. We didn't get another infection, did we? No. Would have been good if we did, though. Um, Alright, we've successfully engaged the enemy. Recruited. Yep. Recruit two units. Okay, we can do the recruit two units now. Uh, so that gives us. Yeah, that'll give us another thousand gold, so that'll be good. So we'll do that. Um, so I'll just recruit a second lord so we can bounce some infections off him I'd like to go for like four lords but I don't know, that might be a bit excessive uh, yeah we'll go for lore of death lord because if we level him up enough then he'll um, he'll actually we can actually do the infinite magic with him Okay, he gets infection, and he can give it back. Then they both get infections. Bam, bam. And then he can get it back again. No, no infections this time. So, yeah. It's weird how that works. So he should have been able to get one more infection. I don't know if it's because I infected the town that sort of reduced it somehow or something. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Anyway, so we've got a bunch of new infections now, so that means we've got more Nurglings. So we can recruit two more Nurglings, and then that'll do the quest. Boom, give us another thousand gold, so that pays, basically pays for the Nurglings. Looks good. A place that could prove very useful for your future ambitions. Take it. Yep, we will do our best to take Blackport. And do. Um, now here, we want to. I think I want to build the growth building. Just want to spam that growth until we hit tier three, then get the plague ridden, get the, then get the um, soul grinder building up. I think that's the best play here. Um, there's not really anything you can do to get extreme money out of the Nurgle um, roster, you know, like everything's kind of like about the same. Um, and the other thing we want to do is cast this uh, growth plague on. Um, Well, hmm, maybe it's not really worth it. It's going to cost us 50 infections. And we can't... We can spread it to this, I guess. Yeah, right, let's, let's do it, yeah. He can affect the town this way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Spin will affect the town as well. Get that a little bit of extra growth. And if it, and if it's if I do infect this turn, it possibly could spread to Glutport, and then we'll it'll double up, and it'll be really good. Um, but yeah, and then maybe this turn we'll do that, and then next turn we'll infect Glutport. Maybe I don't know. We'll see how we go. Yeah, now let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, we've got to commit. We're going to commit to our growth. So yes, this is going to give it cycle time minus one for infrastructure and plus 25 growth to sunken sewers. Boom, because there's 50 of our infections. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have enough, have had enough infections to do all this if we hadn't have um, fought that first battle manually. Um, so yeah, so now our growth's already up to plus 37. We haven't even built a building yet. Um, so that's really good. Um... I think, do we get, do you get growth from Nurgle Corruption? Yeah, you do, yeah. So as we get this Nurgle Corruption up more, we'll actually get more growth as well, which is really good. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, so just with the infection, so yeah, so just by passing it back and forward, we've already gotten um, eight, eight spread count. So we're up to eight out of, uh, we need uh, 50. We need 50 total to get um, get the get the summon unlocked. So yeah, that's what we're working towards. Um, let's have a quick look at... Um, oh yeah, let's check these out. So this gives you plus 20 replenishment. It's like, yeah, that's... I don't know. There's probably a situation where that could come in handy, but 
I don't really tend to use it too much. Um, when you've got multiple armies, it's good though because you can you know do it on one of them and leave them behind. Um, chance of split plague, uh, chance of plague spreading thirty percent local province. Yeah. Um, plus two hundred growth. There. That one's pretty handy. Uh, only goes for three turns though. And uh, random plague will be given to every settlement and army in this province upon completion. Yeah. See this one, I don't know because it's like it's random plagues. You know, wouldn't you rather just like give them a specific plague? I don't know. I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, maybe somebody else who's used this can comment on how effective that you think that it is. Okay, so um, the Tong um, are these guys right here. Um, now, I was thinking, I was kind of thinking about making these guys allies as well. Um, be kind of cool. Because then we could potentially get, like, they've got four, four provinces now. And if we're protecting them, like, you know, they might be able to eventually get Oh, they're at war with the... Mm, no, they're at war with the Flaming Scribes. I don't know if we want to go with... Could have, mm. So we might have to decide, basically. Because what, what I was saying before is we can use... We can, tra we can trade um, this settlement we just took now. We can trade that to the Flaming Scribes later if we want. And it'll basically cap us off from everything else in the world. And like basically nothing attacks you through there, I've found. So we could do that. And then we could just go this way and wipe out everything in here. But we'd have to we probably want to declare war on these guys if we're going to do that otherwise the flaming scribes will probably take all their stuff um although i found they seem to they seem to hang around for a fair while so i don't know maybe they'll actually beat the flaming scribes i'm not sure um mm. um so yeah, so it's really important we know whether we're going to either backstab them or we're not going to backstab them. I don't know. I kind of want to backstab them because they're so available to be backstabbed. But um, it would be kind of cool to get, like, chosen. I don't know. No, we don't know. Um, no, nah, we won't. We don't need chosen, do we? If we break Your the... Is forfeit. If you accept nah, I'm going to wait 10 turns, otherwise we're going to be treacherous. I don't know if being treacherous actually matters that much in this game, but... Do it. <laughs> do which? Do, we'll do which one? There's a few different options there. Um, so these Mega King, we definitely want to be friendly with them. So we'll, uh, we'll start that off. Get some positive relations going. Yes. You need hell cannons. Yeah, hell cannons would be sweet. Um, hmm. We babysit them though. I don't know. I mean, it seems like we're supposed to be friends with them. But the thing is, I wanted to spread up this direction. So if we're going to spread up that direction, like we're going to have to like like bypass their massive area that they control here. You know. It's going to be, like, hard work. Hell cannons, I, the hell cannons are, like, tier 5. Like, they probably won't even ever recruit hell cannons, like, the whole game. So I don't know if that's, like, a viable a viable strategy, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, this guy's going to be our main spellcaster, because Kugat's going to be focusing on his uh, personal line. Uh, so we're going to be going down here, so we can get his... Um, Get his passive ability to do damage to um, do damage to enemies. Actually, I don't know if that's even that good. I mean, it is good, but by the time we get that, I feel like we're going to have other tools, like we're going to have plague bear, plague ridden, that are going to have going to have. Um, uh, Mortis Engine, uh, not Mortis Engine, they're going to have spells and abilities that are going to be able to do good damage. Um, I wouldn't focus too much on acquiring artillery. Soul Grinders are more useful than Tier 3. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, good call. I like the blue line for the cost reduction. Yeah, I, I'm sort of thinking maybe we should go blue line. It also gives us movement range, which is super powerful. I just feel like... I don't know, like, I get through, you get through most of the game without needing this Mortis Engine, you know, because it takes a pretty long time to get up to here. And by the time you get up to here, like, you know, you're going to have a couple of Plague Ridden properly, probably. 
and like these guys get um this locus of contagion that they can cast every so often that does like really good damage um you know um in an aoe um and you get like three or four of these guys they can be just, like smashing it down you know um hmm yeah maybe i'll go maybe i will go blue line just to try something different um the only thing is like i like getting the armor and the extra health and the extra health again um to keep him alive from getting shot What are the Nurgle corruptions worth getting just to corrupt things faster as he moves through? Reading and raising, looting, recruitment cost. Hmm. Green pox. No, not green pox. Uh, black A. Yeah, the black A gives us plus 250% sacking and looting. So it can make that go even higher. Could be kind of good. Yeah, yeah, we don't really need to make wed magic a, um, a caster. Um, hey, Gl Gian Luca, um, is Nogal playable in your opinion, or is it weak compared to the other factions? Um, I think Nogal is definitely playable, Gian Luca. I had a big spiel right at the start of the stream. If you want to go back and listen to it, um, basically the whole theme of this stream is that I think you know there's a general consensus that Nogal's like weak or Nogal's shit or Nogal's terrible or whatever, um, and um, I think I feel like there's Nurgle's got a lot of cool tools, and I yeah I I, I, I mean I don't I don't know all the answers, but I feel like you know it's still worth exploring, and I think people like write, kind of write Nurgle off with that instead of like actually engaging with all of Nurgle's mechanics to you know uh, in in some cases you know in to see what's good there you know um, but yeah so the black egg is really good for that two hundred fifty percent sacking income. Um, Uh, oh yeah, Nurgle's right as well. For the twenty percent physical resistance is also really cool, um, and also uh, doing yeah your own plague with a combination of like mucus runs and like constant vomiting. Oh yeah, does anyone know how it works? Like, as I've noticed that you can get like effect, you can get symptoms from multiple plagues. Like, just say I had um, like this plague on a settlement, and I had this plague on a settlement as well. You would notice that you would get like symptoms from both of them, like kind of stacking up on the settlement. Um, does anyone know how that works exactly? Do you just fully get all the symptoms of both or does one sort of replace the other one partially but some symptoms you know does yeah does anyone know how that works because you can get like like just say this you know this one you know you could get like i don't know you could get a lot of like a plague where um you know they have i don't know like you could get this effect you know that's got cycle time and whatever and that could have like five turns on it and then you could have like this effect that's got plus six control it's got three turns on it and stuff like that i've noticed that before where you have like different symptoms have different cooldowns on them uh different different times before they're going to expire so i don't know exactly what you probably always with that you get all the symptoms of the unique plagues but they do not stack with other plagues so you do get all the symptoms of the different plagues um, but they don't stack for the place. Are you sure they don't stack in terms of um, cool, in terms of timing? Because I because th I noticed that it seemed like certain uh, certain symptoms the t the time went longer. So it's not like it stacks like you get double effect, but it's like it stacks in terms of it lasts longer. The plague weaver. I feel like actually recruitment would be pretty cheap, pretty good on this guy, because he's going to recruit a fair bit, probably. No, maybe we'll go recruitment and looter. It will supplement I saw that one plague effect that lasts longer. Yeah, yeah. It's plague stand like, stack. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so we basically want to, um, if you spread the same plague multiple times, it increases duration. Yeah, nice. Actually, yeah, let's look at this guy. So he's got duration. Nice. Nah, so it didn't play. It didn't. Um, oh, wait, no, this guy should have it twice, I think. Nah, it didn't increase, it didn't increase the duration. I think maybe if it only spreads, maybe if it only spreads naturally, then you get the duration. If you spread like multiple times in the same turn, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't increase it. Maybe. Anyway, okay, so now we're gonna like downgrade a bit, get rid of some of these expensive units. See, see what I mean? Like currently we're making 166 gold per turn, but if I get rid of this 
plague drone, then we'll be making 466 gold per turn, you know? So it's like a pretty big difference. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they are fun. They're a fun unit. Need to a no campaign, but I kind of like to slow armies. Okay, well you can get faster units, but you just need to um, wait a bit. He's going early forsaken viable speed of Nogal's units is killing me. Hey, key and chips. Um, yeah, you get you get some pretty for pretty early, but you need money. You know, that's the thing. Like Nogal, uh, Noglings are very cheap. I could have spread another, I could have spread the plague more that turn, but I didn't. Yeah, I should have done some plague spreads that turn, but I forgot. Yeah, we'll just let the plague run for a bit longer. Although we could put growth on here as well. We'll save, we'll save our infections just until we get some more infections, I think. I loot almost every city. The Rebellion... I'll loot almost every city. No good offenses are so good that Rebellions basically never win. Yeah, that's actually... Yeah, that's a good call, Colorannus. Let's do that. Loot money is how No good does... Economy does good. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then we can get more money from beating the, um, beating the Rebellions as well. So that'll be extra good. We'll get our, um, we'll get our buddy in there. Yeah, that's a really good tip, Color Um, um, I'll make a note of that. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Yeah, thanks for that, Color Good work. Good idea. Yeah, we'll st I'll, I'll put that into... So this, yeah, uh, if they're tier one, then we don't really lose anything from uh, looting it as well. So it's good. I don't think we'll. I I don't think we'll infect. I don't think we'll be able to infect the garrison in this fight. Um, but we'll. Uh, but we'll give it a try anyway. Um, yeah. So we've currently got uh, ten infections, uh, ten spreads. Sorry, on this one. So you can see at the top there, we need fifty to unlock. Where current spread counts ten. Um, so we'll just see if we get one after this battle. I don't think we will, though. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, any any tips you guys have got? Like, uh, this is the place to fucking share them, <laughs> you know? Um, we need we need tips. We need to make we need to like change the opinion of the world that Nurgle is is the best, or at least Nurgle's pretty good or okay. You have to spread back to a unit or army that are out of the plague. Yeah, no, I did. I spread it to the I spread it to from Kugath to the other army. Then I spread it from the other army back to Kugath and back to the other army again. Um, so yeah, they spread twice to the second army, but they didn't get they didn't get increased um, 
ingress increased uh, duration. So yeah, I think something about when you when you yeah something wonky about when you um, when you spread the plague back and forth via um, transferring units, it doesn't it doesn't do all the effects properly. See if we can make a rush for this and take out the towers. I'm pretty sure we're not going to make it. I guess they're just so good at like blocking you. You know, they just um, they just I don't know. They're just so good at it. What the fuck? That's not what I told him to do. Push in, push in, take out them towers. Boom, towers down. Good job. Um, I'm not sure if, I don't know, I feel like normally I don't go for the towers. I feel like it's a bad idea for some reason, but... Um, oh, I should have... Damn it, I should have switched... Um, Once you unlock Black Plague, money is an issue. The second money is insane. Yeah, the second money is pretty good. The, the loot, man, the loot money or whatever. I'm trying to drop this Lord early. Oh yeah, the Nurgle totems to give you regeneration. Yeah, I forgot about that. I started that. The Nurgle totems were the ones that actually first got me into using the um, using the buff the buff farm buildings. Um, and then, but then since I've started using the Nurgle ones, then I'm like, um, this is really, really disappointing that like none of the other races have um, like damage. I mean, uh, like regeneration, like healing stuff. This is going alright. I'm just gonna kill this lord. Make sure these guys stay targeted on him. Try not to take uh, too much damage on these guys. Crumbling Egg Plague for massive healing. I'll check that out in a bit. Have we got this Lord yet? Yeah, no, it's nearly done. I think it might be them about done. Decomposition. 
There he goes. That's actually the fastest method I've done that. Nice. The second best player is challenging himself with Nurgle's weak faction. I see. I love it. Ah, thanks, Stormrage. I'm not sure if I'm the second best player, but thank you. Very nice compliment. I know I'm not the first best, <laughs> but I'm, I don't know. I don't think I'm the second best either. If I'm in the top 100, I'd be happy. I'm not sure I'm even that, though. Right after you? Ah, oh, Storm Rage is number one, I'm number two, guys. You heard it first. Nurglings look really cool, I haven't played any of the demons yet. Oh, I definitely recommend Nurglings, uh, they're pretty cool. Nurglings completely mess up the YouTube compression. Ah, uh, really? Were you getting some, uh, like, low frame rates there? It might be, like, also if I zoom in, like, maybe it's better if I don't zoom in. So loot and occupy, not really for the 235 gold, but just to like encourage rebellions. Ah, oh, but the thing is, if we encourage rebellion, we're going to slow down their growth. It's probably only slightly though. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it, like 235 gold. I feel like you're going to get negative to growth. I just want to get growth faster with this one. Oh, this guy got spread already. Ah, oh, cool. And we got the we got the upkeep reduction for nerglings. So that's helped us a lot. The upkeep reduction from the, for the nerglings. Now uh, this book, this item's so crap now. It used to be so good. It used to be plus twenty five wind reserve. Now it's like you know meh. Yeah, so it seems like if you get if you get like a natural spread, then you don't get the extra spread. It's interesting. Um, so yeah, the basically like because we've got the rot flies, we can't have like if I didn't have the rot flies, I'd probably have an extra lord, so I'd have three lords to be able to get more spreads, and we able to get like six per turn instead of four. Um, is that right? Six or nine? No, six. I think it's six. Um, yeah, we able to get like six per foot per turn instead of nine. Hey Danny, why are you spam spamming the uh, chat with question marks and shit? Uh, I don't know why you're doing that, Danny, but it's not very cool. Dash Dash's patience is at an end. Sorry, Danny. Yeah, I always, it's weird when people do stuff like that. It's like, what, are they trying to communicate something? Or what's, what the fuck's going on? I don't know, I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm just trying to recruit. I don't really recruit that much, whereas we are going to be looting, I guess, throughout the campaign, so. I wonder if this growth is actually... I feel like it's not that big. Of, like, you know what I mean? I feel like it's a very small amount, like... Compared to, um potential growth that we can get. Looks like something fell on the keyboard or a short circuit. Yeah, maybe. Oh well. You can, you can come back after uh, 300 seconds. It's having a stroke. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Trying to warn me about Zeech's new world order. Sounds, that sounds uh, serious. Hey, I'll get rid of my show. Not much of Storm Rack Mountain. Um, I'm not going to build anything here because we're going to use this as bait to pull the dwarves out while we go and take uh, while we go and take Darko a wolf. I 
kind of want to infect this now. We're getting low on infections though. How, much, how many turns we got left here? Three turns. Uh, it should, yeah. We aren't going to get any... So we're basically going to attack this. We aren't going to get any infections from that. Or well, very minimal. And then we go back. And then we can attack the doors here. And we should get some good infections. Um... <clears throat> Just temporary stop. Yeah, he's only timed out for 300 seconds or whatever, so it's like he can come back once he's finished his timeout. And hopefully he can explain what the mystery of what that what did it all mean? What is the secret code of question marks and M's and stuff? <laughs> Just trying to think if it's worth it. Is it worth it? Maybe I'll spread it. I'll put it here. It's going to slow down our... Um it's going to slow down our uh, unlocking of our other symptoms that we need, but that's okay. We're fine. We've got enough uh, Nurglings now. Um, <clears throat> we'll get plenty more where that plenty more where that came from. Um, we could actually afford a few more, I guess. Yeah, we may as well just go the full go the full stack. All right, cool. Give him the Book of Asir. I don't know if we really need it, but whatever. Can fellow food talk. English familiar. Septic. Cool. All right. Oh yeah. Now, so, hmm. So if we're gonna take him out, if we're gonna take out the cow, if we're gonna take out the tongue, then we have to wait till turn ten, and then we turn on them. Unless, mm, we don't really, actually, no, we don't really have to wait till turn 10. We can just do it whenever we want, really. I've eaten cereal off a keyboard. With milk, not water. Psst. <laughs> I've, bit, I've eaten bits of pizza off a keyboard like not on purpose just the bits that fell on the keyboard I feel like if pizza if bits of your pizza fall off like if they fall on the, if they fall on the table or something like if they fall on a surface like a hard flat surface like then it's fair game like if they fall on the carpet or they fall in the dirt then it's like it's game over you know but if it falls on like a kitchen bench or like a dining room table coffee table you know, then it's it's fair game. Uh, are we good here? Yeah, we're good here, I think. Yeah, well, it depends what piece it is. Like, if it's just, like, a straggly little bit of, like, red pepper or something, and it doesn't look... Then, then you know, maybe you just let it go. But if it's, like, a big piece of salami, you know? What about a clean floor? Oh, clean floor is a hard one. I mean... Clean floor at home. Well, yeah, again, it depends, like... If it... If you... If it... If, if it's like a big piece of salami, you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, it, it depends whether my wife's home as well. Like, if my wife's home, then, I, you know, like, I'm, I wouldn't eat no, eat it off the floor. Of course not. That's disgusting. But if my wife's not home, then fucking whatever happens, happens, right? My contagion. I'll literally eat a good pizza off a dirty floor. You can quote me on that, regardless of context. Nice. I like a man that stands by his principles. I'll stuff that back with pox. 
No time to tarry. None may direct my recipes. Yeah, I really need another. I need another fucking lord. But yeah, if I had three lords in this situation, it'd be a lot better. It's not a big deal. Yeah, so we're out of plague. So we, so yeah, so if we had a, instead of giving growth to this, if we had of um put that onto Kugath, we could have like spread it back and forth. Um, actually, I could have spread it back and forth. We missed out on another four spreads. Go out. Keep forgetting. Um, yeah, the start of each turn when you're in, if you're in a settlement, you have to like spread back and forth with your armies to get a bunch of extra, a bunch of extra spreads. So yeah, we've already like slowed down the spreads a lot by missing a few of those. Probably like about seven behind already. Okay, here's the dwarfs, right? So that's all good. If I clip it, what will your wife think? Three second rule? Yeah, the three second rule is in effect, for sure. If it falls dough first, oh uh, yeah, that does that's a good point. If it falls dough first. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about eating pizza off the floor. What about like if there's part if there's large particles? Like that's another that's another aspect, you know. If there's large particles, like if so if your pizza falls like face down in the dirt, so it's just covered in dirt, obviously, you know, that's going to be a bit too hard. It's going to be hard to eat around, you know? But if your pizza falls on something that like on your desk or something and there's, there's like, you know, a couple of bits of grit or, or what it like large pieces of grit and maybe a hair and you can like pick out, you can pick that out. <laughs> I feel like it, this is pretty gross topic, but I feel like it's relevant to Nurgle, you know what I mean? I'm trying to think if we should attack with the um, other lord. Because if we attack with the other lord, then we can put Nurgle back here. Then we can put Kugath back here in ambush. It's going to be better. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's better the way to go. All right, we'll put um. We'll put. We'll initiate with this guy. It's gonna. We're gonna take some casualties from this battle, but hopefully it'll all work out. Um, yeah, we can put this guy. We can put who in defensive stance. So uh, in uh, sorry, in camp stance. So that means at least we get the extra melee defense. It's actually a relevant combo for Nurgle stream. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Yeah, if you know it's your hair. Yeah, yeah, it's my hair. It'd be like a beard hair or something, you know. Lorenz is like I'm eating right now. I'm sorry, Lorenz. All right, we gotta stop stop talking about it until uh, until Lorenz is finished eating. Yeah, so we're gonna take some more damage from the tower. They're gonna be able to build up the towers for extra minute and a half while we wait for our second army to come on. But it's going to allow us to have extra movement with Kuga, so he can set an ambush, and then next turn this guy can force march out, set the trap for the ambush, and you know we were good to go. <clears throat> what we could do is get him to set the towers on the opposite side at least. I don't know if that's going to really help us out too much, but it may do. Actually, if we just put him in, if we just hide him in these trees, then they won't be able to shoot at him, will they? Yeah, 
Merge with the shadows. Is it? Is that a fucking tower shooting at me while I'm invisible? Mm, nah. We're good. We're good. Alright, now we'll sneakily come over from the other side. Slowly go across the lake. By the time we get there, they're gonna move the whole army over here, no problem. Right, that's fine. Whatever. We won't stop, we can't stop. We're gonna celebrate. The plague has got me feeling so free. <laughs> plague has got me feeling so free. It's time to celebrate. The Nurgles are dancing. Uh, uh Narencia is finished. Beard, beard burrito? Ugh. I think, yeah, you guys are getting into this too much. Alright, let's see if we can make a run for this tower. Over here. Yeah, it seems to be, like, pretty good. They're just, like, kind of... Even though they clearly know I'm coming, they're just kind of labbing over there for some reason, staying over there. and run. No, yeah, this is working out pretty well, I think. Did these guys get poisoned? No. So it doesn't poison your own guys, or maybe they were not on the ground when it landed. Do any damage to friendlies that thing? Infected units grounded. No, it says it says it does. I mean, it says yeah. If it says affected unit grounded, it should hit your own friendly targets, right? Not really sure. to cast it on myself and just check it out. Yeah. 
Wonder what they're going to do with patch 1.1 in Nurgle. Maybe it'll be easier after patch. Yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking about that. Like, I wonder if it's worthwhile doing a Nurgle campaign now because it's going to change and stuff. But it sounded like um, it sounded like they were mainly going to be fixing um, like the units. Mainly going to be fixing the units. Um, should I turn the sound of the game sound a little bit more? Just a little bit more. Um, yeah, so it sounded like they were mainly just going to be fixing balancing. Oh, what is this debuff he put on me? Oh, Flock of Doom. Oh, man. Flock of Doom's no good. Right, we need to get... We need to get that wizard dead ASAP. Be good if we had this guy with his um with his spells, but oh, I could have done spell resistance. Oh, it's an only single target. Damn, whatever. Oh, he's really far away. I don't know why I did that. All right. Get onto this wizard. We have barely even touched him. Yeah, it's too hard to it's hard to focus damage in the blob. Because um your own guys are like blocking your stuff. Oh, he's doing it again, yeah. That flock of doom's wrecking us. Man, it's so it's terrible. Yeah, we're doing like neither damage to him at all. Check it out, they're pushing him out. Like the two lords are both going ham on Kugath and just pushing him right out of the actual um, lob. Too crazy. I don't really want that to go dead, but. Hey, we're starting to get some damage on him now. Maybe pushing us to the edge of the blob made it a bit easier to, like. If he comes out, he's in deep shit now. Alright, we've got this caster done. Still like trying to get to this like point. There you go. Take that. There you go. I'm trying to melee these guys, but no, he's gonna get in trouble here. Actually, isn't it? He? No, hopefully, we can win it before he gets wrecked.
There we go. Love that I could find you live. Love the content. Regards from Sweden. Hey, Richard Hogg. Peace. Thanks for that, man. Hey, Jacretis. The spell is much. That spell is much wider than its cone. The plague spell. Talking about this one, um, stream of corruption. Yeah, I'll, yeah, that's one thing I want to try and over, see if we can overcome that feeling of slowness with the Nogal campaign. Um, okay, interesting to know, Andrew. I'm, I'm going to test that out. I want to also cast it on my own units to see if it does friendly friendly fire because. I thought it did do friendly fire, but I couldn't, it didn't seem to be poisoning my units, unless they're like immune to poison or something, which I don't think they are. They did change poison so that you couldn't poison your own units with friendly fire. I wonder if they made it so you can't poison your own units with um, spells either. But maybe it does damage units, but it doesn't poison them. Not sure. Come on, guys. A cake, father. Damn, I wait, nerdlings. We're going to take Stormwreck Mountain. Darko's got. Oh, Darko Wolf's got the growth plague as well now. That's pretty cool. Our sunken sewers lost it, though. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we'll give this guy some spell action. Spell spell on a cheap unit. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cast it on a unit of Nugal Nuglings with full health and see what happens. Okay, Darko Wharf. Yeah, this thing, if we want to hold this, it actually is a bit of a pain in the ass because you have like dwarfs like sailing in from this direction and you have dwarfs from over there and it's like gah. It's a bit annoying. Um No corruption in adjacent provinces, plus three. Uh... We're only going to keep this, like, it's only going to stay up for, like, one turn anyway. So it doesn't, oh, no, it's not even going to stay up one turn. Probably this guy's probably going to take this straight away. But they might just sack it. If they just sack it, then we'll get the extra advantage out of it. So it'll be good. Yes. This will aid my studies. I'll give him... We'll, get him, we'll give him self-healing because he does take a bit of damage. A most satisfactory outcome! My booze bubble. Actually, maybe we'll, um, where's Darko Warpend? Darko Warpend's there. Put him in ambush now. I don't think they're going to go, I don't think they're going to go down here when they've got Darko Warp there, a Stormwreck Mountain there, but, you know, we'll see how we go. And then once we get this guy, uh, once this guy gets his movement back next turn, then we can go for the ambush trap. Um, I don't think it's worthwhile trying to fight this because I don't think we'll be able to actually damage any. Like we're gonna, yeah, I don't think we're gonna actually really damage anything. Certainly, I don't think we're gonna hold it. Mm, yeah, and I don't think we need to worry about this. Let them do their worst. Yep, great. You can take it over. Excellent. Okay, we got the ambush. 
Oof, looks like it's gonna be a tough fight. Uh, the fact that we got the ambush is good because that means we can close in on them straight away. We can shut down their ranged. Um, basically, we want to take down their ranged first, then take down their slayers, then take down their infantry, and then take down their lord. And like kind of in that order. Um, yeah, this is good. This is good. Assuming we'd win the fight. We should do. We should do. We should win it. Um, okay, yeah. So this ranged is basically what we want to do. Um... We'll put out put our fast units on either side. Leave Kugath over here. Actually, now we need Kugath to be as close as possible because he needs to get in there as well. Yeah, this should work out pretty well. We're just supposed to get in there and break them up. Oh, they're gonna run. Fuck, I totally forgot about that. They're gonna run. Um Yeah, fuck. Okay, well whatever. That's fine. At least we take it their range, then when we fight them next turn they've got no range, so that's fine. Yeah, I should have blocked the escape, yeah, sorry man. Um Yeah, I think yeah, there's nothing I can do about it now. Um I wanted to add some speed, a question we're not the Forsaken, with the red line boost work quite well. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was I was saying that at the start of the um, at the start of the stream that I wish could we might want to add some Forsaken later on to get some flanking potential. Um but it just it's just it's hard with Kugas army because like everything is way less tankier than Noglings, like in the blob, you know. It's fine if they run messy, you still get full XP. Yeah, that's a good call, actually, Key Rancher. So I didn't even thought of that. So we'll still get the full XP for defeating their entire army. And then next turn, we can fight them again and get the full XP again. Yeah, yeah, good call. Oh, yeah, let's do some Nurgling experimentation while we're here. So, this unit has got 8,400 health, so they're full health. We cast this on it, it's going to do a certain amount of damage per second, and it's going to do poison on them, right? Okay, it did do damage, and it did not apply poison. Okay. Hmm. There you go. It does damage, but it doesn't do poison. If they have force march, then they should be wiped out. Oh yeah, if they have force march, that'd be cool. Myself some free heals. Oh, 
Oh, I thought we had free heals. What's going on with that? Oh yeah, he got a little bit of heals. He's healing slowly. Can't wait for the supply lines fixed. It's really easy and effective to crap stack a second Nurgling army right away to support your main enemies. Oh, uh, really? I'd rather go with four extra lords than instead of having the um, crap stack. Because if you have four extra lords, you can get like heaps and heaps of um, infection, like plague spreads. Does healing revive units? Um, no. Supply line only arises if you disband a lord. That's right, Phil, man. Yeah. Every time you disband a lord, you just keep the supply lines from the disbanded lord, yeah. If the supply line... If they are, if they, if you just keep the army active, then, yeah, you have the supply lines, but you have the army, so that's fine. And if the lord dies, then it gets rid of it, yeah. Crab stack support is fine now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't make any difference. The supply lines penalty doesn't make any difference to having a second crab stack. It's just if you want to have, like, um, heaps, of, uh, heaps of lords, it's... You can, well, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine to have heaps of lords too. It's just if you want to get rid of a lord, like basically the the, the really thing why the supply lines are so bad is if you want to have a lord that you don't keep on the field all the time. Like just even have a recruiter lord that's got max recruitment. He's got ancillaries that give him extra recruitment. He's got like recruiter skill that gives him cheap recruitment and all that. You just like pop that lord out at your at your recruiting center. Recruit a recruit like a bunch of new units. Then you want to use him to tra traverse those units over to your main army and then disband him until they're ready. To to recruit some more right but if you do that you'll have to be paying supply lines the whole time it's not like super bad but it's you know it's bad enough uh 52 infections is not that much but it's um you know it's enough for us to get another play or two so that's good now hopefully Hmm. So they hmm. Where'd they go? Because they didn't get wiped out, right? Well it didn't say like it didn't say that they got wiped out. Unless they got force marched and wiped out afterwards. I'll force feed you endless toxin. I don't, know, I don't know where they went. <laughs> like, I don't know if they got wiped out. Like, maybe they got... We wanted the stream. They were in Force March. Oh, thanks a lot, Blackwall. Appreciate that, man. Okay, so it must be because they didn't get... Because they didn't get killed in the actual battle. I didn't get... I didn't get the message saying, you know, that they were wiped out. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of a bummer. Like, we would have... If we had have killed them all, we could have got, like... You know, I was, I was expecting to get, like, 500 infections out of that. We only got 50. Um, so yeah, like ba like field battles are really valuable for you as Kugath early on, especially because you need those big infections that you get from wiping out their entire enemy army. Um, so if I yeah, I I've forgotten like obviously if we had have fought them from the front, we would have taken like heaps more casualties. But um, but those it would have been worth it to get those infections, and we were still in our friendly territory, so we would have replenished. So yeah, it was a bit a bit of a bummer, but it's okay. Just a, it was an unforced error from Mercy. I should have known that. I just, I don't know, I get distracted. Don't think about it enough. It's such a waste of dwarves. I know, we could have like melted them down into pustules. Events of visitations. Is that any good? I, I assume it's not very good. It will supplement my boxes. Rensive visitations is pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah, what do you use it for? Ah, 
Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of spells, like, if you've got the infinite winds of magic as well, a lot of spells become, like, you know, like, it changes the game for a lot of spells. Like, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I never actually use, win I never actually use Buna, Buna because it's, like, you want to save all your, all your magic for, like, those giant, almost big mortis engine spells or, like, AoE spells that you kind of drop on a big blob. Um, it's a good higher health entity neutralizer. Costs a lot of winds of magic, yeah. But then, yeah, but if you've got, like, infinite winds, then, you know... Hey, Miklos. So with the Ambush XP mechanic, thoughts on Skaven and Alithana? Um, I guess Alithana and Skaven will get a lot of XP. Um, I don't know. The thing with the Ambush is just that the AI is bugged. You know, the AI just always runs, you know? Well, it's not bugged. I don't, it's, over, it's like tuned wrong or whatever, you know? Like, it just always runs. Um, and I feel like it's not really meant to be that, you know, it's not meant to be that passive. Um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, I think they'll change, they'll probably change the AI or tune it a bit differently or something so that it doesn't, like, just run all the time like that. Um, I hope. That army just now could have put up a good fight. Yeah, yeah. Normally, you'd fight that. You would take, like, I'd take heavy punishment. I'd win. I'd win. But, like, a lot of my units would be all banged up and stuff like that. Um, but I would get, like, 600, like, probably, like, get five or 600 infections, you know? Like, like definitely hundreds, you know? In the hundreds. Um, so, yeah, it was a shame. Um, not so much for the... I mean, although it would have been cool to have a good fight with those slayers... Um, it's even better to just kill them without, you know, without having to worry about it. But, um, like, we, I guess we missed out on some experience on our units. But, um, but yeah, those infections are a big loss. Like, if we had have got, like, just say we had have got, like, 400 infections off that dwarf army then, that would have been such a great boon for the, um, for the campaign, you know? Get these guys stacked up. Hurry the fuck up. Alright, that's right. Let's just do it. towers again yeah good yeah this is this little method of like waiting there and then just bum rushing around the corner on small armies that don't have much you know don't have much going for them it's actually not bad down some, some poison on these guys um, yeah because I mean you can you know yeah 
if you like they've nerfed ambush um, a bit because they nerfed cunning so yeah cunning used to give you plus 10 uh, amb 10 to plus 10 percent ambush now cunning only gives you plus 10 percent ambush when you're in friendly territory so you can't like boost your ambush percent chance to like ridiculous degrees like you used to be able to um i think they nerfed i don't think they nerfed um i don't think they nerfed um uh, lithanar's ambush ability like i think they nerfed the skaven but they didn't they didn't nerf the lithanar but they might that might change you know they might come back and nerf the lithanar um later um to get him in line with get him in line with the others Um, but yeah, you can, you know, if you're playing as a Lithanar, if you sit in ambush, they come, they come forward, you ambush them, you just do the same thing, just let them escape, get the, get the full XP, then follow up and um, attack them next turn and get more XP. Or if you ambush attack them, yeah, if you've got the movement, if you're close enough to be able to ambush attack them and then follow up and get them again, then yeah, you can just get double XP out of every battle. So that'll be fun. Might be a nice overpowered way to make um, a Lithanar get really powerful early. I think we're getting there. Just spread some debuffs around, to demoralize them a bit more. Yeah, I played Warhammer 2 with the Cavalry Beta. It was alright. I didn't think it was really perfect, but, you know, it was better than it was without the beta, I guess. No, I checked that they just punched they just punted a bunch of dudes off the edge and just like insta jibbed them. That was pretty sweet. I forgot about that with the rock flies. They can just like knock things off off um, ledges and just insta kill them. Pretty sweet. Give this Lord debuff so he doesn't like bonk us too much. I think that's it. There we go. Got a little bit more healing. Another mark on the Rockfly ledger. Yeah, for sure. Rockflies are pretty sweet. They're pretty good. The heal's like such a tiny amount, really. It's not even almost worth it, is it? Yeah, I think the cavalry beta was good because it made it made cavalry better, but it didn't really like it wasn't just about it being better. It was like for me, like the thing with cavalry is I want my I want the cavalry to to kill on impact, like the instant kill thing. Because I feel like when you know your cavalry drop lances and they smash into the enemy and the enemy like flies in all directions and everything. Like there's meant to I'm as far as I understand it, like I've been told, there's meant to be an instant amount of impact damage that happens when the cavalry first like hits the enemy. And um they and it, and it's sort of based on their mass and speed and whatever else com like combined um and then after that they start just attacking in melee but with their charge bonus right and like so they made it so that 
when they attack in melee, they get their charge bonus and they do lots of damage and they don't they don't die. They were a bit tankier and stuff like that. They didn't die as much and, and all that. But they didn't give them that impact damage. Um, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like, yeah, that was the thing I felt like was a bit wrong with it. But overall, it made cavalry more usable and better. So, you know, it was cool. 488 gold. That's a little bit more worthwhile, isn't it? I mean, just like how, dude, minus CSS, minus 15 growth, yeah, I don't know, maybe that was a bad idea. Minus 20 growth if it's maxed out, whereas if it were at max, we get plus 25 growth, so plus 30. Uh, it's not that much, actually. But time we, if we like plague all of our settlements, you know, we'll, like that'll overcome that growth problem. That's pretty good, pretty easily. So I guess that's all right. I really want more. Um, I really want more lords. Hey, do you reckon for the set for the second building? Should I like straight away build um, the rancid aloe so that it, you know it's doing its thing? Um, so that when we hit tier three, we can just already have it up. Would that be the way to go, or...? Do we have any, um... Is there any garrison buildings for Nogal? Like, do they have anything that gives them garrison? Provides garrison Noglings. Oh, everything provides garrison, does it? No. These provide garrison Noglings. This provides nothing. Nothing. Hmm, okay, so there's nothing that's really like a garrison. There's just only these um, low-level buildings. All their infrastructure gives. Yeah, but they only just give Nurglings, right? It's just like, oh, you know, Nurglings and Plague Bearers. Nurglings, Swan of Nurgle. Nurglings and Plague Bearers. Nurglings and Rock Flies. Oh, okay. It's kind of, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I think, um, I think that, I don't know, yeah, I think, like, there's some of the stuff seems to have gotten lost from previous updates or something, or, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it's gonna, it might take a, you know, a month or two to, like, get everything merged together and, you know, get it all up to date and everything. Um, I wish they could bring some new content out, like, faster. But I understand they want to, like, fix the game first and all that. Should I build some more growth? Yeah, I mean, oh, it's 2,000. It's probably going to be up for a little while. Like, I don't know how long this settlement's going to be up for, though. That's the thing. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Screw it. We'll leave it up for a while. Um, Stormbreak Mountain. Can repair it. The 440. Nah, we'll just let it... Just let it grow naturally. A bit. Improvement pool size plus 25 for all units. Plus 25 for all units. Plus 25 for all units. What the fuck? So is that saying I've got like a recruitment pool of like 100? No, we only got 20 recruitment pool. How does that work? I don't really understand what that 20 recruitment pool is saying. Maybe it's going to be 25%. Oh, someone asked, what's to do with Soul Grinders? They look like they're from 40k. Yeah, Soul Grinders are like, excuse me, like, like a crossover unit that's in both um, both 40k and in um, and in Fantasy. Okay. We won't do any more plagues this turn. Um, blah, blah, blah. Once we get the money... Let's for, let's for growth, yeah, growth plus five is, you know, it's cheap, it's easy. 
Might as well get it. We don't really need Nurgle Corruption, we're about to get maxed out. So, so good time on infrastructure buildings. That basically means you make more money, right? Although, plague spreading is good too. If you zoom in their machines, I can understand Skaven, but having like uh, demons is not very ticky. Oh yeah, there's this whole, there's this other vibe of demons like uh, Andre with like the demon engines, like the, the Chaos Dwarfs are very much into that, like basically infusing demons into machines. Um, you'll see it also with the Hell Cannons of Corn. They're like these living, like steam engine type things with the cannon built into them and everything, you know. So yeah, it's a thing. It's it's a thing in fantasy. It's not they're not the only thing that's like that. But yeah, a lot of other people don't like it as well and think it's too sci-fi. So you know, you're not alone. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is the part where I need to make a decision, right? So, yeah. So we've got this problem, like this guy, like trying to come and chase, like wreck our infrastructure and stuff. Um, so how I normally deal with this is just like by not investing anything in Dark Oak Warp or Glock Port um, or Stormbreak Mountain, actually, um, normally. And then I just like abandon all this and then just go back the other direction. I'm kind of thinking I should do that again. Maybe I shouldn't build this. Yeah. Yeah, did anyone... I don't know if anyone... If anyone said something, anything earlier about what they thought on the strategy, what would be a good idea on the strategy map, um, like, maybe just repost it now and write at most of the map if you can be bothered. Um, yeah, sorry, I just started that whole conversation about the, uh, the Soul Grinders, but now I need to talk about strategy. So... I don't even know what the normal strategy is for Nurgles because I never, <laughs> like, like the times I've played Nurgle so far, I've either given a couple, mostly I've given this region to Zeech and then I've like gone this way and like conquered all this stuff. And then I gifted all of this stuff to this faction. So I just didn't even hold any land. I just gave it all to the other Nurgle faction. That was pretty fun. Um, two other times, I think I migrated down this direction um, and befriended Throt. Um, the first, actually, the first time I think I kind of went around here and faffed around for a while, but I never, I don't know, never really did anything. So I'm not really sure what like the normal thing to do is, you know. Um, abandon your star position and go to Slanesh dudes in the north. Yeah, that's really what I want to do. Um, really want to go up here and get Slanesh dudes up here. But in order to do that, I kind of want to start off by killing these guys. Hmm. Right. How about? We'll faff around here for a bit. We'll just try and get as many kills and like uh, trying to get as many kills and infections as we can get. Um, and um, if we're only going after the scribes, major settlements works well. Done it twice. They don't leave an army there. The scribes. You talk about these guys, flaming scribes. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, what I like to do is is gift this region to the flaming scribes, and then I can actually keep my capital and like no one attacks it. Um, but that's uh, that's an interesting idea. Um, Martin, I might have to try that sometime as well. And that's just sort of doing it. I think that's the opposite of what I want to do this time though, because it's going to open up. Like if I take these two settlements, then I'm, I'm in contact with these guys. Like it just makes my frontage, like, you know, it extends my frontage to be bigger. Like I want my frontage to be like, frontage, is that a word? I want my front to be like as narrow as possible, I think. Um, like to avoid the heavy range factions and stay north. I think the humans have good infection ancillaries. Yeah, um... Hmm. And the other thing is, do we want to send down a... Do we want to send down a cultist to get... Um, to get defensive alliance with the with Skaven? And if we do, are the Skaven going to get wrecked? Or are they going to still, like, prosper? Nurgle's chosen. Specimens required. Hmm. All right. Well, let's for starters, let's get some more infections going. Um, we'll infect Kugath with the Nurgling, uh, Nurgling one. Boom. And then we'll bring this guy in, and he will get some infections passed around. 
If we had more lords, we'd be able to do this much, much faster. You should get one more, right? Yeah. Alright. Then... Get some more, um... Get this guy by solo there. Hopefully that'll draw out somebody to try and attack him. I would recommend you completely secure two corners with alliances. I recommend you completely secure two corners with alliances before expanding towards the other. You either bribe ogres constantly for alliances or end up fighting them. Could they then kids they will come? Say north, I'd say. Turn 11, break your alliance with Tong. Yeah, that's saying it's, it's like we're nearly up to turn 11 already, so we could just like go up for there. Port settlements are relatively easy to defend if you build them up. Oh, uh, really? Against this, like, 14 stack, you reckon? Well, yeah, I don't know. We're not going to build them up, though, so... Hmm. Yeah, no, we'll see how we go. Um, Growth-wise, we could infect this again. Yeah, we'll give the sunken sewers another infection. So now we're rocking, like, maximal growth again 100 from plague um until we unlock our other better stuff no good plague no good hell is a busted especially as early early hours yeah well we'll, don't know, we'll give it a try i mean i don't want to invest anything before we get this to tier three because i want to potentially get those um soul grinders rolling all right i think we are good Hey, Elliman. Yeah, I, I always enjoy Nurgle campaign. I love Nurgle. Um, I just, I, yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I don't know if I can say that they're really super powerful. But I feel like they're, I feel like they're not bad. Like, it's it's all about the towers, yeah. I feel like the towers is a super important part of the Nurgle thing. Um, just, like, you know, just expand, build up your garrisons, and, like, defend with your garrisons and stuff. Like, I think, like, normally, um, you know, having lots of armies everywhere is, um, is like, the thing. You know, you need, like, an army on each front and all that. And you, you kind of still do with Nurgle as well, but... Yeah, I wonder if that's sort of, like, a strategy with Nurgle, just to, like, sort of take as many things as you can um, and put, and you know, put garrisons in them. Might uh, do the old uh, attack with the other army thing again. The only problem with this is we don't get the XP on, on Kugath, but what can you do? What about Nurgling? What I like about Nurgling is that levels, the buildings don't need leveling. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Did you, do you play full campaign or do you turn the Chaos Realms off? Um, yeah, I just play normal campaign, Andre. I don't, I don't use um, uh, uh, mods or anything. Nurgle Towers are busted powerful, yeah. Nurgle's about bleeding people as much as you can. Egg every invading army. <laughs> then slowly steamroll. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really use my plagues offensively that much. Um, yeah, we need to get we need to get like in the later game we need to get more uh, more plagues going for sure. Uh, okay, so our main army is going to come on directly in the middle here, so we can go either left or right. That works out. Mm, uh, both of these are pretty bad. I think this left one's better. It's a bit more direct to get to the point. Um, so yeah, we'll use this guy to like lure our enemies over here. Yeah. 
Not sure if any of these towers have a way of actually blocking. I wonder if we put him like if we put him like right there, like would the tower be able to shoot him from? Where is the tower anyway? Oh, it's there. Uh, what if he stood like right at the base of the tower? Would that work? Hmm, where, how do we, where can we put him there? He's not going to get dead. We can, oh, we could retreat him off the battlefield. Could be... The go. See if we can sit him like right next to the, um, if we sit him right there, I wonder if the tower can still shoot him. I guess we'll find out. The armor reduction symptom is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at that. There's like a lot of the armor symptoms are really, a lot of the plagues are really good. Ah, guys, like getting us to the other tower. Uh, yeah, we can hide from one tower, but we can't hide from both. What if we stand over here? Yeah, that's pretty good. Just have to keep an eye on him. He's probably going to die, and I'm probably going to forget about him, but... Uh, oh, shit. Where did we go here? I meant to go the other way. Oh, fuck it. We've gone this way now. <laughs> this way it is. Yeah, we'll take out the grudge throwers. Quick smart. I wonder if I should just send these Nurglings to cut this point, maybe. May as well. He's going, he's going alright. I think he's tanking pretty good. And these guys are like transfixed on him. They're like, the threat is coming from the south. Stand firm, men. Meanwhile, our stealth giant of fat green dudes over here is just like wobbling their way into the army. So sleepy. Too scared to sleep because of work tomorrow. Hey, retarded. Are you, what are, you, are you worried if you go to sleep that you won't wake up? Uh, what about... Um, can you set, like, three alarms? Like, set, like, an alarm every five minutes? That's what I normally do. Like, I set one, and I set another one that goes off, like, five minutes later, and then another one that goes off five minutes later after that. So, you know what I mean? No, no matter how, like, deeply asleep you are, you'll just keep having alarms just constantly going off, you know? Until eventually you just wake up. Maybe that'll work, I don't know. Let's see if we can hide our flyers behind this wall here. So we don't keep eating tower shots. Uh, we could get them to take the tower down, but I feel like they'll eat, they'll eat a lot of tower shots. I'd rather just absorb it with our Nurglings. This guy's taking almost no damage still. Drink lots of water and you'll wake up for a piss. That's a good, a good technique. Look when he's got the wisdom. He's, he's gone to bed really late many times. Just have a loud enough alarm far enough from your bed. Yeah, yeah, if you have a loud, you have a loud alarm and put it far away from your bed so it just keeps going off. Are they rallied? Ah, oh, that's right there. They're no threat. Oh, bro, take, take the points. Sorry, I forgot you guys were doing your own mission. I use Alexa, so I have to scream at her to turn her off. Snugglings are probably going to get wrecked with these archers. Like run around that way. I don't know if we should try and fight them or what. I don't want to lose them. They haven't got regeneration if they're away from Kugath. It's only if they're near Kugath that they actually have the regen.
get a better job if you hate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does make a big difference. Like, if you hate your job, it does make it hard to get up, hey? Weirdly. Alright, got those guys. Smart watch vibration. Hmm. Just get a better job. That's the big brain. That's the big brain strategies right there, guys. Just get a better job. Yeah, it's it's hard getting a better job though, isn't it? It's like scary and you know, like if you you know, even no matter how no matter how bad the job that you've got is, it's like too darling. Sorry, one moment. Yeah, it's like even if even the job you hate, like it's still like it's still familiar, you know. It's not the unknown. It's like when you go swimming in the ocean at nighttime, and you know that be below you there's like millions of well, you know, millions of liters of water, like going down to a depth of like hundreds of miles or whatever. And um, and you know, there's like giant leviathans and shit down there. That's what it's like when you go out to get a new job. <laughs> Whereas if you just stay in your current job. It might be like a kiddie pool filled with dirt, but at least you can see the bottom. Man, this is not... I didn't, uh... I didn't really pay enough attention to this battle. Should have done less philosophizing and more, uh... <coughs> excuse me. More, uh, not getting Kugath killed. If you get dies here, it's going to be extremely bad for our uh, long-term, long-term um, strategy. Fuck, he's really a deep shit. He's gonna. Is he stuck? Oh my god, he's stuck! Can't get away. He gets totally fucked. Shit. <laughs> Alright, who got died? That's fine. I really should have paid more attention to that one. In retrospect, you know, I regret it now. Kugath didn't have the didn't have the point. I was thinking about putting the point into him too, so he would get healing. Um, yeah, I just I wasn't paying attention to the battle really. You know, I didn't even notice. Like I am aware that he takes high damage from his off layer. Hmm, that's kind of fucked with things, isn't it? Because like the whole point was to kind of show, the whole thing was to kind of show um, Kugath's campaign like you know doing well, <laughs> but instead we showed like. How to lose, well, not how to lose the campaign, but how to do really badly in the campaign. They're not gonna run, so we need to worry about that. Try and finish this really long battle. I don't know, maybe I should just alt F4 this right now. I mean, I don't like to do that, but. No, no, now I'm torn. It just kind of like negate the whole thing. Because it's going to be hard to like break him now, right? Because we're, um, 
because we're um because we've lost Kuga, so we, the army losses are not going to kick in for you know a long time. Hmm, we could start spirit leeching their lord, but he's got magic resistance. We don't have the regeneration anymore. Hey, Andrew. Just gonna say hi, but now you're here one hour later. Yeah. All right. We'll have to. We've had an unexpected crash. Yeah. Sorry, I had to do that, guys. But yeah, probably it's probably gonna like, like I wanted this campaign to be about like kind of what's cool to do with Nurgle. Um, I don't want it to be about fighting our way back from like screwing up from a stupid mistake on turn seven you know what i mean so uh yeah we're gonna refight that battle sorry for that and with this time we're gonna not let kuga die there are bad jobs and bad jobs <laughs> there are bad jobs and bad jobs anyway we figured out a good army for Nogal. well hey retarded well that's what we want to explore today like I already theorized quite a bit about it um, earlier on in the stream uh, about what might be a good, a good, uh, no, good army for Nurgle, but um, yeah, I want to, I want to actually test them out, you know, um, rather than just theorize about it, you know. What I, mean? uh, I go bottom line first on lords, then magic. Don't upgrade to exalted heroes are scarce, so the AOE heal spell and ability keep the blob alive. Um, yeah, the lords, the lords with the AOE heal spell is nice. Yeah, um, or the other thing I like to do with the heroes is go for plague, um, go for Nogal spell casting, so that you can, um, so that you can. Oh, you don't, need, you don't need to hit Alt F4 anymore. You can just exit to the main menu and continue campaign. Oh, thanks, Logic Cradies. I think I did actually. I had actually noticed that, but, um, but yeah, I didn't do it obviously. Just get those Quarrelers tagged this time. Oh yeah, well, they just don't work. Don't walk Kugath into the front line, you know. Like I just, I just wasn't paying attention. And I just walked Kugath into like four Quarrelers cor shooting him from different directions. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. If you can see the battle, you're given the option to retry the battle. Oh, really? On legendary? That seems highly inappropriate for legendary. Whereas alt f and then free fighting battle against completely <laughs> legit for legendary. It's classic legendary. Charge um, Kuga's mobility scooter the batteries this time? Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll do the same thing with our little uh little super tank here. Let's see if we can do this battle a bit better. Um, yeah, thanks for the super chat, David Barnes. Very, very generous, man. Much appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks for the uh, for the advice. Good. Uh, I think that's pretty good thinking. What you were saying there. Okay, now how, hopefully he can hold the line. Okay, now I want to go left side. I just I want to go to this side. Unspeakable foxes, Nurgle's command, Kugath, Plague Weaver, a sensible location. See so if we can get these guys to take this out and then get back out again without getting killed. Yeah, we can get these guys, should be able to get these guys destroyed and take minimal damage still, hopefully. Yeah, no, I didn't mean to split the blob, it was, uh, it was an accident. It was just because I was talking too much, I wasn't paying attention. 
It's just, it's because the battles go for a long time with um, Nurgle. So it's like, you know, I get, sometimes I'm tempted to try to be like entertaining by doing other stuff at the same time or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, it's not good. I think we decamped them off their, uh, we got them off their um, artillery, so that's good. These guys, yeah, I think they're out. Take cover from there. I'm not percent sure, but. Yeah, there's some uh, some coral action happening. That's fine. Yeah, we just need to keep um, Kugath um, basically back a little bit. I um, mean, our movements up here. Can, can, can just get through there. Yeah, this corner's fuck this. Excuse my French. Flies are getting wrecked again, as usual. Right, they need to hide down here again. This is what I mean. Like the rough flies, like you know, they're good, but you spend most of your time just trying to keep them alive instead of actually using them for anything. And it's just a lot more um, nerve-wracking than just not using them at all. That was good. Nice. Um, that did a really good damage on them. Alright, we're getting it. We get Kugath in around, kind of around the corner here, so you can, can hopefully get some cover from the other. Um, Ranged. This is going to be better. Is it going to get a bounce? Nice, this is a bounce in there. Bring up of sickness. These fucking things. We need to just get them the fuck out of here. Just like retreat off the battlefield. 
Then you're gonna die if we didn't get rid of him soon. It is quite wide, isn't it? Alright, we've got rid of our play drones, so we don't have to worry about them. And it's eight, just eight. Too expensive for the AOE Miasma. Yeah, it's not that cheap. It's four anomaly, and it's like eight. Plus for that, yeah. Nuggles, come on. We need to get him shooting into. We get him shooting into this blob. He's taking. Yeah, he's taking range fire. Getting the same same problem again. Hey Sega, how you going man? In ranged units. Fuck the same thing's happening again. God dang. <laughs> you keep fucking wrecking Kuga. Get away from him, you bitch. Get away from my beautiful Kugath. Should have hidden him around the corner here, might have been right. I don't, I don't know, I'm just need to concentrate on this battle that I'm uh, screwing up again. I don't know why I keep screwing this up. I feel like I've done this battle before and like not screwed up this badly before. I mean, clearly it is possible to screw it up this badly, but I feel like it's not necessary. Like, it's not like you have to screw it up this badly. It's not the only option. I wonder if he could solo this unit of portalers over there. We're just going to keep casting um, Cream of Corruption on them until we eventually kill them all, hopefully. That's the plan. This guy's starting to break now.
Well, that goes. Uh, yeah, did okay. All right, our blob is uh, ready to progress. We've defeated these the sword of enemies here. Poison does timing damage, and they're already poisoned. It's great overcast, though. Um, really? How great is it overcasted? 24 damage. 48 damage. Yeah, I suppose it's pretty efficient, like, for mana. It is pretty great overcasted. Thanks, uh, David Barnes. Good tip. It's a lot better overcasted. Oh, no, no. I'm going to have to get back and defend the Plague Father. Alright, we better come back out here, I guess. Are they going to just stay there, or...? Pop um, the regen on plague on Kugath, but it's uh, yeah, it's not great. The perfect plague. The shattered, the shattered. Uh, what if we could get some shots out that direction? Stomping. Kugath, repositioning. All right, we're getting there. Miscasting, so yeah, he's took a bit of damage, but he's got he's got the thing where he gets more heal, healing back from casting as well, so it's out, I guess. Man, it's hard work. Get this guy in, he's got a little bit more damage for us. I'm gonna shoot that and try. So are you winning? Uh yeah, I'm so I'm winning. Very slowly, very painfully. And very almost losing, but now we are we are winning, I think. Uh, actually, our nerglings are getting pretty low. <laughs> That's pretty close. We lost some um, lost some nerglings. Just excited for Nurgle, the only faction I can finish the race on legendary with. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, thanks for your advice, side everyone. It's been some really good advice, and um, yeah, I really like that overcasted. Um, Overcasted uh, play thing. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, not overcasted just because it's so cheap, and you know you can use it to heal your guy and all that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, it's way more effective overcasted. That's good. So yeah, we lost a few of our little chil our Nurgling's children. Well, 
Potion of toughness on Kugath Plague Father. Yes! <laughs> that was exactly what we needed. Um, Point eight heal per second for 21 seconds. Yeah, nice. Because Kugath probably takes the most damage out of the whole army. Alright. Pretty good here. Yeah, as soon as we get fleshy abundance, it's gonna be good good times. Um Minus one, so it's still going to be seven upgraded. Yeah, see, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I don't know if I can deal with paying six, uh, paying seven um, points on that. Like this, paying six points on this for the upgraded version that does double damage is pretty good. Chunky boy just got thicker. Oh yeah. Battle brother stream, uh, probably more of the same. Man, just kept losing and dying. But I was getting some, I was getting better and better. I think like next I think next stream could be the one where we actually like don't die and Battle Brothers actually continue on. Could be good. Aspect of the Dread Knight's pretty cheap, isn't it? Four, yeah. And then if we upgrade it, it'll be three. Yeah, so Aspect of the Dread Knight can be our, like, our Winds of Magic, uh, you know, spell, once we get, once we get there. The Plague Weaver. Mm. I don't think he's gonna attack us. Oh, here we go. We've got the, we're these rebels now. Um, you yeah, so you reckon this... Oh, we can't... Oh, the rebels are sieging us. That's effed up. Oh, I guess we have to sally out. I feel like we can beat that with that, can't we? Doesn't seem unbeatable. I wonder how much Winds of Magic we've got. If he's inside the blob at the front, he gets shot less. Inside the blob at the front, he gets shot less. Really? Because I was inside the blob at the front before and I got the shit shot out of me. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be an easy battle. Clearly select this one, then that one, then that one. Why the fuck is it dragging out there? Is there some way to turn off... Um... Is there some way to turn off that default drag out formation? Yeah, we'll get rid of that. I know, I do, I kind of like it sometimes, but it's, yeah, I don't know. There we go. The expected, expected uh, outcome. Inside the blob at the back is good. Yeah, um, inside the blob is good, um, unless you're getting the crap shot out of you. I, I know it's very often that they'll just target Kugath, even if there's like numerous other units like closer than Kugath. Um, it'd be interesting to see if we could find another unit that was um, interested to see if we could find another unit that was like similar to um, uh, 
that was like uh, as magnetic as for enemy shooting as Kuga. I was gonna I was gonna try and get a bit of a wraparound, but You don't you can't get terror anyway, so we like we like but I wonder if we should try and Spruilish their lord down, see if we can kill him by then. The only thing is death head plague drones. Yeah, that's right, they'll shoot the death head plague drones. They always love killing them, don't they? Now we're tanking okay on that side, but we're not really killing fast on this side, which is kind of what I was hoping. We could like take out a unit of plague drones. You can't really kill anything fast though, can you? Nearly taken out one unit of blade bearers, but we're well, not nearly. We've like almost half taken out one unit of blade bearers. The toads are getting a bit wrecked. These guys are already getting fucked up. Hey, I guess it being, ex what exactly is the new thing we're supposed to be looking at here? Uh, if you go back to the start of the start of the stream, man, I spoke on it for like 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, basically just everything about Nurgle. Just everything about Nurgle, like all, you know, what, you know, all the good units, all the good plagues, all the good um, strategic options, you know, of where you want to attack on the campaign map and stuff like that. Just, yeah, just basically just looking at everything about Nurgle. Because um, I think you know, a lot of people seem to think Nurgle's crap. And I think, you know, maybe Nurgle is weaker than, like, the weakest of the main demon factions. I don't know. But, um... But they're, um... But I think they're definitely fun and, um, and a cool faction. And they definitely have a lot of cool stuff going for them. So, you know, that's basically what I just wanted to, like, get into, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Now it's all it's all coming tumbling down now. I don't think that actually does anything, but it might just In terms of how much I'd like them, I'd rate them Nurgle, Zeech, Slanesh, then Corn. I haven't played Zeech still, really. So yeah, I have to still give them a go.
The Miasma, the, like, we don't need any more defense. Like, melee defense is the last thing that you need, um, David. Like, you just don't, like, they don't get, like, Nurgle doesn't get killed in melee. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, what you, it's offense is what we need. Like, it's just not worth spending the wins. Like, if we, later on, once we get infinite wins of magic, then, yeah, sure, we can cast it all day long. But, um, but you know, when we've got limited wins of magic, we kind of need to cast it on, um, need to, like, I, I, like, I ran out of wins last, last time, last match. If I had to, like, cast that, I would have had one less cast of, um, of, uh, whatever it's called. The plague spreading thing. Um, is the meta for Nurgle just clump up the enemy and hug them from all directions? Yeah, pretty much. We only get four infections from that because they're all like demons. We need like humans to give us infections. 780 gold, that's pretty good. Pretty good uh, windfall from that. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, like the thing, I don't think there's any point in me trying it, David, because even if I try it, you won't notice anything. You know, you'll notice that you guys that aren't losing in melee will not lose in melee lightly less. You know what I mean? It's just, I just don't see how it's going to make any difference. Like, are you, are you finding that your, like, your Nurgling blob gets, like, chewed up in melee if you don't cast that Miasma on it? You know what I mean? I don't think it's going to make any difference. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, so this is going to get smashed. I don't think we're going to hold this against these dwarves. But I'll be, I'll be glad to be proven wrong. Um, I think the person who said that we could hold it said that, did say it was up, upgraded upgraded settlements, uh, upgraded coastal, coastal settlements could hold. Not that just any coastal settlement could hold, so yeah. But we'll we'll try anyway. Um, yeah, next turn we can get our building ready for um, the start building soul grinders. And we will replenish our Nurglings. Um, yeah, this is one thing I love about about love about Nurgle, how you can always like get your Nurglings and then you because they come in like partially damaged, so you can always like play around with this and like replenish all your um, veteran, you know, replenish all your veteran ones up again. That's pretty cool. Get some more spreads. I'm sure you'll hold it. Nurgle has the best towers in the route. You reckon? I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, that, but um, you waste magic on the poison though. It's a war of attrition. Your Nurglings have would have had more health in that dwarf battle. Uh, the damage, like a lot of the damage, was coming from ranged fire though, not from melee. I prioritize ports early because they're strong economic background for the early game. Yeah, well, once we get the tier three, I don't know. I'm torn. Like, I kind of want to. Oh, I kind of want to just abandon it though. See, that's thing. Like, the, yeah, holding these two ports, holding this, uh, like holding this whole settlement, it's going to require Kugath to stay here and like wander around here, like bashing these armies and all that. You know, um, which we could definitely do that. Um, but the other like idea we had was to just uh, like abandon this settlement and just steamroll our way up here until we've taken like everything up to here. Um, and that way, you know, we've just, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's, you know, that way you can just take lots of, get lots of sack money and stuff like that. Um, highly infectious, we need plague symptom fever. Do we actually need the plague symptom fever for anything? Okay, so we don't actually need fever for anything, but it's nice to get it anyway. Once we get more infections to spend, it's nice to get it anyway. Uh, 
Uh, so we've got all the growth, even though we already had a huge growth anyway. Um, we do want Highly Infectious, and I do want the plus four leadership. Um, I'm probably not going to get this. I'm going to use this, yes, anyway. Whereas I will use, I will use the plus four leadership on the Nurglings. So I'll go for that first. And I kind of want this Plague Flesh Poppies cycle time as well, but we can always, it's only four turns. We can always come back and grab it later on. I don't think we're going to be building that building anytime soon, so yeah. I just noticed the Sinesh Cultists get up to really good combat stats when leveled up. Yeah, they're real badass. They have like 79 melee defense or something like that. Um, your opinion, which demonic faction make the best cultist stack? Uh, Slanesh. Because they, well, not necessarily the best, but they are the only one that can do it. Like, yeah, yeah like Slanesh is the only, only faction that can really viably do a, do a cultist stack early game. Um, you know, you can get there eventually with Kuga, with um, Scarbrand because he can like conquer so many things and then he can like get so much growth and so you can just put tier three buildings everywhere. But, um, but... Yeah, but it, but it takes a lot longer, you know? Like, whereas with, with um, Slanesh, I feel like you can just start doing it straight away. Oh, actually, they're probably comparable, I guess. But I feel like you probably wouldn't... Mm, yeah, I don't know. They're probably comparable, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. So out of Corn or Slanesh, I don't know. The Corn one might actually be better. But I just feel like the Slanesh one works so much better because you can just spam, like, cults everywhere and get free cultists and get more devotees, and it just it just kind of all works, you know? Uh, should we keep going with more? Uh, might have to lose one of these guys. Submit to my research. I dream of the. All right. Um, actually, yeah, we'll go back to... Go back here for a second. We'll just infect Kugath with this plague. So, yeah, so we're going for this plague first to get down to plague bearers to get constant vomiting. And then we'll unlock brain fog. I think it is. What do we want? Constant vomiting. Actually, yeah, so we want so we want this one. So plague bubos, gut rot, gut rot and weeping eyes. So yeah, for this one we only need weeping eyes, which we've already got. And gut rot, which is there. So I want to go for that soon, but I just like to get down here to get the um, yeah the plus five infection spread and the plague bearers. But yeah, and once we get the plague bearers, we'll start using them. They're really handy. Then we'll um, then we'll probably go for gut rot, and then we'll get this one, um, so that we can get plus two hundred fifty percent sack income on our main army. Um, and then my next priority that I want to go for is this one. Um, yeah, is this one to get the plus 50 growth so we can pump our settlements more if we need to. Um, so without any brain fog and paroxysm. And then uh, I want to get mucus rains as well. That's probably like the things I'm mainly looking at right now. Yeah, so this one's much easier to build, and um, corn one's stronger in the battlefield. Yeah, I'd say that's probably about about right. But the Slanesh one's pretty fucking strong in the battlefield as well. Like the Slanesh demonets are so fast, like they're really fast, and for summons to be fast is really important because they don't let it to let it live that long, you know. So you want to get them in, you know. And the Slanesh demonets are just like heat-seeking missiles, you know. You just target them on something, and they just like scream and run towards it, like re, you know. It's um, it's pretty good. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm going for constant vomiting first. We're nearly there. And then we'll, um... Then we'll go for the other stuff. Yeah, I want to kill this camp, I think. Off uh, topic, have you watched um, Brother Alpha Boosters Emperor's Text to Speech? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Not worth rushing a plague cultist, too expensive, I assume, for 100 early. Um, you mean build a plague cultist to spread a cult, cult somewhere else? Why, why, why do we want a cultist to go spread cult somewhere else? Like, where would you want to spread it to? Or what, for what purpose? Or do you want to just get a cultist to go and get the, um... We could get a cultist early so we could send it to Throt to get an early, an early uh, alliance with him. But I was sort of thinking I won't go for that this time. Um... I did that last time. Took eventually, eventually took it, but yeah. Haven't played Nurgle, so no idea. Okay, no worries, Kilnets. Yeah, well, okay, well, a re one reason that you do want to get maybe get a cultist really early, and we could have done it maybe on turn five around here if we had fought that battle correctly and wiped out those dwarves instead of letting them escape, is like, yeah, get your cultist from here, spawn it from, sorry, spawn it from Darko Wharf, and then the cultist can just go straight across to here and then go down to here and meet up with Throt, and then, um, and then you get, um, you can get an alliance with Throt, and then you get Plague Claw Catapults and other cool plague related skaven weaponry in your army which is pretty cool yeah now we're up to 38 so it's only another like probably two turns we'll get that unlocked so that's pretty good i wonder if i should like actually if i go into force march it might be a bit dangerous if we get ganked. But it might be good. Be good for us. And yeah, we don't need any more growth here right now. So we'll let that just do its thing. Plague Toads, Plague Bearers. Uh, I don't know, do I like Plague Toads or Plague Bearers? I guess Plague... I don't know, I'm not really going to use either of them, so it doesn't really matter, but... Mm, yeah, Plague Toads are pretty good. Great Poxmaker. An opportunity presents itself to collect more Dwarfen specimens and find out the cause of their frustrating resistance to your concoctions. Trading settlement trading Keros into an alliance. That sounds pretty good. Um I'd, I'd be down to do that. But um we don't have any contact with Keros, I don't think. Oh yeah, we do. We do, okay. No, uh, no, we don't have any settlements that we can trade him, unfortunately. We could um I could try and push up into here and get contact with him. But yeah, I don't know. These dwarfs gonna Gonna try it or what? Oh yeah, so now we're gonna build our um gonna build our soul grinder building. Get that going. I don't think we should upgrade I don't think we should upgrade the port just yet. Just in case it goes down. Um, 
Get some little bit of we get another chance for some, a couple of magic items and um yeah. Need to divert for a couple of not north for a couple of regions, then rush the alliance and move back south once you've got it. Yeah, that could be that could be cool actually. What do you think is the doom stack for Slanesh, Keeper of Secrets? Hey Brutiv. Nah, for Slanesh, I reckon the doom stack for Slanesh is um summoners, summoner cultists. And it's the easiest doom stack to make and it's probably the most powerful, I reckon. Yeah, I was I was quite liking having a little army of like six normal units and having the rest of them and six normal units have like maybe two allurists allurists to cast spells and um and then have maybe get rid of get rid of um get rid of oh I don't know actually it's pretty good having um Nikari you can either have Nikari or get rid of Nikari and get another spellcaster um yeah if you have a if you have a, a shadow um herald then you don't need as many allurists. Hey Thomas, welcome to the team. Oh wait, uh, no, Thomas has been a team for a while. What? What's going on right now? I'm confused. It's saying welcome to the team, but then you've already got a six month badge. I don't know, uh, maybe I'll wait till, hey, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe say another message, maybe type something else. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining, um, just thanks a lot for joining as a member, Thomas, much appreciated. I, uh, I do love seeing those uh, pimp hats in, in game. I got a new card. Well, it got stolen. Oh, okay. So you were you were like out for a while, but now you're back. Oh, no worries. Oh, well, thanks a lot for coming back, man. You didn't need to do that, but I really appreciate the support. It's cool. That is very nice. Very nice. Um, I guess this one's the closest. See, just keep these guys back out of harm's way because that's all we can do with them. Our enemies are merely specimens. Their corpses bound for thy lands. Okay, right, we'll just uh, blob them up, kill them with the glory of Nurgle. Just a little bit less. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It's like this thing, even if like, even if you're right and oh man, these things, they just, they're suicide machines. They're fucking gonna die.
Like, yeah, it's basically spend the whole... Every time I use them, I just spend all the time trying to make sure they don't die. Um, that it's pretty good casting this um we've got to learn the name stream of corruption i don't know why i keep having so much trouble learning that name um but yeah it's pretty good because the nurglings have such low entity counts so there's only uh, 60 nurglings in a you know squad right so they're not quite like cavalry or monstrous symmetry but they're sort of like that in that they take less damage from magic because they've got a smaller entity count you know um and so it's yeah it's sort of cool because it you can cast it on your blob and it'll do like damage to them but not that much to you be the plague drones of death death by dying yeah i know i basically just i should just take them off the field like straight away at the start of the, every battle but that way they can't lose any health i think i might do that from now and i'll just retreat them like instantly I just want to keep casting with this guy to try to squeeze out a bit of health out of him. Yeah, you can debuff things speed now, which is cool. You used to be able to debuff speed before, after the um, end of the battle. Alright, that's, uh, yeah, we got a tiny little bit of, uh, use the slow, yeah. Sorry, Steven, I just, I just realized I had the slow then. And, um, yeah, it must have been frustrating for you, like, use the slow mercy, goddammit, use the slow. Yeah, no, nah, I'm onto it. It just took me a while to, uh, to get there. It's only a tiny, tiny bit of heal. Once we get a proper healing, um, which it should be very soon, it'll be uh, a lot more impressive. I'm torn now. I like this side uh, slug chasing slugger. Yeah, I'm I'm torn now because I kind of like the idea of doing this um, region trade thing with Zinch, but um, I also really want to get onto this like fleeing away to the north to the northwest as well. Uh, oh yeah, we got oh infections. No, oh yeah, I forgot. Shit. Okay, so yeah, I forgot that um, fighting 
although it looked like a siege, the game kind of actually counts it when you fight a camp as fighting an army. So instead of getting like the siege type um, options down here that don't typically give you hardly any infections at all, um, we actually get the battle ones. So what we could have done is surrounded these units of um, noblars and gotten like crap loads more infections. Um, I mean, we've still got 98, so it's pretty good, pretty good run. But um, but yeah, we definitely could have got a lot more. So yeah, so we're not currently at war with these. Uh, we're not currently at war with these ogres here. Um, so if we want to do the zinch method, we are going to have to, you know, we are going to have to fight them. And they've got. They've got three settlements. Okay, they've only got three settlements, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's... Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good... I don't know if it's a good, good deal. Well, who else can we fight? That's the thing. Like, there's no one else really to fight. If we don't fight them. We can go and fight off these, or these dwarves. I guess we could do, yeah, I guess we could do both. What turn is it? It's turn nine. I see it's only one more turn until we can attack these guys. So now nah, actually, now nah, I'm, I'm keeping that in mind though. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, we might be able to do it somehow next later on, like sneak back and, and do it. But I think for now, we're going to go back with the original plan or the, uh, the other plan, which is to, um, yeah, run back over here and take out these Chaos Warriors. I really want to run another Lord as well. Yeah, screw it. Let's get another Lord going because it's just like, it just takes too long. Um, get, it takes too long to get your spreads if you don't have a lot of, um, a lot of Lords. Um, it's sort of going to screw our economy a little bit, but you, know, you do. Ah, no, I already screwed up the spreads for this team. So we'll fix it. We'll get it next time. You can drag his each into a war with him once you've made friends, and then he deals with them if you move south. Okay, that's pretty cool. Loving the loving the green name as well, by the way, Thomas. Thanks for welcome back. It's cool that you got your six month um, head back again. It didn't like make you bust you back down to like you know the one month head or whatever. How do supply lines work in Warhammer 3? Hey, Xavier, they work the, pretty much the same in as in, uh, they did before, except it's only 4% on Legendary. So they've reduced down the amount uh, greatly. It used to be 15% per extra army. Now it's only 4% per extra army. So it's it's almost ignorable, but it is still sort of significant, but it's not, you know, it's not like super punishment punishing, you know. Still got the up 10 percent upkeep, sir. Um, no, I don't think you have the plus ten percent like they used to have in Legendary anymore. I'm not. I'm not sure on that. It's sort of like get confused trying to work out the math sometimes. I need to sit down and probably do it. But yeah, no, I don't think you do get the plus ten percent uh, base upkeep 
Maybe somebody else might have checked that already, tested that properly, but yeah, I think when I was checking it last time, it didn't seem like you had the base 10%. It was just like flat 4%. You know, either, either that or the 10% is built into the base cost now. It's not a modifier. Yeah, I think like, I felt like, you know, it was like just a flat 4%. It wasn't like, you know, 4% of 4% plus 110%. It was like 4% plus 100%. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I could test it, but I don't know. I can't. I don't want to. Um, okay. We could make a cultist, but um, what about if we send a cultist to Zeech and just try to suck up to them? Would that be worthwhile? No, I don't think we need the... I think we need the cultists right now. Wait, so we can sell that. I wonder if we sell this to the ogres if they like that. They like that. Not cross me, and your spine will meet my. No, nah, they're not into it. They're into Stormbreak Mountain though. Hmm. Need to meet him. Be careful if you meet him, you become his major threat. Yeah, yeah, we'll try to figure out if, um, we'll try to figure out, um, if we can get friend, be friendly with him somehow. For sure. Alright, I think we're good now. They're not attacking us. That sucks. Alright, so if we break this alliance now... Then we won't take any penalties, but then I think if we attack them... If we attack them, like, within 10 turns... Uh, one more turn. Okay, we'll wait one more turn. But then I think if we attack them within 10 turns of breaking the alliance, then we still get another penalty from that as well. But... It's okay. Like, we're going to take a little bit of a hit, but yeah, it's fine. Okay, let's, um, let's get this corruption, let's get this uh, infection sorted out here. So, we'll infect Kugath. Let's for... Uh, we can actually... Nah, it doesn't give you back to my that. If you have like a if you have like a heap of lords and you pass it around like merry around merry you know ring around the rosy, you can actually probably get even more infections um, back from than you spend on it with this. But um, yeah, no, it won't work for us. We don't have enough lords. So yeah, so we currently we need it's up to thirty eight. So we need twelve. Then we can get that this turn. So infect Kugath and bring this guy in. He takes one unit. He gets a friction. And he gives that unit to this guy. And he gets the friction. And both and they both get the friction. And he gives that unit back to Kuga. And 
this guy gets that unit back from Kugath. And then he gives that unit to this guy. And he gives it back to Now we didn't get didn't get as many as we could have gotten, I think, but Oh, 49 and like one shot. Um I might just uh replay something. You don't even need to become his major threat, he'll stop you every time if his thing is off cooldown. As soon as he unlocks that thing and knows you, you're getting halted. If you're friendly you'll need to be yeah, well let's yeah, we should maybe try to be friendly with him. Um, unless until we like later on backstab him maybe. See so how we go. Right, I want one more infection somewhere. Um, I guess we could just put just put this on there. Well, this is already unlocked. A fair few. How how they get twenty five spreads on this already? Must have just been spreading wildly around different settlements and stuff. Pretty crazy. Oh no, we want to spread this one though. And... That's not really unhelpful, is it? Um. Oh, we might we'll get we might get a natural spread. I'll just let it go. Um, we'll see if we get a natural spread next turn. We'll use the um, we've got chance that we got yeah we got plus fifty percent chance of plague spreading. Um, so we'll just let, we'll see if we get a natural spread next turn. The rotting ox I wonder if we should come after this army. He's, he'll probably run. Actually, if he runs, he won't be able to get away because he'll have to go through the water. Oh, he can go around. Big on. Crap. Just screwed up there. This guy's level 7 as well. Oh, damn it. Yeah, that was a mistake. Um, because, yeah, because this guy could break the siege, go around Kugarth, and then kill this guy. Like, and he totally is going to do that, right? Isn't he? Oh, I could have used this guy to spread out, spread out, get that a bit more, but... I don't know, will he? Do you reckon he will go around there and kill this guy? I don't know. I sort of feel like the AI won't do it for some reason because he's sieging this settlement and everything, but he completely could just can cancel that siege, pop back to here, and then go around and kill this guy. Mm. I mean, it'd be a bit of a bummer to lose a level 9 hero, but let's see. You know, experience is free. Fuck it. Right. If he comes back out there, it's kind of good because it saves us movement. We don't have to run back down here. We can just go this way and kill him. Um, so yeah, I'll be happy with that. And I want to. I'd rather. I really want to field battle. This is yeah. This is about to rebel. So I was going to try and sell it to somebody, but the ogres are the only ones that could possibly buy it. Actually, we could wait. And uh, did we repair it? No, I didn't repair it. Um, yeah, I'll try and repair it, and we'll see if we can fight the rebels with the um, with this garrison. Could be fun. He may just run, seeing all that force coming. Yeah, that's what I think. Like, I think what he'll probably 
probably try and do is run. But because he's in the because he's on land, he won't have um, for his full movement when he goes into the water. And then we can just go straight through the port. We should be able to catch him. That's the hope. Um, but uh, but yeah. But if he goes suicide mission after this guy, I'm down with that because then we can still get like sweet amount of infections from this from uh, from fighting him. Um, so yeah, it'd be really good. Why don't we share Merkel's love together? Man, that sounds gross. Um, who, we can go to war with the Blood Axe tribe. Sure. We can go to war with the Bloody Sword. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? Let's do it. Let's go to war with everybody. Um, he's at, he's at war with another Nurgle tribe. The Septic Claw. Yeah, they're Nurgle guys. We don't want to be at war with the Nurgle guys. They're they're our friends. Um, maybe we can see if we can try to sell some wars to oracles. Uh, Imperial Wardens. Yeah, sure. And Anna's Sons for one gold. Uh, we'll wait till next turn. They might have some more money then. I wonder if we can get them to get over with any of our enemies. Probably not. God's minions require. Um. They don't care if we break it on military alliance with those guys. Do they want will they do your fate? Alright, we'll do it. That's all right, that's all we can do now. I knew it. I knew it. Well, I didn't know it, but I, yeah. Uh, I was afraid of this. I'm a dick. What a dick. How do you defeat a vampire? How to defeat a vampire? Mm. No, put a stake through his heart. Garlic. Screw crucifix. He's going to um, keep the damage. So if we can get a bit of damage onto him during this battle, then it will help us slightly next turn. It's all that, this, it's all that um, Festodium Whistlesaw can give us. A little bit of damage on the enemy. Moral victory for us. Yeah, you think you would run seeing all those armies coming for us? 
But he's a bloody dwarf. Stubborn little pricks. He's like, I'm going to do some damage before I, before I go down. This like guy like gave his gave all his dwarfs like a little speech. He's like, we could run men. Wait, dwar I guess dwarfs. I don't know. Do, do dwarfs refer to each other as men? It's like we could run my fellow dwarfs, but we have an opportunity here to give chaos a bloody nose. Are you with me? Are you ready to throw away all your lives in a pointless gesture? And all the dwarves were like, yes. And so they did. But in, uh, I'm going to make them make this dwarf pay for it with his life, hopefully. I like how the door's just walking next to me. He's not even attacking me anymore. Oh, no, there he is. He's attacking me now. At least he's gonna it's gonna make his army a lot easier to deal with because he's gonna be easy to kill when we uh, when we catch him after this what an absolute dick why don't you just run away into the water and die like a dwarf hopefully he caught the plague off him we got our one infection and he could would he show up on here i'm not sure Holy shit. Where'd those guys come from? Oh, this is the rebels. The rebels. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do this. I love, the, I love the diplomacy rework. Yeah, I love the diplomacy rework too. I think that they can, they can tweak most of it, you know, a little bit here and there to fix it. So, you know, there's some few things that are like easy to, you know, um, cheese the AI with, but yeah. Um, like, is it kind of better to like go on the opposite side? So like take them ages to take everything. And then by the time they do, we've got like a bunch of, we've got like some towers over here. So this one's got tower there. And a tower there. Yeah, this one's those two towers are pretty good. They don't be able to shoot all around here. They don't have any ranged units. So we're golden on that. We'll give us more time for our winds of magic to save up. He doesn't have any magic, so that's another advantage to us. Um should I get like should I get them tier one towers or go for tier two? Because I feel like once they get here, we could get overrun a bit. Is Nurgle fun yet? Nurgle's always been fun. I love Nurgle. Alright, maybe we'll go for one tier two tower first, and then we'll go to tier one. Yeah, by the time these guys get over here, we'll have like some hectic towers. It'll be bad news for them. 
you can just two, two, two tier two towers will be enough to deal with these guys? Hope so. And then if we get if we get any more, we'll start putting five hundred towers just everywhere we can get one. Man, these towers aren't. We, I think we just don't think we've got enough health to deal with these. Um, yeah, I don't think we've got enough health to deal with this. The towers are like okay, but they're not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm surprised how long these dogs took to kill. That was really crap. Uh, where else can we put a tower? Uh, maybe this one? I don't think that's going to like hit anything. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win this. No, they're not, uh, not at all. Well, these guys got wrecked pretty good. We're gonna lose this because they're gonna number us. settlement at all but I just thought it'd be cool if we could win it you know
know this one can actually target him, but... Oh no, he's going down. Try and just get him in a ball, as tight as ball as possible around their lord. Um, and then that means we take as little damage as possible. And hopefully we get them to ball up as well. Alright, there's nothing left for it now. Just gotta hope for the best. Just hope those towers do their work. They're close. That was close. That was really close. Just finished a trade focused Greasers campaign. Every settlement that wasn't in the mountains I sold to another faction. Usually Zhao because he isn't in the race. Greasers campaign I've had in 103. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, those no Nurgle 200 Nurgle towers did seem pretty good. I have a feeling somebody said that the, the level 1 towers were really good. Or that maybe. Um, Use the toads to bait the units away. Oh, uh, yeah, I could have. That was been a good idea too. Because I had, I was thinking about using the toads, but then I thought, well, their dogs out without speed my toads wildly, so you know that's not going to work. But if I had have, yeah, killed the dogs first and then used the toads, then it might have worked. But see, that it was pretty close. We nearly got him. So did we get a free um did we get a free spread from that? Yeah, alright, we got our spread for free. Okay, now we got that, that's cool. And then we also want to get we wanna get this for the 50 growth, but more urgently, we wanna get that. And for that we need gut rot. Which is this one. Um hmm. Maybe we won't worry about that right now. Actually, yeah, if not now, if not now, then when? All right, we'll give this guy Ubos and we'll add in, add in some plague bearers. Yeah, this one sort of like essentially doesn't make much difference, like, because you can probably get five spreads in a turn fairly easily, especially if you've got two extra lords. But then, so you get five back and it costs 25 to add it, so it sort of works out the same. All right, so now we've got the summons. My new place is delightfully this guy has helpfully gone into Force March. I don't know why he went into Force March. Like, wouldn't he just attack the guy and then just stay not in Force March? That seemed like a pretty stupid idea. Just tried to run away, but failed. Bring the grandfather's toxic love. The perfect. It should spread the plague to him, but I'm not sure if it'll count like before he dies, like because he's gonna get wiped out, right? But the plague should spread during the end battle, um, like after the battle. Um, yeah, like the plague should spread to him during the after battle um, resolution or whatever, and then he gets destroyed after that when we come back onto the campaign map because of the um, because of being in force march. So we should get a plague spread onto him, and hopefully we should get a, a good a good amount of infections as well. Um, thanks for being the best Warhammer three YouTuber around, at least in this guy's opinion. Off to work now. Have a good one. Ah, uh, no worries, Thomas. Have a good have a good day, man. And thanks for uh, thanks for the kind words. Alrighty then. So one option would be to go super wide 
and try to out like because we've got more units than he does so we can go super wide and like flank around the back and like tie up all these melee and stuff like that the problem with that is that if we do that we're going to be flanking and attacking his his range units with only like one or two units of nurglings and like they these guys like dwarves are pretty tough you know they got a lot of armor we don't have any armor piercing so like they'll probably like almost beat the nurglings you know in melee and they'll be far away from they'll have low morale and they'll end up crumbling and all that kind of stuff um so uh, instead of doing that we're just going to blob up and sit in this forest and you rely on the forest to um well rely on the blob primarily to soak up the missile fire um and then um rely on the forest also to reduce it a little bit more just kind of keeping my low my higher higher experience and my um lower health ones towards the back We'll just hide these guys out of range. We might be able to use them later on to... We might be able to use them later on to take out their artillery or something. We can also summon the Plague Bearers like, directly on top of their artillery, so they could also help out. So we could just sit... Hmm. Actually, no, I won't. I'll just we'll keep them with Kuga because they get regeneration if they're with Kuga. So I think their regeneration will be better than the cover of the trees. So yeah, we'll go with that. I was hoping he was going to shoot over the top of it as they come in, but doesn't seem to be doing it. Rhesus has imp kind of the same problem as Imrik. He starts in a really bad place not to have underway. Yeah. The Greases, Greekers, Greases migrating to the Empire through the Rifts was pretty fun. That was my I think that was my last Greases campaign. I enjoyed that. Yeah, now I wonder what if we summon a unit of um, plague bearers directly onto here. They aren't armor piercing, um, but the grudge throwers don't have much armor, so that works out well. Maybe we should just get in there. Now that they're kind of all distracted and stuff. I forget that he's going to eat some damage from the guns, but I think it'll be alright. Alright, they didn't actually, they did about half damage to the artillery, but that was kind of a good distraction that they did. So the low AP damage is not great. <laughs> right, 
That should take out this artillery. Dead anyway. I think we're good. I think it's all under control. You can get another charge out of these uh, plague bearers. Oh, what are they getting poisoned by? Oh, the Nurglings have poison. Right, right. So the poison doesn't do anything. Yeah, now I get this thing. Uh, actually, instead of doing that, let's just kill the Lord. That'll give him, make him break a lot quicker. Now, we want to really kill, like, every living thing on this battlefield if we can. Um, because that will give us a lot more infections. So if we can get them to sort of... Ah, they're all about to break. Yeah. Maybe we can like try and herd them. Yeah, I should have, um, maybe I should have, like, pulled out some, kept some Nurglings back so I could have, you know, surrounded them. You had some Nurglings hiding in, Nurglings hiding in the woods. Might have been better. Yeah, we get a few kills here. Right, now we've got these guys poisoned. No, because once you catch them, the Nerglings can keep on them because they're... Because they've got the poison. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll slow those guys down so we can get some more. Get some men. He can do his healing potion. This guy can just keep casting spells. Ah, that'll do. I'll just keep casting some spells with this guy. So we can get some more, uh, a little bit of heals. Yeah, his is like very little, doesn't it? It's really not even worth it. All right, cool. Yeah, I think we should have got a pretty good amount of infections, maybe 200, 300 infections from that. How many did we kill? We killed 746. We get like 300 infections. We only took 23, ca 23 casualties in that. It's pretty good. 491. Booyah. Dude, that's what it's, that's what's the, um, that's why it's, um, so good for fire field battles, basically. Yeah, I wish we could have got all of those filthy dwarfs. Filthy dwarf infection bags. But, um, that's pretty good. That keeps us liquid for quite a while now. Now we can start dropping poultice and, you know, getting jiggy with it. Now, oh, I. No, well, actually, it would have been nice to have this done already, because then we could have got the 150 gold from it. But that's okay. Okay. Now. Start heading back over here. Recruiting the Lord because we got our other one killed. <laughs> we'll even go four lords. We're doing alright for money right now. So I might even go the four lords. Oh no, we can't because we're already. Yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll recruit a fourth lord from Sunken Towers once we get there. Okay, now we've got all that good stuff. Actually, before we do that, uh, yeah. Ah. This will infect yourselves. So, hmm. I see you, Sashi. Thanks for dropping by, man. So, okay, so on the one hand, it'd be good to get a plague ridden of death, because then we could get the infinite magic going. Which is pretty hot. Without using an extra lord. On the other hand, if we go for well, actually we don't know, we don't need a healer because we've already got a healer, right? So that's cool. He's just about our other healer is just about to level up. But he's good. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So we'll just go this. And the plus leadership, plus two leadership. It's not as good as discipline, but it's still pretty good. Take that. Alright, this guy can be our new uh new um super duper magic making guy. she abundant all right now we've got the mad heals rip plus four leadership confidence rate ah uh, it'll be back it'll be back 
I think they just put the like wrong tables in from the uh, like the old traits or something. Um, yeah. I think it was just a mistake. I hope they. Uh, and then there's so many little things from the fix. Like I doubt that they'll pick, fit it all into the balance patch, but, but that would be a cool thing if they fix the traits in the in the um, in the 1.1 patch as well. I mean, a new patch is always exciting. Like when I when I like read what they said that they was gonna they were gonna do in it, it wasn't that exciting. But and I don't think it's gonna like make make any huge difference to you know bringing heaps of people back to the game if they've stopped playing it already or, or whatever. But um, I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Because I feel like most people would just enjoy the game anyway if they didn't like. I don't know. It's more like the late game, like it's like the extreme late game potential of the game is kind of harmed by, well, not extreme late game, but I don't know. Like the initial experience for a casual gamer that doesn't like not, not somebody who plays a lot of Total War. I think the initial experience for a casual gamer who plays, doesn't play a lot of Total War. If they play one at three, they'll have a pretty good time. You know what I mean? Like the rifts don't even spawn until turn 40 or something, which takes, you know, quite a few hours. Yeah, you know, if you think how much like the average person probably spends on a game, the average person probably only spends like, you know, 10, 20 hours like on a game before they get bored or whatever, I guess. I don't know. Like maybe, maybe not, maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. But, you know, and anyway, I'm, so I just think like a lot of the problems with Wyman 3 are like problems that the average person probably wouldn't notice that much. It's more just the like the fans of the series that are like notice it, you know? So yeah, so maybe that could be... It could bring back people back, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think that the patch will make much difference for most of us, but it will, yeah. But anyway, like, anyway, the reason I got into that whole topic of conversation was because I was just thinking, it'd be cool if they did just jam pack it with heaps of little things. Like if they fix the, um, if they fix the traits and, you know, fix the supply level again, they fix the supply line bug, they already confirmed that. Uh, but yeah, if they put the traits in, what else? What other little things? There's like a whole host of just like little things that they need to fix. Oh yeah, fix the ogres so that you can um, can get other ogre mercenaries besides just the ogre bulls. Um, yeah, there's like a bunch of there's a bunch of bunch of things. All right, so we've got our three lords now. Um, we don't need our plague bearer plague this turn, so we'll just go straight for gut rot. What are we up to now? We're up to six. All right, Let's see if we can get like eight more on top of that. So there's one. Two, three, four, five. I feel like it's. Oh man, I don't know what goes on with this. These plagues. They change to change. Like I thought, I sort of sworn somebody said that as long as you, if you pass around in a circle, then it usually works, but maybe you don't have any choice because, maybe when it spreads back on the first one, then it doesn't work. Hmm. Not sure. Anyway, so I think I counted five. 5 plus 6 should be 11. We've got 16. Yeah, so you get more so, uh, quite a lot of the time, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, we're on our way. We're on our way. We're like a third of the way now. Though. Getting our good, our good plagues. Oh yeah, these rebels are going to come and... Oh, they didn't actually take it. Oh, that's cool. So they sacked it, but they didn't actually occupy it. And, and, and like, because I was repairing, I was repairing the main building, like when they came. So after they sacked it, it just got repaired straight away. You pass it back and forth, not in a circle. Well, yeah, normally I pass it back and forth, and I get five. I get five infections every time. 
But um, we did an experiment where if you passed it around in a circle, you could actually get more. And I did it on stream. Like, I'm pretty sure we got like six or more instead of the normal five that you get. Um, maybe it was like eight. And other people were saying with four lords, they could pass around and get like 16 infections or something. You know, like, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, I don't, yeah. It just, I don't know. It's just the last, those two times I both tried it and it didn't work. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen. I, I thought that we like demonstrated that it 100% worked. But it seems to be 100% not working now. So, not really sure what's going on with that. But yeah, if we can't get... If we can't pass it around in a circle, then um, there's no point having, like, heaps of lords. So, I won't hire my fourth lord yet, just yet. We'll try, we'll try this one more time. Yeah, we'll get this money. We'll get this money coming. Eternal going up to minus four. Well, so he's not going up very much. Right, we'll go with Kane's sons. We'll just think, every, just every time he declares war on somebody, we'll just declare war on him. We'll just like, every war that he's in, we'll just keep joining his wars. So that we're always buddies with him. We can get him to go to war with those uh, ogres. Oh, uh, there's not, he's, we're not at war with them yet. Hmm. I can't even give him a gift. So yeah, basically we run all these settlements um, for as long as we can. And then um, one turn on growth, not growth. I'll right, give Glutport the growth play again. And then, um, yeah, hopefully we can build up this, build up the sunken sewers a bit more. All right, we'll let it, yeah, we'll roll with that. Okay, rematch. This time we're going to win. I think everything we did that time was good. It's just that we didn't, we weren't just weren't able to tank long enough to take out the, um, to take out the enemy army. This time they're a bit weaker, and um, we've got more tower. We're gonna have more, uh, much more, unit. Much we have much more units, so be good. We're gonna mess them up. It's really weird just to keep trying to pass with the individual lord and sometimes it does what you don't expect it to. Yeah, it's it's weird. I'm sure we got it to go in a circle and get more than the five, but I just I haven't I've tried it twice now, I haven't been able to get it to happen. It might be because Oh I know what it is. I know what it is. It's because um it's because the other lords have the plague too. So if like like if you like if you put a new plague on Kugath, yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I know what it is. It's what you've got to do is you've got to pass the you've got to pass the plagues around before you give Kugath the new plague. So the new plague is fresh. The new plague has multiple spreads. 
old plagues can only spread i think a maximum of one time so if you've got an old plague on one of them and then you pass like you pass the plague from kugath to the other guy and because you notice like on the first spread there was like two spreads like it went from kugath to the other guy and from the other guy back to kugath and it's like oh that's weird why is it getting two spreads because kugath's the one with the infection and it's because the other guy is passing the old infection from last turn back to kugath so so yeah, so what we got to do is like spread them first, get the old infections all spread it and gone, and then you can get the chain going and you get the full thing. So yeah, be prepared. Next turn we're going to get like the mad the mad infections. Settlements give double infections if they are damaged. Wow, that's uh interesting. All right, so yeah, we'll set up on the direct opposite side again. I think this one Is this the same one? Yeah, I think this is the same one. This one, it is actually pretty good here because it's nice and flat. We just got to make sure we set up in the correct spots. All right, bring it. Actually, we can probably put like, um, put one there just to start softening them up straight away. And then we'll Toads are fucking gross. Gross toads. Alright, we got a sweet, sweet blob. I wonder if this is going to get any shots off before they... before they cap it. I should, could have had it up already before we even started. It's still doing some damage. No, they're not even capping it. Nice. So it's going to get some good damage on them on the way past. It's like a maze they're going to go through. It's like tower defense. Get them to go through here, whittle them down a bit. They come through there, whittle them down a bit with this tower. Whittle them down with this tower, you know. Just get a bit by bit. I don't even know if we're going to need the army. They're just going to get wrecked by the towers before they even get here. They're just getting wrecked. Game over. Game over. Corn fools. Too aggressive. You need to love each other like Noble. Alright, it's done. Tier towers. Tier 1 towers for the win. Are you going tier 1 are better than tier 2? Oh, infections per turn. Right, right, yeah, no, it's, yeah. Um, Nurgle Plague Drone text don't apply to Death's Head variant. Oh, what type do we have? Do we have the Death Head variant? Yeah, there's a bunch of little texts like that, like that one that, um, the other one that Legend was saying, the Slanesh one that doesn't, um, that removes the, it increases the devotees you get from gifts, but it removes all the other effects from gifts, so it, it's actually worse. Um, and then there's another tech, 
that you that Dash Dash was saying um, with the like with Cathay with the 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 Jade Warrior uh, crossbows. Um, the tech only applies to they did shielded Jade Warrior crossbows, not the unshielded. Um, so yeah, it's like. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to that. Oh, we can get magic items whenever they do that too, right? Yeah, all right. This time, be prepared for mad plague spreads. Be prepared for the mad plague spreading madness. All right, so we just got a free plague spread over the end turn. That happened before we even went. Now, I think, so, okay, so Flumenek receives the plague. So Flumenek receives the plague from either Kugath or Spurt Mildo. So I reckon, so, I don't know, but that was last turn. Yeah, yeah. So the intern, intern is last turn. So that's cool. That's fine. Um, then this guy, if he passes to him, he got, uh, he passed his plague to Kugath and Kugath passed his plague to him. So that's pretty good. How many? This is pretty cool already. We're getting a bunch. So we're already up to 35. I don't know how we got up to 35 already, but that's fine. And then he passes some plates to this guy. He gets one, and then he passes it back to Kuga. And he gets one again. All right, so everyone should be all plagued out now, right? So if we pass the units back and forth now, we don't get anything. Give it to this guy. Doesn't get anything. He's back to Kuga. Doesn't get anything. Um, is somebody in the settlement? Are we actually? Oh, we're just wasting movement wildly while we're doing this. Before. Let's just get to the settlement and do it for free instead of. Because yeah, if you do it you, every time you pass the units, you get like a little. You lose a little bit of um, movement. But yeah. So we um, put that on him. Yeah. See, no plagues. No plagues. So we've, we've spread all the plagues, right? Um, I felt like that we got more than three plague spreads out of that though, which is weird. Oh yeah, do it on turn 11. Oh no, we should have played... No, I already cancelled the... Didn't I? Wait up. Did I not cancel the non-aggression already? I forgot. Your life is very well. Yeah, I should have done it on turn 11. Um, because it, I think, I'm pretty sure we're still going to take a penalty hit now because we're, even though we're not at war of it, we're, uh, we're well with them, we still recently broke the, you know, recently broke the treaty sort of thing. So yeah, um, so yeah, so we need to get gut rot right for this one. Yeah, gut rot. So we need to give this plague to Kugath. Oh, actually, you know what? We'll try again as well. So it's going to cost us twenty-five infections. So we've got six hundred and thirty-four infections right now, right? So six thirty-four. And now I don't think this works for infections. I think the infections only works. No, no, I think it does work for infections. Sorry, it does. It does work. So six thirty-four for infections, right? We give the plague to Kugath. So that's cost twenty-five. So that means we're going to have um, 609 infections, right? And then I'm going to put an extra symptom on there to give us five infections per spread. So that would put us down to, uh, that's, that's another 25. So from 609, we go down to, what is it, 584. So we're going to get into 584. But then we're going to immediately get five back from giving it to Kugath. So we'll go back up to 589. So we get this one. And we give it this symptom, plus five infections per spread. And we infect that with Kugath. And now we should have 589. So we just got, two, we got double, just from giving it once to Kugath. We got we got ten infections instead of only five. Okay, so that's cool already, and we got one. We should have got one more infection on here. So instead of nineteen, we got twenty. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, now pass this to this. We get one. Kugath infects the other guy. The other guy can't infect Kugath because the other guy doesn't have the plague, right? Boom. So just one infection, and then we got another five. Uh, we got another five infections up here. No, we didn't get another. We didn't get any more infections. Then. 
Okay, that's weird. Let me pass this to this guy. And they both got the plague. That's weird. And we got 20 infections out of that. And he passes it to this guy. We got another 10 out of that. And he, got, he passes it back to this guy. We got another 10 out of that. Passes it back to this guy. Yeah, now we're, I think we're done now. So, I think, did we, I think we got back, I think we just got back more infections than we actually spent on the whole thing. So I think that whole exercise just was free in, in, in terms of infections. Um, yeah, we started off with 634 and we, um, and we actually made a profit of 10 in total. Plus, we went from 19 up to 28. So we just got um, nine spreads off that off that one. So yeah, I think you need the MA, MS paint diagram this one out. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing I like, I don't know, like, uh, sorry, I don't know exactly what you know. I don't know what the exact thing is. I just know if you yeah, if you do the spreads before, you get you clear the old spreads, and then when you pass it around you get more spreads and also I know that quite often it counts as two spreads even though it's only one spread um, I know the money one doesn't count you don't get anything out of the money and I know that the but the infections those extra infections from that extra symptom do count so if you've unlocked that then you basically can pay for your plague spreads for free which is pretty cool really know the mechanic yeah well that's it I don't know the mechanic I know I know some things that happen but I don't know like what the actual full thing is, you know? Um, like it is, yeah, I don't know why it double spreads and stuff like that. Legend, Legend was saying that he reckons that there's um, the chance of spreading is like a percent, but it might be like really high. So maybe this chance of spreading is like 95 or 80 percent or something. And so sometimes it just doesn't, you know, like when I passed them all around before we started, um, like maybe there was still a spread left there, but it just hadn't triggered because, you know, it had a chance to not trigger. Um, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to know. Anyway, I'm glad I got my extra lords now because that means we can we can get extra spreads. Um, I might actually get another lord since we can afford it. Is the extra spreading? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to be spreading a lot of plagues around, so why not? Alright, so we're now running a bit of a deficit, which is going to get worse when we lose all these ports. Because those dwarves are going to come back again and have another crack at these ports at some point. I would guess. Do you have the plague spread edict on? Yeah, I do. But it's only um, over the end turn that affects, like, it doesn't do anything like... Oh, well, actually... Yeah, I mean, maybe it does, yeah. I feel I feel like if it says, if chance of plague spreading is plus 50%, I feel like that would be over 100%, because I feel like the normal chance of plague spreading is like 85% or something like that. Something has to be non-deterministic. Well, no, there's a chance of... I, I think there's a chance of spreading over the end turn, but I think the end turn chance of spreading maybe is different from the... Like, if you fight a battle with multiple armies, I think pretty much all the armies will almost always get it. Um, and if you transfer units back and forth, you pretty much almost always get it. Um, but it, yeah, I think maybe it isn't, yeah, it might be 90% or something like that. 
I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I think I don't think we're gonna figure it out by just you know. I think that's about as much as we can figure it out. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm pretty sure the percentage is multiplicative, not additive. Yeah, it could be, yeah. But it's like, if, but I feel like the base is already high. Like, for transferring between units and transferring with armies, I'd say that it's like 80 or 90% at least, because it almost always transfers, you know? Um, when you transfer units between armies or if you fight in the same battle with multiple armies, it pretty much always, always, almost always transfers. So even if it, if it was plus 50% on top of 80%, even if it's multiplicative, it's still over 100, you know? So, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, yeah, I'm not sure how it works. Maybe, oh, maybe there's a maximum. Maybe it's pretty simple. Maybe there's just a 90% is the cap. Like, it's like a ward save, you know? You can't get your chance to spread over 90% maybe or something. Oh yeah, nice. Bring it on. More rebellions. More money. More infections. Oh yeah, we should start, now that we've got our um, infections sorted out, we should start setting up more cultists. Oh, the cultists cost money though, that's the only problem. Once we get the money play going... Oh, uh, the only thing is we've got to fight the battles all the time. Right at the end of your tech tree, your plagues jump constantly. Yeah, nice. The only consistent thing I've done with infections is the first battle with infect, retreat, kill on the first turn. What? What are you saying, Zotok? Like with the very first battle of the campaign, you attack and then you retreat, and then you attack them again. I'm pretty sure you can infect them without doing that. Just fighting them normally infects them. Because I think you get the infection before they get wiped out. Unless you kill them all, if you kill them all in the battle, if you kill every single entity and say that there's none left in the battle, then maybe not. But if you leave a few alive, I think then you should get you should get it. Hey, you going to the team? Welcome, on. Yeah, you attack and give them the plague, then you get seven jumps. Seven jumps with just two lords oh you mean what are you saying you get seven from the one battle sorry uh, is this the same are we in the right no, oh, we're in the right spot wrong spot yeah there we go and this time we'll build this build this tower before the game starts so we actually get some shots out of it boom Oh yeah, so it was, were you guys saying, do you reckon the tier 1 towers are better than the tier 2 towers? Like, uh, you know, is it like the ta tier tier 1 towers are actually better than the tier 2 towers, or the tier 1 towers is just better than two tier 2 towers? Tier 2 is better versus Blob and the double fire and the same explosive damage. Okay. So yeah, I think in this situation I'm pretty better off getting the tier twos because well not in this in this situation we should be sweet anyway, but um but yeah, I think like the tier twos is better for this type of situation because we've got heaps of time before they get over here and then the battle happens here, so we just want the maximum 
like tower damage basically on this part of the situation here. Oh yeah, if we can just kill all these dudes, if we just run the timer out and kill every single one we can, then we'll get more infections. More infections. It's all about the infections, boys. And girls. But yeah, I think we've got as many infections as we're ever going to need now. Now that we've unlocked the secrets of the free infections. Everyone says, so if you're fighting with only one tower near nearby, then tier two is better. But if but two times tier ones fire slightly faster than one tier two. Yeah. Hey, I get it. I get it. I think I get it, yeah. I only got 15 infections. Man, I thought I felt like we deserved more infections than that. Well, I'll just take the money now because um yeah, we're good with infections. We're all good. All right, let's see how many infections we can get this time. 651, did they go down or up? No, we went up, yeah, we had 630 or something before, now we've got more. Cool. All right, let's get our, let's clear our old, clear our old, um, there are spreads from the last turn. I wonder if we got any spreads over the end turn as well. I don't think we would have got any spreads over the end turn because I think we used them all up. Like if you pass them all back, then back and forth, then you get all your spreads done, I think. Um, oh, actually, no, I don't know. I don't know. I know some things, but that's it. I don't know the whole story. Still in 28. All right, cool. So we'll infect. No, no, we won't infect anyone yet. So first of all, we pass it around. So we give it to Flumatic. Flumatic gives it to this guy. This guy gives it to this guy. This guy gives it to Flumatic. So yeah, so we didn't get any spreads, right? So that could mean that there's no spreads to be done. Or it could mean, like, it could mean that they're just not going to happen this turn. Or it could mean that we just didn't roll high enough or something. But I think it's like, I think it's like if it doesn't happen, it, it's not going to happen, you know? Um, so I think we're good. I think we've cleared it now, right? Now, if we cast, we put the same thing on uh, Kugath again. So we're up to, we're up to 28. So, yeah, see how many we can get this time. Um, we'll put the um, free infections, so we'll pay for our, pay for ourselves. And we'll infect Kugath. 611. So, instead of costing 40, it only costs us... I mean, instead of costing 50, it only costs us about 40. We've got 10 back from that. Then, Flumatic can get it from... Kugath. Yep, and then Flumatic can go to this guy. Now, it should be only Spurt Mildew should be able to get it from Flumatic. Flumatic shouldn't be getting anything from Spurt Mildew. But last time, he did. Yeah, see, where the fuck did that plague go back onto him? Like, it bounced, like, his own plague that he gave to that guy bounced back onto him again. 
It's weird. And then Sperm Elder can give it to Toxfarter. And then Toxfarter, go back to Kuga. And then I think we're done. So we've got Flimitech, we'll just do one more lap just to make sure. I know Flimitech got another one, cool. And then Flimitech can give it to Spirit and Blue. Yeah, now, we, now I think we're done. Now we're done. No, no. Alright, I'm gonna do another, okay, I'm doing another lap. Give back to Flimitech. Flimitech gives it back to Spirit and Blue. Okay, we must be done by now. I know we got another one. What's going on? Alright, I'm gonna give this back to him. Give him back to Puga. Alright, now I think we're definitely done now. Yeah. Alright, yeah, cool. Alright, well, that was good though. I feel like we got more that time. Like, way more. Let's see how we did. So we got from, oh yeah, so we got from 28 up to 47. So we got another 19, inf we got 19 infections that time. 19, we got 19 spreads off the one, off the one thing. So bam, like, you know, at that rate, you get 19 spreads per turn, you can get a pretty high amount. Um, so it's pretty good. Um, and how do we do on infections? 701. So we actually made even more this time. We made back our original 50 and we made a profit of another 50 on top of that. So we, so yeah, so instead of spending 50, we actually gained back 50. So actually like made a hundred, we got a hundred free infections back from doing all that spreading. So yeah, it's pretty good. All right, now we can upgrade this finally. And then, so we've already got, we can summon Forsaken right now if we wanted to. Um, and it's on its way cycling around. So I don't know how many, it's, it takes like a bunch of turns there, doesn't it? Like two more turns here, then four turns, then four turns, then five turns. So it's going to be, what, is that right? So it's going to be nine, 13, 15. So it's going to be 15 turns before we actually get to unlock, um, we actually get to unlock um, Soul Grinder. That sort of sucks. We'll just get it in time for the rifts. Just get one of them in time for the rifts. Um, unless we can get... Can we get... Uh, oh, actually, if we turn, change this... Oh, that's only for Cyclone for infrastructure buildings. Doesn't do anything for other military buildings. If... Um, Rancid Allo... Rancid Allo, there it is. So we've got to get a bunch more technologies before we can get that. Um, it's possible to get Soul Grinder earlier if you build the structure first turn. Oh, yeah, true, true. Yeah, that would have saved us like five turns or something, I guess. Would it? Oh, maybe. But it wouldn't, have, wouldn't it have already reset back around to zero again if we built it first turn? Do you have to, maybe you have to build it on like turn five or something? There's Rancid Allo building minus one, then the Plague, then the Talent. This is why it's Kugoth got a, pl a talent. I must test my contagion. Has he got a skill or something? There we go. 
violent spasms. Yeah, alright, let's um let's put that down. Actually can we It's not for the whole like thing though, it's only for, just for this one settlement, isn't it? Alright, so we'll put violent spasms on sunken sewers. That will reduce the cycle time for our basic military buildings. Replace your growth building with the one on the far right. Cycle time minus one for basic military buildings. Oh yeah. Will do. Alright, we're getting we're getting all the secrets. Is, did you say something about a talent? Is there, um, is there a, um, yeah, is there a, is there a, um, what do you call it? A, um, yeah, is there a skill or something that you can get? Got the, yeah, I got the, got the tech, but the tech's not till like for ages. We won't get the tech before the rifts probably. I don't suggest you remove your growth building because the last tick of said military building works double at tier four. What? Growth building doesn't do anything at tier. F doesn't do anything, does it? Like um. Ah, oh, because yeah, we don't really need growth because we've got shitloads of growth from plagues and crap. Um, but also we can just put the growth building back. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess I could just wait. I guess wait three turns because the growth building cycling around, so we're going to get, um, you know, more growth and more money soon. So, yeah, you're probably like, yeah, maybe I should wait till we get to back to here. Um, wait, which building are you talking about? You mean this one? Once you unlock the special plague, you'll have 500 growth in the province. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, this one gives you minus two from from basic business buildings once you level it up. That's pretty cool. No, oh, yeah, I want I want that. Kind of. Mm, I'm kind of thinking we don't need the growth building. Yeah. Even the, even this three turns, like 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 two extra turns, we could get this. Oh, I guess it doesn't. Oh, I don't know. I guess it doesn't mean too much. CT, yeah. See, it gives you minus two at tier four. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool. Thing is, like, I'm probably going to build this back again. You know, I'm probably going to build the. I'm going to demolish that. Build that, and then in three turns, we're going to build this back again. So, it's, and we're only going to get so we're only going to be two turns ahead on this. So it's sort of a waste, I guess, like a waste of money, two thousand gold. We have to spend extra. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I should have done it. I should have set it up differently, but yeah. Hmm. Nice. Oh yeah, thanks for um for explaining that stuff about the buildings, guys. I hadn't really looked into the buildings much. I was kind of I'd been kind of ignoring that part of it, um, and that's obviously a really big part of the whole noble um, experience. So yeah. The Tong. Well, Tong. I think your time has come. Do they have any enemies? Dominance. 
The ruinous powers demand your utter destruction. What can you do? Go? Can't go wrong. Oh, we didn't even lose any, um... Didn't even lose any reliability from that. Nice. For me, Nurgle is all about the rush to the first Soul Grinder. Yeah, yeah, we could have definitely got the Soul Grinders faster. So, yeah, I don't know if everyone was fully following that whole conversation there, but... Yeah, we could have been, if we'd have been a bit more aware of this stuff, we could have been a bit, a bit quicker on the Soul Grinders. But that's okay. What do you mean, declare war? Didn't I already declare war? Oh, it is, yeah, it doesn't work, right. That's right, the whole, like, join war thing doesn't work. Um, it's like bugged out or something. So like I I just tried to join war. So I sold them I sold them the fact that I would join the war I guess, but now I have to actually join the war separately to that. Oh, what the fuck? Did I just join the war the wrong direction? <laughs> uh, sorry guys, I just need to uh, uh, have a look at that situation again. That means I need to do all my plagues again too, which is annoying. But yeah, I think I think I just joined the war against from with my enemies against my allies. Yeah. Oh well, we already saved scum once earlier this campaign, so. But it's just a it's a science campaign. I did put the blue I put the blue beaker on. If the blue beaker basically if there's a blue beaker on there, it just basically means anything goes. There's no rules. There's no rules except science. Um yeah, so I'll just do all that again, basically. But just faster this time. Hey, I wonder if we'll get a different outcome this time. Because there, uh, there seems to be some sort of random element to it, right? So we'll see if we actually get a different um, different outcome this time. Uh, it's this one we're trying to spread? Yeah, yeah. And we'll give it the extra frictions again. Spread. Alright, um, 711. I think we actually got slightly more that time. We got an extra 10. And we got 49. Uh, yeah, I think we got one extra spread there, maybe? So we nearly made it. Um,
And we'll give the sunken sewers... Cycle time reduction and give them the military buildings. Hey, Chanda. Okay, yeah, man. Okay, I think we're all good now. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this the other way around. Where's that? Why are we? Why do these guys like hate us so much? Strategic threat. Oh, okay. Broken treaties with the Tong. Are they like that? Okay. So we offer to join with the Tong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we lost reliability that time. From um, breaking, from attacking somebody that we'd recently Tomorrow. been enemies with. Um, who would have thought that Oracle Zinch would have liked the fact that we were friends with those other guys? But, but have seen the and We just like join wars with like every one of their enemies. I don't care. I'll take any enemy that they've got. I just want to be his friend. Again, Jedi. Got any first-time Nogal campaign advice? Um, yeah, lots. <laughs> this uh, this whole stream has been about that, basically about that. Um, yeah, I think if you pretty much follow everything that we've done in this stream, you'll go. Uh, you won't go too far wrong. Um, although we could be, we could have been more efficient with our buildings. We figured out, uh, but that's kind of complicated to explain. We were just, we just kind of went through it, and I'm not sure I've still got my head around it 100. percent I wonder if we'll actually get another spread from this, because we're we're on 49. We should get like all. It should spread every like to all these armies like when we fight. But I'm pretty sure we've like used up all the spreads, so we won't get any more. Um, I'll bother this stream tomorrow then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll. I will continue to talk about it more, Jandark. But it's just like we just, yeah, we just had a big talky session there. So I'm just about to have a battle. So yeah, we'll cycle back around to that though. Next time there's a bit of a lull in the action, I'll um, we'll do a uh, what's what's good new advice. Well, have see. Maybe you guys in the chat can have a go at answering that, and then I'll uh, you know, build up some advice in chat. And then I'll read out I'll read out everyone's advice after the battle or during the battle if there's some quiet times. The Cathay Bejeweled Dagger is an arcane item, so you can stack it with the Slanesh Blade. Yeah, that's the that's the um that's the rare um that's the rare ward save item that you get from Ind from the caravans, yeah? Or is that a different one? Yeah, so can we got a few we got a few Nurgle experts in the crowd today. So what's your what are your tips for like first time Nurgle player? We're gonna help Chandark out. That's I mean that's kind of the whole point of this stream, I guess, is you know, basically for people that want to play Nurgle, like just, you know, to make it fun for them, you know. So Nurgle only has one hero, the Plague Ridden, that can fight in armies. No, 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 Nurgle has the Plague Ridden and the Cultist. And additionally to that, there's like a special cultist that you spawn with the plagues. But the special cultist you spawn with the plagues is not your cultist hero. That's like a special extra thing. You can get cultist heroes as well as that. But you need a settlement. You need a uh, level three minor settlement to be able to do it. I wonder if we should try and get sneaky and do this. Did they put... Oh, they didn't put towers up. Oh, they're clever. Normally they put a tower there, but they, they saved it and didn't put it there.
Where did they put it? Over there somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is over there. That's weird. I wonder why they did that. We're going without, we're going without Kugel's, uh, we're going without Kugel's, uh, Mortis Engine. I don't know if you really need the Mortis Engine that much. It's good, but, um, we've been going out without it for this long, because you wouldn't even get it until now anyway. And then, um, and then, um, very soon we're going to get the Mortis Engine on the, on the healer. Um, which I think is, like, probably almost better. Especially when you got three or four of them. I wish we could make these guys just permanently stay on the ground in that blob. But they won't. Yeah, I don't think they'll do it. But yeah, another thing that's good about going for the um, another thing that's good about going for the Mortis engine is so the thing with the Mortis engine is that it only is operational when Kugath himself is in melee. So if you're going to use it, you need to be managing Kugath to make sure he's personally meleeing units, which he's not going to be necessarily doing all the time automatically. Um, and you don't necessarily want him to be at the front. So you know, there's like if there's like straggler enemies that you can get into melee with, and you know what I mean. Like it's hard to keep it up all the time and. Um, and you know, sometimes you need to be running away with Kugath and not taking hits and everything, you know, blah blah. But on the other hand, it is really good, and you are you and you are able to just get Kugath into melee and use the Mortis engine quite a lot, um, as long as you're not getting the shit shot out of you at the time. Um, so yeah, it's definitely good. But I'm feeling like maybe I'm going to get away with not using it this time. Um, see if this can. Oh, I think I need a single. Should have done a overcast. Um, but yeah, the other good thing about taking the Modus Engine is that on the way to the Modus Engine, you have to get plus 30% health for Kugath, and also the armor increase, both of which helps with missile resistance, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm not saying that the Modus Engine is bad or anything. I'm just saying, I'm just defending my choice to, in this particular instance, to try rolling without it, just for something different. Are these um, guys are staying on the ground? That's cool. So if you if you if you make them go on the ground, they actually stay on the ground. That's cool. The 
This is a good blood we've got going on here. It's a real good blood. For some reason, I spent my first 150 hours in Wemmer 3 playing Nurgle. Nurgle's good. I reckon Nurgle's good. That's what it's like this whole stream is all about. It's all about Nurgle being good. Get excited about Nurgle. Nothing wrong with spending 150 hours on Nurgle. That was a good one. Nice double bounce. Alright, let's get us some uh, fishy abundance. Oh yeah, look at that fat heal. Never be at low health again. Uh, Legend saying in his tier list that powerful plus fun to play was the same for him, so he thinks Nurgle is not fun to play, which is weird. And when Total War 2, he thought Tomb Kings were great, and they were below average when he said that. Yeah, that's true, actually, yeah. I think... Yeah, I don't know. I think he really likes Tomb Kings because he thinks they're a really well-designed faction. Um... I, I think, like... I think, I think with weak factions, like... With weak factions, it's not really about... For me, uh, like, I, I think maybe... Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously people have different opinions, but I think with weak factions, like, it's not necessarily just about them being weak. It's about... Do I want this thousand gold? Uh, yeah, we'll take that. Right. Um, it's not just about them being weak, it's about them being crap to play, like, not having anything they can do. Like, when you feel like you don't have any um, options, like, when you feel like you don't, there's nothing you can do, like, like being... Like being um, underpowered, having he uh, be, like having heaps of powerful enemies around you, and being Im imminently about to die, and, and whatever you know, um, is um, is fun if you can if you can do stuff, if you can fight, you know. If you don't have any tools to fight with, and you just kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. Nothing works. This sucks. Then that's that that's that's a way that being weak feels really bad you know but if you're kind of weak but you've got a lot of things that you can do like if you can fight you know you're doing different strategies you're doing different maneuvers you're fighting on the you're doing different combinations of units and different you know like yeah i feel like it, yeah i feel like that's a big factor you know if you just if there's just nothing you can do then it really sucks but if there's a lot of different things you can do but it's hard then that's that's fine um and uh, yeah, I think um, Andrew Tobias um, put the nail on the head. The, the Tomb Kings, like the Tomb Kings, maybe one of the. Well, I think that um, Legend says that the Tomb Kings they're not overpowered. They're probably like even one of the weakest factions because, but but yeah, like Andrew Tobias says, they they have a higher power ceiling later on in the game. Um, I don't think that if they never became powerful, I don't think Legend would like them. But I think that like I think like starting off weak and becoming powerful is like something that probably appeals to Legend and probably appeals to most people. So we could like maybe make the blood marshes our first like settlement that we try to get the max level. I don't think we can create any more. We can't create any more plagues this turn. Yeah, we should get, hopefully we'll get that over the end turn. Hopefully that'll spread to somewhere.
do well. Oh, actually, wait up. So, uh, no, sorry, Nick can't get in yet. We need to get to like 1030. So, yeah, once we get um, this locus of contagion, that will give us, like, basically a good mortis engine type effect um, that'll be, you know, really good. Uh, plus, we can have Black Boil, which is just massive damage as well. If everyone did a tier list, they'd all be so different. Yeah, fully. My tier list would be based on, like, how easy they can migrate and make a doom stack of heroes. Uh, not really, but, you know. I do like that kind of thing. Oh, what the? Are these guys pushed into... Man, we left our run too late. Yeah, like, these guys aren't supposed to have taken that off them. That's sort of screwed up our plans a little bit. They're supposed to stay weak, so we can just kind of... cruise around and take all this stuff. Um, but yeah, um... I know, I think the plan's still... is still good. The plan is still good. But yeah, now we're gonna have to make a little detour up here, I think, to take this out first. And then we'll gift that back to them. I guess. And then we'll have to go back this direction. So it's going to take us a bit longer. Yeah, I don't want to leave these guys' enemies behind us. That seems like our... Uh, seems like our friends, the... Flaming Scribes, or whatever they're called, are not handling this situation very well. This thing's still fighting off these rebels. Pretty good. Uh, we can just auto resolve this one. Okay, the gold. Well, wow, this is a good investment, this little settlement. It's making us like a few hundred gold every few turns. Armor of Fortune? Yes, please. Plus, then, Nogal Corruption, I guess, would be handy, but I reckon we'll get. I reckon our corruption will go up really fast anyway, so. Oh, yeah, I've got this some more, uh, some more boat action going on down here. New, the next fleet's coming out. Another twelver. We can probably. I wonder if we'll be able to beat it off, beat, uh, beat it back with our um, settlement. These don't seem to have gone down. Oh, it's like for infrastructure buildings. That's not going to help. Once we get the new um, infrastructure building up, then we can do it. Yeah, we really need to pump growth more on this on these settlements. All right, we're gonna just give Stormbreak Mountain. The growth plague again. Oh, yeah, nice. We've got gut rod unlocked. Um, next one we want is the growth plague. Do we need brain fog and paroxysm? There's paroxysm. We nearly got that. Um, and brain fog is. Oh, yeah. Very, brain fog is easy to get. Cool. All right. Done.
Um, might add that on as well, and... So if it does spread back again. Yeah, I might give it to this plague. I might plague it to put the same one onto this one. So that way if it spreads back again, it'll be, it'll be nice. And yeah, before next battle, we'll put the sack income one on. Um, before next time we sack something, we'll put the sack one on to Cougar. Is it tier one? Tier two, uh, yeah, tier one. So we're not going to get much money out of it anyway. So. Oh. Okay. Oh, we really should have got an ambush. An ambush trap would have been really good for this. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. I should have scouted this first. If we had set an ambush trap back here and that army came out, we would have got sweet infections. Actually, we don't even really need to worry about infections anymore, do we? Because we just got, we basically just got an bits like unlimited. Not unlimited, but we shouldn't have to worry too much about it. I don't know if I want to build the growth building here. Oh yeah, we could get that going, but we can't. Um, well, actually, yeah, we could get if we can get that going, we can get one more plague ridden, which would be nice straight away. Yeah, if we go up this direction, there's quite a few, um, quite a few of those um, uh, resource buildings, so we should be able to get pretty good. I'm kind of concerned that CA just seems to want to balance all this on MP performance. I hope they look at campaign stats and feedback too. Hey, Roger. I don't think it's a big deal, really. Um, yeah, I don't think it makes much difference. Like, the when they, like, nerf and buff, like, stuff in for multiplayer, like, they tend to do it very carefully and slowly, like, little pieces bit by bit. Like, if they're like, oh, this, this, um, this like, this unit's doing, like, 5,000 damage too much. That's terrible. Like, oh, we're going to rebalance that. So they'll just reduce its damage by like 50 and they'll raise its price, price by 25 gold per turn. And then if everyone's still complaining, then they'll raise it by another 50, you know? Like, they tend to do that. They don't just be like, oh, this is terrible. We'll take 7,000 damage off that. You know, they don't like nerf things into the ground usually straight away. Um, I don't know. Not always. But that, that's, I mean, that's what they've said is their philosophy about it anyway. Built on spell Curse of the Leper. Um, I don't even know if I know what that is. Curse Leper. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I was actually thinking about that. Um, it's um, it's not a it's not AOE. Basically, is my thoughts on it. You know, like it's yeah, it's it's probably it it probably is good for multiplayer. Um, you know, it ca you cast it on it on two units that are going one for one against each other. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's like that great in single player. Yeah. It seems like a multiplayer spell. Yeah. Like it's okay, but there's like, it's like, yeah, if you want, if you've got a good unit and you want the unit to like smash it, like, you know, if you had like an elite unit that you wanted to do really well, or you had like a, a, a summon that you popped out behind them, you wanted to like really do lots of damage or whatever, um, you know. It's useful for protecting Kugath as a last resort for the armor. Oh yeah, actually, that's a good call. I haven't thought of that. Did that guy go around us? Where did, he, where did his other army go? I sort of thought he was going to go around us and try and gank our settlement, which he may well do. 
plague weaver. <laughs> Oh yeah, what are we doing here? Um, I won't. I won't. I'll put this one on with the. Um, no, I'll put this one. Uh, no, no, we'll put this one on. Put this one on. Get the sack income. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go sack income. Let's go. A lot of dudes, but it's fine. I feel like hopefully we can do it. Curse of the Leper reflects damage on one unit onto all other units attacking it. Curse of the Leper is useless on Lord Jewels. Yeah, yeah, no, it'd be better on like um, a, like a unit with lots of entities that's fighting another unit with lots of entities, you know. Like it's bad, it's bad, it's bad on a Lord. Because it's not not enough not enough entities can hit the lord at one at a, you know and get the damage from it and it's bad versus a lord so if you have an, a, a lord attacking a unit it's not going to be good because the lord's going to do like seven thousand damage or you know seven hundred five hundred damage and it's only going to get fourteen damage reflected back so it's not very good but when you've got like two units of swordsmen attacking each other and they've got thirty armor and they do like twenty two damage or something twenty eight damage or whatever it is then you know. For, they're going to take. They're going to be doing 28 damage, taking 14 back on themselves, and their armor is going to be doubled. Their the your armor is going to be doubled from 30 to 60. So I can, you know, it'd be great in that situation. But for the seven mana, like you know, wouldn't you rather just cast the direct damage spell on the on the enemy? I don't know. I feel like it'd be really good on like a like a, a unit of um, Lanesh demonettes or something like that. You know, give them a bit of armor. And um, and also make them reflect um, against enemies attacking them. Could be cool. Are we gonna win this battle? I hope so. I mean, all this crap should like go down pretty easy. We just we don't have much damage potential though. That's the only thing. All you need to do is balance Nurgle is auto mass regen and mortis engine effect on regular great unclean one. And you can keep them slow, but just give them a cheap mortar unit. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I wonder if, does anyone know in tabletop, does, um, does, does, uh, Nurgle have any like plague catapult type things or mortars or anything? I feel like a plague mortar could kind of fit in with the, with the Nurgle, uh, you know, Nurgle vibe. It could just be like a big plague cauldron they turn it over and it sort of shoots plague out or something. Wow, it's a cool like crystals crystal uh check out this crystal like Zeech Fortress. Looks pretty awesome. Uh... No, no good doesn't have anything like that. No, okay. Well, oh well. What can you do? I kind of feel like this is a good spot, really. I don't know. Maybe not. <clears throat> What's going on over here? Yeah, no, this is definitely the best spot, isn't it? It's not kind of near anything, but you can just kind of push in from there and it's all good. And I think we'll just bring these guys over here. I feel like it's going to take us five minutes to get out of the doorway, so we may as well just bring them in as close as possible. Why aren't they moving? Can they not be there? What? I can't move. No. no, there's... No, that's it. That's the only spot he's going to come on from. Right, come on here, we can fuck off. 
What? Why can't I move it? That's weird. Oh, nothing. Like this, like, okay, it's like this spot. Clearly I can come on here, right? Because there's a guy already there. Okay, well, that's good, right? And then what about this side? Oh, okay, okay, so there's only certain spots. Oh, yeah, there's, uh, can't you, like, oh, yeah, right, okay. So there's, like, a spot there. Oh, there's, like, no reinforcement positions here. Yeah, so there's, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but there's these little green boxes outside the, um, outside the thing where you can see where you can come on. So, yeah, there's one here. Okay, so we can move them, like, a bit further this way. That's, like, as close as we can get it. Alright, cool. That'll do. Press start deployment, maybe? Oh, no, no, it's like, yeah. can do start deployment, but... Hey, what is it? Oh, that's, yeah. Nah, it doesn't make a difference, yeah. No, it's just, it's just these zones, yeah. These green, there's these little green boxes that indicate where you can bring on reinforcements, and yeah, that's the closest one. That's right. Um, yeah, so I think um, land landing our drones last time seemed to make them... Um, Pretty good. I think we're going to do that this time as well. We're just going to have them on the ground. And they're just going to, you know, be part of our blob. Children, halt. It is done. Oh, my blob. Uh, we're gonna take some hectic damage. Hectic. Oh yeah, these guys are taking it hits. Pretty rough. I'm sorry, I'm sorry my friends. You're suffering. Yeah, these are some of our best Nurglings. I should have put some of our Lobies at the front. So they could have died instead. Glorious blob is assembled. We should have that big AoE damage spell. Doors are about to bust. There we go. Alright. This um, this spell's gonna do so much damage versus these dudes. It'd be good. Yeah, I can bounce off this wall here. Very nice, nice double effect. The no gangs carry butt letters? Yeah, of course they do. Everyone's got butt letters. Yeah, 
Right. We should do some whopping damage on these guys. Uh, I wasn't too crazy, but it did. It was significant. It's good enough. We're starting to get some. Uh, starting to have some health problems. We haven't lost any entities yet. Um, let's try and get a heal on them. We can. Discuss the heal on the, uh, on the rock flies since we get it. Come on, give me one more. Right, this should feel like the rock flies pretty much to full health, I think. It's funny how Nurgling entities have slightly more HP than most cavalry units. Yeah, nice. The spell does good AP damage when overcasted? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's still not AP. Um, let me have a look. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, is that 100% armor piercing damage? Oh, how did I read that wrong? I thought it was 0%. Oh, okay. Let's uh, let's kill some chaos warriors. Didn't actually get to see the damage, but I'm sure it was magnificent. Now this is all going fantastically. Great stuff. I might just kill this lord. Get that over and done with. It seems to just be resisting our resisting dying for some reason. There we go. I think we're good. Just basically sit in this blob and just keep grinding them down. No, I think we're done. Um, I want these guys to take less damage. Thank <laughs> you. 
unspeakable proxies. Right, he doing right. Blue horrors can climb walls, walls, but not nerglings. Yeah, nerglings are. Yeah, nerglings are weird, aren't they? Alright, I think we're nearly done here. Yeah, work here is nearly done. Got a fair bit more crap to kill, but we're getting there. Our reserve zero, alright. Our reserve zero. Okay, cool. Now, if we just get this guy, we can get. Oh no, we can't get any more power reserve. It's getting, it's pretty simple now. We just fight. Yet caster can't give us shit because we don't have enough magic to cast any spells with him. But yeah, but we will we will get the infinite magic going as soon as we can. Kugath hasn't used hardly any of his ammo. Get Kugath to just start shooting stuff. Alright, looks like we've pushed him back from here for, a moment, for the moment. still got a lot of crap to chew through but I think we're getting there because I think like they've got um like I think they'll get army losses before we will because we've still got so much of our number left shooting at us. Actually, if we get a bit of power recharge on him... It'd actually be alright.
So we don't have any arcane conduits, that's the problem. Like, we can't really do the, um... Oh man, I'm getting my... See, these fucking things... They're like just death machines. So hard to keep them alive in these situations. Like, just everything else is... Well, not, it's not like they're death machines, but it's just like... Everything else in the roster is so strong. Like, so tough and resilient, and these drones just kind of... Well, not everything in the roster. Sorry, I don't have any... Just like, shitloads of Nurglings are so tough, is what I mean. I'm gonna slowly get around to this point here, but oh, actually, we could have just gone through there, couldn't we? Nah, whatever. We got distracted chasing ratty units. We were nearly there. There we go. Has anyone discovered the strongest in the Doom game in the Doomstack yet? Yeah. I'll give you a hint, it's Demons of Chaos. Hey, Darastrix Ith. Yeah, I think uh, Legend of Total War already made a hugely popular video about that that everybody's seen. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a secret. What if these cause damage to self things? I guess these cause damage to self things are also percentage, right? So, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to say. All right, let's uh, let's do this. Why did the, they take damage? I feel like a few noblings were taking damage just then. It's a big, big heal. All right, all our single entities are uh, good to go again. True Doomstack is 17 Noblars, High Elf no no Noble, Skaven Chieftain, and an Ogre Tyrant. Heal those big, thick lads to full. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's all about, Red Fondant. Um, get it. You dedicate to Zeech, get a lot of change as the general. Seven horror heroes and one Nurgle hero. This is hands down the strongest army in the game. Oh, really? Stronger than 19 Doom, stronger than 19 uh, Bloodthirsters? Uh, 18 Bloodthirsters and a healer? Actually, you know, 19, you should probably get 19 Bloodthirsters and a healer, can you? Um,. Also, like the, um, yeah, I don't know, like the 18, um, sorry, 19 cultist corn stacks pretty strong too.
Um, seven horror heroes and one. So what are you saying? Just have eight units. Don't worry about taking out any other units. I don't know. I don't feel like those eight units would beat nineteen bloodthirsters with heals. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm missing something. Imagine 19 Bloodthirsters showing up to a battle in the lore. Yeah, I know, 19 Bloodthirsters, that's like an epic, you know, there'd have to be like an epic battle with like millions of dudes fighting across like, you know, an endless field of war, you know. There's like no, yeah, there's no like regular situation where there'd be like 19 Bloodthirsters just chilling. Get all my elite Nurglings all leveled up again. Stack is complete once more. I wonder where that other other cast warrior is. No, I don't really care. If we if we get some more of our lords wiped, it's okay. Are we already Yeah, we already cast that, that's right. Um place called gallows tree there you go gallows tree we are your best friends how about that you love us Good. there we go we've def we've defended them against the evil warriors of chaos and given them back their settlement Yeah, you can make lots of um, you can make lots of strong doom like doom stacks with the um, demon prince. Oh, this guy's over there. Oh yeah, that's because I gave these guys the gallows tree. Now it should have a full. Oh no, it doesn't have a full. That's right. Uh, if I had have fixed up the, if I had have not beaten, like beaten the shit out of it, so they had no uh, garrison, 
then it would have been alright. I hope this guy isn't going to take it back. But maybe I should give this guy a few Nurglings. How many Nurglings did he have to take that out? Uh, I don't know. Like, three? Four? That's pretty cool. Um, cool. Another three. That actually made three. Made money. Made a profit off that. Yeah, they'll be able to three three nerglings and that guy will be able to kill that before nerglings. Yeah, he'll be able to kill it easily. He'll just like uh, spirit leech the lord down and be fine. Dilemma cancelling appears to work for Caravan, so you can save scum bad events away. You just reload the turn without accepting the dilemma conclusion. Oh, nice one. But, um, you can still get ganked by enemy armies though, right? And that's like the main thing. Like, that's the main problem with the late game trading. It's not the dilemmas, you can only handle them, right? It's the getting ganked by like three stacks or whatever. And just, there's nothing you can do about it. Alright, this is all... I'm feeling pretty good about this right now, i got to say. It's all... Uh, we're all having... It's pretty fun. Um, Alright, what's going on here? We've made it to the next level. Plague Sight. This is really cool, the Plague Sight. Um, I feel like it's like a luxury item that you shouldn't really, you know, need or whatever, but, you know. Um, this army ability, fantastic. Um, gives, us a, gives us a heal. Um, plague symptom. Oh yeah, this is uh, plague duration plus three turns. That's so really good. Um, oh, it's I mean, it's, you know, pretty useful. Because they're replenished on Nurgles, yeah, don't really. I would probably would take that, but don't really need it. Um, so yeah, so we want the army ability. We want plague sight. Don't want that. Don't want that. Play duration and casual replenishment for nerglings. So, um, what do we want first? I guess the first thing we probably want is the army ability. Yeah, we got army ability probably, and then yeah, one of the other, you know, go through the other four. Fecundity ASAP. The army ability. Yeah, yeah, the army ability is good. Fecundity. I forget the names of the things. Oh, we're on this one now, so we're getting closer. Next turn we can build the building that reduces the cycle time on that, so that'll be good. And yeah, as soon as we see some enemies anywhere coming for us, then basically we want to give we're gonna gift this settlement to those guys, and then that should keep our back safe. Father. Okay, Kugos got the extra movement now, which is very nice. Um, that ability is good. Upkeep reduction and regeneration for Nerglings. Yep, that's what we need. Um, chance of plague spreading faction wide, that's pretty nice. Melee defense for Nerglings is pretty nice. Don't need that, don't need that. Yeah, I like that. Um, don't need that. I like this buff. It's pretty good. It's pretty strong. I think we'll go for the plague spreading. Yes. This will end my stuff.
He's um. Is he gonna? No, he's not recruiting. He's just doing his thing there. Is this guy repairing? Yeah, he's repaired now. He's got a garrison. Yeah, all right, cool. We shouldn't have to worry about this guy. He can just, you know, he can just hang out there and be a loser. And yeah, now we tr might try and do some ambush trapping again here. Onward, so we could ambush there. And then we would still have enough movement to get to... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we should still have enough movement to get to there. I'll, um... I'll force march one a bit forward. Ah, there's only a little army there. Not really worth worrying about it. The garrison's strong enough there. If he tries to attack them, you know, he won't get any from anyway. Alright. Um what are we doing now? Oh yeah, we need to get our growth our growth going. Um get this one going. Uh, we need brain fog. Which is there. That's pretty easy to get. Um just uh yeah, we'll do it. I don't know, we'll do it next turn or whatever. Money's going okay. Uh, oh yeah, we could keep some growth going on here, I guess, or whatever. Uh, actually, no, we want the yeah, we want the military buildings cycle time on here. We want to build the this building, so it gives uh, cycle time minus two for military buildings when it's at tier four, um, and it gives minus one the rest of the time. We'll get that going ASAP. And then we'll, um, yeah, we'll cast the plague with growth, and with this one gives basic military buildings. Um, Yeah, this one play duration plus three turns is pretty good too. All right. Yeah, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep this one. I'm just gonna keep these at level one and just power up um, sunken sewers. Um, the extra growth we'd get from the other settlements would be nice, but it's all right. Really hoping we get the Glotkin Legendary Lord, fast large unit. Um, well, Glotkin's pretty famous, you know. Um, so yeah, I'd like it if we would end up getting like three or four Legendary Lords for each faction. Like, man, there's so much, there's so much content that we could get for t for um, so much content that we could be getting for one or three. Like, cause we could, like, I reckon realistically we could, we should be getting at least one more DLC for all the major races from one or two. Um, 
So I think I've done done here. I can pretty much just end end the turn. I think. Um, yeah, we can pretty much get one more, at least one more DLC for every major faction. You know, like Empire needs another DLC. Um, High Elves could do another DLC. Dark Elves could do another DLC. Like, some of them don't need, like, units necessarily, but they could go for more legendary lords. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, like, yeah, yeah they could go another legendary lord with their own special unique, you know, household guard type units or, you know, special bodyguard or famous unit or whatever. Um, so yeah, I feel like pretty much every faction could go another DLC, you know, um, like all the major ones, you know, like dwarves definitely have more characters. Um, dwarves have more units as well. You could go with, um, and then heroes, slayers, slay heroes and stuff like that. Empire has like all the different elect accounts and the, like a lot of them have special like units of, um, knights and stuff like that. The knights of the white wolf are like. Like, the Knights of the White Wolf, I think, are 100% coming because they're not in the game, you know? Like, all these other Knights are in the game. Like, there's Knight, Knights of the Blazing Sun, Knights of the, uh, Bull, not the Bull Ones. I can't remember what the Bull Ones are. Knights of the Everlasting Light, um, you know? There's all these, like, different Knighthood or Knights Panther, all the other ones, famous ones. And the Knights of the White Wolf, which is probably, like, the, se the second or third most famous like a knight faction knights they're not there so we're definitely going to get an empire dlc for boris with like uh, Ulrich, tutagen guard and um white wolf you know so nice to the white wolf um so yeah like fuck like i just mean there's so much dlc so much dlc fuck <laughs> it's like you know plus like all the chaos factions could probably do two two dlcs each you know um yeah so i don't know i like yeah I feel like if they keep making the DLC, people will just keep buying it. Like, it's not going to get, you know, people aren't going to stop buying it, you know. Um, maybe the general population, like just average players that, only, that aren't that interested, they might stop buying it. But I feel like the the main Woma community is just going to keep buying it, you know. Which, which uh, settlement did I decide I liked the best? Was it this one? Yeah, I think it was this one. So more more towers is better, you reckon? All right. So let's put one there and one here. We'll put the two five hundreds to get them firing off straight away. We're just gonna we're just gonna carpet the place with five hundred towers and see how that goes. Uh, who's which? There's the next tower they're gonna. The next one that would count is probably here. I think they'll actually cap this though. So I don't know if I should put one there. Uh, actually, fuck it. I'll put one there anyway. It'll give them more. Um, We'll be able to get, you know, get shooting earlier. See how fast we can take them out with just towers. I feel like they were left out for a reason. Don't know if they were thinking this far ahead, but Midland and Kislev were a tightish relationship in the lore, at least. Yeah, I know. I think that they were definitely, they definitely left out the White Knights of the White Wolf for a reason. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously I don't know. But yeah, I feel like they were left out for a reason as well. And, um, but yeah, the only thing is like, maybe they intended to do them earlier, but they... I don't know, there was some sort of issues with development or some other, like they thought they could do a better marketing, you know what I mean? Like maybe they were planning on doing Boris, Boris's stuff like, you know, er, like in game one, but then because of whatever development delays and everything, then, they, then they're on to date game two factions and the High Elves were super popular. So they had to do a High Elf DLC first and, um, you know, like maybe it's sort of that sort of, sort of, that sort of thing. So yeah. Yeah, there's definitely like heaps of um, heaps of legendary lords that could be done. I'm I'm really interested to see if they start doing like different sorts of DLC. You know, like instead of lord packs and race packs, they start doing like hero packs or like multiple lord packs. Like instead of doing two lords, two heroes, and four units, like which would be a normal sort of DLC, um, they do one with like four different lords and four different um and four different bodyguard units but no extra heroes or extra units or whatever you know um or they did like a heroes like legendary heroes pack or whatever they had like 10 different legendary heroes like 
How cool would that be if you had like 10 different legendary heroes like for 10 different races and you buy the pack and you get all of them and they've all got their own like special things going on and I don't know, it'd be really cool. There we go. Another uh, another 500 gold. Oh, we should have hunted down the... We should have killed them all. You mean like west side of the New World pack? Everything from Lustria? Yeah, like everything from Lustria, like or like Dogs of War pack or something like that, where you have like um, like different mercenary units. Like if they expand the mercenary system, and they could be like a mercenaries of the world pack or whatever that you get all these different like ten different types of mercenary units where you get like um, a lord and two units for each one or something, um, and but no like campaign mechanics or anything like that. So it'd be like sort of easy for them to be just the just the like model designers and the unit designers guys would be the only ones that would need to be involved in it. Otherwise, they'd just use the normal mercenary mechanics. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's yeah, that's the idea. I was just wondering if they it'd be cool if they do. Yeah, like different types of packs. Like yeah, like unit unit packs. That'd be really cool if you're used to buying. If you're used to like Games Workshop, just oh well, I don't know that you don't want to make too much DLC though because then people complain there's too much DLC and stuff like that. I think another thing that they really need to do is like make the old packs become like on special, like part of the base game or something like that, so that it's like less of a um, less of a like it's not as hard for people to get into it, you know. All right, we've got fecundity unlocked. Uh, Plague side, I really want to get. Um, I like the plague duration. If we want to do the money plagues, like I kind of like doing the plague duration on those. Ah, uh, there we go. This guy's coming in. Um, are we going to be able to defeat him? They got port. I'm not sure that we will. No, I will not shame my clan. We could send this guy down there with him along for the ride as well. I reckon we could probably deal with it. Like yeah, I, I basically want to give that settlement, those settlements to the other guys. But if we could keep them long enough to keep pumping the growth, um, then that would mean that we could get, you know, get, get this up to tier four. But basically, whenever I'm ready, I'm just gonna give, I'm just gonna gift lot to these, to these guys. Um, and then, um, then I don't think anyone will be able to really attack us from this direction. Um, I don't know, maybe I should just do it now. Because if we lose this, then it'll screw up everything. I'd love to get some Forsaken and Nurgle in there. They're kind of expensive though. You know, compared to Nurglings, like in Nurglings in in Kuzing, yeah, Nurglings in Kugat's army, only costing 44 gold each, you know? Pretty crazy. Yeah, reduce the barrier of entry. Yeah, that's right. Um, like, I mean, like years down the track after everyone's forgotten about like Wormer 3 and it's like, you know, 15 year old game or whatever, like people will still be like buying the game and be like, oh my God, this is amazing. I've never fucking ever imagined there could be a game this is fucking amazing, you know? How does anyone not know about this game 15 years ago or whatever, you know? Um, 
and like th if those guys still have to pay like 300 bucks or whatever to get into it like that's ridiculous you know um but even before that like before the game gets old like yeah there's still a lot of people out there that could get into the game you know and they and like i think then if they if you reduce the barrier to those people then you're actually going to increase the longevity of the game as well but yeah i think it was i think it was great i think Greg Wood Grudge just suggested that that they should make the packs be cheaper and stuff um and the thing is like they, and it, would, it could kind of work out well for them as well because if they do do that like if they say okay we're now retiring all the packs from warhammer one those those everything all the warhammer one dlcs now are just built into warhammer one if you just buy warhammer one at a reduced price for like 20 but 20 or 30 bucks or whatever you now get all of warhammer one and all of warhammer one dlcs included already in that game and there are no more dlcs for warhammer one they're all for free as part of warhammer one you know and then like after a while later on they're like okay all the warhammer two dlcs are now for free they're all part of warhammer two and that's and warhammer two is also ch cheaper it's only two, twenty dollars um but the new game warhammer three that's still eighty dollars or sixty dollars or whatever and all the new warhammer you know dlc is good and that that way they could if they wanted to do that then they could just like you know they could maybe make they could just then they could spam out dlc and if people criticize them about making too, too much dlc they could be like oh well you know after a year we make it all free and include it in the base game so you know we're not we're not trying to be money grubbers or anything but they would still make their money because 90 percent of the people would already buy the dlc full price straight up you know but then like people that you try if you're trying to get your mates into it then they don't have to pay that much but that's like i feel like there's a i feel like like you know we like we like we we want to pay full price because we're really into the game we want it straight away you know we're, we've got our mates that are like a bit into it but they're not as into it as we are and those guys just aren't going to buy it unless it's only 20 bucks for everything you know what i mean so it's like it's sort of like they're missing out on that 20 bucks they could get they can they're not going to get 400 bucks out of my mate but they could get 20 bucks out of him you know Nuggles, come on. Um, i think i like this side for this one i like this double side because they like they'll block one but they won't block them both Oh yeah, if we get these flyers, because if you have a unit that's within like a certain distance of these things, then they can't build, they can't build the barricades. I'm not sure if flyers count though. It'd be pretty good if they can. Yeah, so they've already put that barricade up there, but I think there's, is there one here as well? Oh no, maybe there is no barricade there. Let's count if they're landed. Oh, okay, but not if they are not landed. Okay, interesting. Let's destroy that. Okay, we... Loomis. I love it if the games themselves at least got a price reduction. Got a few friends to play with me through Game Pass. So asking them to buy two games would be a hard sell. Yeah, I think they just. I think it'd be really good if they did something like that. Like, like come on, like how much more money do they need to make out of Warhammer One? Seriously, like they already made a fuckload of money out of Warhammer One. They already made a fuckload of money out of Warhammer Two. Like, you know, like yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. It's a hard. It's a hard call because it's like. It is hard to get your mates into it, but on the other hand, like, the quality of the games is such that, like, the quality of the games, are, they are worth it, you know what I mean? Like, if you, like, anyone that you basically get to play these type of games, if they get into it, like, they will want to buy all that shit. They'll want to spend fucking 400 bucks and buy everything, you know? Because it's that, it's that fucking good. If you, if, if it's the type of game you like, you know what I mean? I don't know. So, yeah, it's a bit hard. It's hard to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's right. I guess lucky I don't have to. I don't have to decide because I'm not marketing executive. This should do pretty good damage against these aspiring champions, I would think. 
because they've got like enough enough health per per entity to soak it up. To the other dudes out oh, there. It's like, where is everybody? Shouldn't there be more of us here? I just get mixed up between the plague riddens and the um, and the um, heralds. They kind of like they look different, but they you know they kind of look similar. Look at that! We have three thousand. Aren't we missing two or three dudes? Yeah. Snipers are good for sniping. Sw the, yeah, the flyers are good for sniping lords. Yeah, they are good for sniping lords. I will agree with that. They should be good at killing these aspiring champions as well. Yeah, I, you know, I, like after all, after I like bagged out on, um, after I bagged on, um, like ragged on aspiring champions so much the other day. Like, they actually, every time I've fought them, they actually have been really tough and not, like, kind of annoying to deal with. So, yeah, I don't know. Take that with a grain of salt, I guess. Get a good bounce out of this. Oh yeah, that was a nice bounce. Alright, let's get some uh get some more heels bouncing around. Just cast that not overcast. Yeah, damn it. Donald Duck in my place. <laughs> I don't know, man. I haven't, I haven't heard the Donald Duck, but.
Big heal. Yeah, and once you get that big heal, it's like pretty nice. Love the story of Kugoth. Kugoth is a Nurgling. He was sitting on his father's shoulder watching him make plagues, but fell in and absorbed all of it. Now he dedicates his life to making equal, making an equal plague. Oh, nice. Shandark, it's the blue horrors that make the sound that sounds, in my in my opinion, originally like Donald Duck complaining. Oh, uh, really? He's like, meh. So like that kind of sound? Meh. Two thousand two hundred. All right. And can we get a loot occupier? So we've been we've been uh, maintaining our infections around five hundred. It's not too bad. Not. I mean, it's been going down a little bit. I spent I spent a fair bit on some pretty expensive ones. Oh, I should have. Cool gas. Mm, yeah, I was gonna loot it. I was gonna sack it and bust it down. That would have been better, actually. So we can actually build this in this settlement, can't I? And get, like, plague bear, like, get these guys out of this settlement. Do we need more money or do we need more? Hmm. I don't know. No, we'll, go for, we'll just go some growth for starters. May as well go crazy on the growth. Yeah, I'm pissed. I'm kind of pissed off I didn't. Get there in time. We're gonna have to waste a turn. If I had a force match him up here, we might have been able to do it. That's right. Only a turn. Oh uh, yeah, should we get? Should we unlock another plague. What are we trying to do? This one. We should be brain fog. Oh yeah, we can do that right now. All right, let's do that. We got enough room. Uh, well, maybe we don't have enough here. Yeah, we could probably do brain fog. We'd probably get five. Uh, so we'll do this one. And infections. And then we will... We should be able to give this to... Uh, this oh! Oh, that was the wrong plague. I didn't clear the plagues. God damn it. I didn't clear the plagues. The other, it was the other plague that spread. That was a waste. Could have got that then. Is that a pelt economy building? Who buys pelts from Nurgle? Lol. I know, who would buy like a mangy old pelt from Nurgle? Um, but the cool thing about it is it gives us plus one uh, plague ridden uh, plague ridden capacity. Which is pretty good. You just kind of want a mixture of them, really. You don't really need... Once you've got one healer, that's really all you need. Um, but, yeah, I mean, really, you don't need that many. I'll just go for whichever one's better, I guess. Armor is... Armor and... Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, armor. Uh, no, I'll probably go for this one. Top. Ooh. Now, we need a tier 3 settlement so we can start getting our cultists unlocked. We should be like a tier 3 minor settlement. 
Uh, we shouldn't be too far away on that, so... Maybe we should build like a maybe I should build like an income building here or something. If this is if they're just gonna be unable to ever take it. Um I don't know. Oh yeah, could get played for the um I want that melee de melee defense buff. But I also wouldn't mind going down this line to get make him a bit, a bit tougher. Physical resistance for nerglings, that's pretty nice as well. I'll go plus five melee defense for the nerglings for now. Make our nurgle blob, nurgling blob more, more resistant. Oh yeah, Black Boil. Did the big damage. Oh no, well this guy's all you're doing with this guy's trying to get Arcane Conduit at the end here, so just uh go through here as fast as we can. Alright, I'm done. These guys will never learn, will they? You can't defeat, you can't defeat our towers, our crazy towers. They're undefeatable. I noticed that the Sky Titan Relic stops working over time. Is the Sky Titan Relic the one that gives you the plus 25 technology research? How do you, what, so what, it just goes, the, like the buff just goes away, like the technology just goes down. Hmm, that's weird. So you, when you first put it on, you have 125%, and then after a while, you just go back to having 100% technology. Have you tried, like, re-equipping it on a different character or, or whatever? Uh, which one do we like the best? I think we like this one the best. And we're going to start off with two quick towers over here because the AI doesn't even bother to destroy them. Uh, but yeah, I won't build the one in the middle this time because they do take this point here. Go for that one next, probably. This one. Oh, maybe this one next, actually. Tried re equipping it, but now my research is at 100% and I have no reduction effects. Oh, did you try waiting a turn? Maybe it takes a turn for it to take effect. Oh, they did take the first point. God damn it. These ones, are, they're learning. Their, their AI is developing somehow. Oh man, check it out. He's just like assassinating these points. Just taking them out one by one. It's weird how the AI is so different this time. Like, other times he's like ignored all these points and not taken any of them. That's weird. That's really weird. It's taken everything. It's crazy. Like this might be the time they they get it. They've become, they've become more intelligent. Plague. 
I'm not bad from pulling the brainless guy. Yeah, exactly. If they push all this in, they might be able to actually take the point off us as well. So that's not great. He's not pushing the point down yet. These dogs are about to rout. Point's still up. Yeah, and no, I think we've got it. I think we're good. Cow's online now, so... I think we got it. I thought I was worried this the point was going to go down. I just kind of push in. If these guys had pushed in more, maybe it would be like that. But my oh, man, they're they're calling guy Rex my noble guy. But not after a spirit legend. Then I reckon. Hey, Sid. Cool. All right. as many as we can. Weaken them down a little bit. I should have got more towers for this. Oh, no, we couldn't because they already took all the points. Yeah. I can't even imagine wanting to conquer a Nurgle city. Can you imagine the spell of the place once you get in? Yeah, I think if you conquered a Nurgle city, you'd have to just burn it to the ground. Well, the thing is, you wouldn't conquer a Nurgle city. Like, you wouldn't go into the realms of chaos and fucking take over a Nurgle city, like, made out of demons. The city is literally made out of demons. Um, but, uh, sorry. But, um, but yeah, there could be like a, a like an empire uh, town or something. That got corrupted by Nurgle, and you know it was basically a—it's just like a plague, you know, um, like any place that got plagued. You just like probably smoke it out, burn it out, or whatever. And you know. yeah, you need to have it like consecrated by like priests and shit after you burnt it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It'd be, it would take a fair bit of reconstruction, deconstruction, then reconstruction. Spurt milled out. Hey, but Warmaster Moloch, I didn't even didn't even realize that was you. Um, Spurt Mildew does sound Spurt Mildew does sound like a slashy STI. The walls are melting, but it's home. That's right. Another two point one K. 
Another 50 infections. Yeah, I think the, oh, the money's good too. We're not low on infections, but we might want to make more. Weak with virus. Oh, here we go. Hero action, success chance, or no corruption, local province. Um, don't really need any either of those. I don't think he's got any good hero actions really. So, uh, I definitely don't need the corruption though. So, yeah, we'll take that. We never know. We might want to do a hero action, hero action one day. I like those. Um, I like those random events you get. You generally get like one per campaign. And just one of your heroes gets like a really cool buff. Or maybe sometimes you get him a couple of times per campaign, but yeah. I think I've got two or three on Rhesus. But my most of the campaign is only at one. We get one with Slanesh that gives you like minus six enemy leadership in local area. Um Rhesus gets one that gives you plus five food generation, I think. Oh, I've got to. I've got to do the thing. I must test my contagion. Yeah, we could have got a lot more plague spreads going on, but that's okay. Um. Oh, we got weird plate, Tim Sim would say. our brain fog yeah oh, we got 11 out of that so it's pretty good oh we had some already but we had like two already or something so we got nine out of that i think so yeah now we've got our growth plague all ready to go um i don't know if we need we don't i don't know if we really need the growth in this like do we really care if this gets up to tier four and all that tier four and tier five um Like, tier 3 is kind of, like, high enough, isn't it? Not sure. Alright, how about we give the Veil we'll of Nightmares... Um... A plague? We'll give them the... Green Pox. Actually, what's the um but yeah it's only chance of plague spreading from local armies and plague duration on local armies doesn't make any difference on settlement so yeah I'll put it on this one and um, just yeah just give him extra 50 growth you want tier 5 for money and late game units but it's not urgent well we've already we're getting soul grinders though at tier 3 right so Slightly more soul grinders. Oh, we get more soul, soul grinders. Okay, yeah. Check the Cathay channel later on if you still don't believe in final transmutation as Cathay. Why not try? Why not final trans? 
Oh, he's, well, did they actually? Zinch, Zinch can do final transmutation as well, can't they? Honey? Did they back off just because this Lord came? It's pretty crazy. Maybe I should just upgrade it a little bit. Just to see. If we can just hold this, like. Take that, we'll take that, and then we'll wipe these guys out. I use Nurglings with a couple of Forsaken sprinkled in, plus Soul Grinders all the way through to the end of the race. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a Soul Grinder. Even just like one, because you can heal them, you know, so it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Is there anything we can do to get increased tech with Nurgle? Actually, I haven't even checked the uh, ancillaries with Nurgle. So yeah, I talked about this the other day. Um, I should have done this earlier when we had more people before um, more people were starting going to bed and stuff. But um, yeah, the ultimate um, ancillary guide by specific is a fantastic resource and it's one that we've used extensively for Wemmer 2. Um, and uh, yeah, they've uh, and specifics just updated it for Wemmer 3 as well. So um yeah, we check this out. Um, yeah, so this is the vampire accounts. This is Woma 2 faction. Um, but if you go into Woma 3, you've got all of your demons of chaos and all that. Um, so we check out Nurgle. Um, then this has got all the triggers um, and everything to get every single follower and celery that you can get. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, allegiance points. That's pretty good. Rank up in a region which belongs to your military ally. Okay, Can, that's yeah, something to keep an eye out for. Uh, win a battle with more than seven Nurgling units, so that's just something you automatically get if you've got Nurglings in your army. Um, uh, win a battle which featured units, Plague Bearers of Nurgle or Exalted Plague Bearers of Nurgle. Get recruitment cost reduction for them. Uh, I don't really care about recruitment cost reduction. Uh, hero action, success chance, growth, upkeep for Plague Bearers. Win a battle while a unit of plague bearers or exalted plague bearers is in the army. Okay, that's pretty good. I wonder if you can get that for like exalted um, demonettes of Slanesh. Um, enemy hero success, uh, no corruption. Chance of plague spreading. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so this is what we want. Yeah, Kyoto Kill, Empire, Britonia, Kislev, and Grand Cathay. Get 25% chance. That's pretty good. You can't stack it, but you could put that on every... You have, like, the plus 15% on everybody. Um, campaign movement range. Lord, win a battle 3%. Okay, we just got to keep fighting battles till we get that. Um, recruit rank. Income from buildings. Win a battle and have negative income. Yeah, we have negative income quite a lot, so that's pretty easy to get. Yeah, so nothing too exciting in there, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's super important to try and get the Slanesh plus, plus level 20 Lord and Hero recruit buff. Second to last gate. Um, why? Just, yeah, you, if you want to make a Cultist Doom stack, you mean? I found I got the upkeep for Plague Bearers one, fighting and winning against Nurgle Revolts. Oh, okay, because the enemy features the Nurgle, um, the Nurgle Plague Bearers. That's cool. Alright. Um, cool, I think we're done for this turn. Oh, Rebellion in the Bleeding Spire. Oh, shit. 
Hopefully it comes at Vale of Nightmares. Uh, hopefully it doesn't kill this lord. Eh. Oh well. I should have, I should have paid attention to that more. Three times AoE heal ability. I don't even take the three times AoE heal ability, David. It's funny how everyone's got their different methods of playing. Like you're like you're like it's critical to the playstyle. I'm like I don't even take it. It's not even needed. So why you don't bother raising your lords to exalted? They just speak fake Ari sponges with no heals. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I prefer the um the heralds anyway. No, I, I prefer to take the um the mortis engine damage instead of the heal. Because you, if you're gonna have like three plague riddens in your army, you got like three healers, and you got like infinite magic, so you just fucking cast healing spells, you know. Um, you don't need the you don't need the three heals, and the three and you can only use the three heals three times, whereas you can use the um, I'm just layered blob for the win. Uh, yeah, again, like yeah, it's sort of like the same conversation we had about that other spell. It's like I just don't think you need more defense for a cult. That, like, yeah, I just don't think you need any more defense, you know. Like, yeah. Okay, at least they spawned here. That's good. I wonder if I should just attack them with, like, I just spawn some random armies, random units, and attack these guys now. Uh, what level's this settlement? Settle three. Okay, so maybe I should actually occupy this again. Maybe that's another waste of movement. Is level 2... Tier 2 is not really that big of a deal, though, is it? Because you can... Oh, it would save us a lot of money, though, I guess, to build it up. I blow up for every fight to out-heal even magic and range damage. Yeah, I blow up for every fight and out-heal as well, but I just don't think you need, like, nine extra heals in your army, you know? I mean, you could have... Um, infinite numbers of uh of melting the enemy you know it just depends what you I guess it depends what you're fighting if you're fighting against more range then you need more heals i guess and it depends whether you've got the infinite magic if you don't have the infinite magic, like last time i did both i had like one play like when i had two plague runes, i had one with heals one with the damage um and then when i got a second one i got a second one with the damage but i sort of yeah i sort of feel like i just wish i'd got a damage on all of them I feel like we need to have Kugath be the one that leads the... Actually, what's the garrison like? Actually, they haven't got much garrison on this one. So what we could do is actually, yeah, just take the shots. Like, we are gonna... Um, we are going to... Yeah, don't have Siege Attacker, so that's no good. So Kugath's got to... Okay, so yeah, so what my question is, should I should I loot and occupy this with Kugath, which will give us lots of money, um, or should I sack it with Kugath, which will give us even more money, and give him movement so he can head towards Tree of Damned Shades and get that next turn? Um, yeah, I think I want to... I think I'm going to do that. I just... I was basically, like, wondering, like, is it worth... This is going to get knocked down to Tier 2, but if I sack it first and then occupy it, it's going to get knocked down to Tier 1. Um... But yeah, I think I just want to... I think I'm just going to knock it down to tier 1 and then get, level it back up again. I think I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Make sure we've still got our. No, oh, I don't think we've got our two hundred fifty percent sack money on. No. All right, let's get our two hundred fifty percent sack money going. Is 
dissolve their flesh. Um, if you want damage, there's the there is the three times AOE damage ability, which does more damage than the Mortis engine in one fight, in my opinion. Plus, if you are a small flying unit. Mm, but with the Mortis engine in a flying unit, you can essentially just kill an infinite number of dudes, like if you're willing to cheese it out long enough, you know what I mean? Like if I have three if I have three plague riddens on on flies, uh, with or with the or with the or with the Mortis engine ability. Then they can just be hovering over the top of the enemy armies, like just killing them with the mortis engine, you know, and just flying around and and then just if then just you know like and and they're and like wasting ammo as well, and like and then just go back and get healed and it's just all good. It's all it's all gravy. It's really hard with a lot of these things that to like kind of yeah, it's hard to like judge. Without like doing like a side by side comparison, it's hard to say which way is better. I'm just saying don't go with the great unclean one. Yeah, I don't I don't think the great unclean one's good either, and I agree. I think it's better to keep your um keep your herald, hide him in your stack so that he uh doesn't get shot too much. And um, you know, it's all good. Um this um this I don't I don't know. You can't out heal your heal cap. Yeah, that's right. There's a limit to how much healing you need because you can only, you know, like if you cast um the big heal twice, that costs like um, forty eight wins. Then that's basically can heal. That can heal every your whole army to heal cap. Um, so you know, that's only half. Like that's a bit over half of your, your total wins, assuming you don't have infinite magic. Uh, I don't know where I want to come in on this one. There's not really nothing's really striking my fancy. I guess I guess here is fine. Whatever, let's do it. Uh, oh yeah, so I'm gonna send in my crap win crap minions first. Lob that door. No worries there. Um, Victory is a sure. Death Star. Yeah, know your Death Star is what it's all about. I'm the Depths, the Death Star. I'm down with that also. Oh, right. Get in there. there. Get some of that. The heal is fleshy abundance, yeah. So we, we've unlocked it now. We've got this heal, fleshy abundance. Maxed out, it's um, 24 uh, wins of magic. Uh, 24 or 28? 24 or 28 wins of magic. It's a lot, but you can cast that twice to basically heal cap your entire army. Um, this um, Blight Boil is pretty cool as well. There's a huge explosion area. I'm just now getting to the AoE spells. Didn't realize just how strong they are. Oh yeah, that's uh, that Blight Boil is really good. It's extremely slow to cast. It's like very slow to cast. It's extremely slow for it to actually go off as well. Um, it's got like a really long like timer on it before it actually goes off. So you need to have like a fully stationary blob, um, and then you but then you cast that. It does massive damage. 28 overcast fleshy abundance, okay, yeah. Right, 
put their uh, put their door down. Uh, we'll land our bugs before they get the shit show. Are you landing? Oh, All right. Let's let's come in and. I didn't. Did that? Hmm. I'm not sure if that bounced properly or not. Hey, let's do a blight boil here. Um, I don't have the. Um, I don't have the overcast version. Uh, nah, maybe I won't do it there. I'm not really sure what the damage radius is on the blight ball. Do you have to get them in the big circle, or do you have to get them more in this middle circle? Like, I think, I'm not sure if it's that whole big area or if it's just the, like, a little bit in this sort of center. Oh. I will pop one down here. See, see, it still has not There it goes, finally. That did pretty good damage. It did more, it did probably about as much as two of these would do. The like two of these overcast. Oh, they didn't. Doesn't bounce. Didn't bounce again. Mm, not bouncing is killing the damage on that, really. Everything must die. I feel like he's doing like a, one of those salesmen doing a big sales spiel, like. Everything must go. Not 100 percent but it seems like more damage inside and more pushing power outside the symbol. Pretty sure it doesn't matter, but that's my feel. No, I think so, Tok. Yeah, it seems like it did pretty good damage to everything in the big circle. But I don't know, it's hard to say, yeah. Let's whack down another one. I'll put it a bit more on top of our own units as well. No, I didn't really, couldn't really see. Can't wait to get vampire counts. Like, how good is it gonna? Oh man, it's gonna be so good. Like, I get so excited thinking about Immortal Empires. Um, not just because like, not just because I want to play all the other factions and stuff, but just like, yeah, how good is it gonna be when the like, you know, when Vlad von Karstein can go to war against Kugath, and it's like the vampire counts fight Nogal. You know, like, it's just it's the it's just the full glory of the craziness of Warhammer World. You know, with all these different factions just going ham on each other. Great. I don't know if I should probably stop casting some of my own Nurglings, but... Did a bit of damage to me. Wasn't too bad. Is the door in? Yeah. What are these guys doing? Are they on the side here? They're hanging out. You can like cap some points and stuff. I expect one faction to just dominate, like VC Dwarfs did on one or two. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah.
Does he get shot in the towers? Is still shooting? No. Oh, it's 25 overcast when you once you got the reduction on. Cool. I'll do it. Overtuned Orcs update was hilarious though. Went from dwarves winning 95% of the time to the wire across the entire map. Yeah, yeah. That was a bit of a reversal. My Cathay campaign has me with skeletons from Lamians. I don't know what that... That sentence doesn't make any sense, Dash. I don't know what you're saying. Are you saying that you've... Are you saying that you've got allies? You've allied with the Lamians and you've recruited skeletons into your campaign from the your Lamian allies? Blanket they vampires, yeah, nice. Oh, you can't, oh, you can't heal them though, right? Your healing doesn't work on undead, does it? Six thousand eight hundred k sack. A six thousand eight hundred sack. That's pretty good. So should I build, should I just build the war, the, um, so like if we want to get this going as quickly as possible, I should just straight away build this, just straight away build the, um, soul grinder building here, like straight up, right? And then as we like level up, we can get more things in there. Uh, I heard the most efficient way to finish the Cathay campaign is if you only control one province. If you can federate, then trade settlements if you can. Yeah, that uh, sounds pretty good. You can definitely do a lot of settlement trading if you play as Cathay. Because you've got so many factions around you that like you, and they've got so many settlements. I hope we can make it in one turn. After all that, uh, after all that, we put, can't make it on turn anyway. I hope we should destroy this or. get some forsaken just for fun oh they're only half health there probably don't need that many but a bit of overkill never hurt anybody Oh, we're getting, uh, I didn't realize we are getting reinforcements from the town as well. Oh, there is no reinforcements from the town. Let's... Oh, no, no, that was not reinforcements. It was just me doing my thing. Every faction has the corn UI. It's the... 
fact that every faction has the corn UI is so laughable, though. I can't get over it. Every faction doesn't have the corn UI, MFO. Every faction's got their own UI. No, they're, they're all different, Mepho. The Kislev's got their um, yeah, Kislev stuff up the top and different, you know, different bits and pieces. Korn's got his own thing. They've all got different symbols and shapes and things on their UI. They're all different UIs. Um, they're not they're not the same. Um, they're, um, they're all the same colour. Is that what you're maybe you're referring to? But they all the all the UIs were the same colour in one or two as well. They're just a different colour. Yeah, all the UIs are red, but all the UIs were yellow in Warhammer 2, like, so it was like all factions had, like, high off UI, or I, don't, I don't know, yeah. The details look the same to you. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're right, maybe some of the details are shared more than in Warhammer 2. And I'll have a look, I'll just have a look and see how Common 8, I think, that Nurgle's... Actually, now that I'm looking at this army, I don't feel like it's that great. Maybe I should have brought more dudes. <laughs> we might not we might not live through this. We got the full got the full surround on us, okay. That's fine. Get a hundred armor. Well, he just keeps attacking my um, forsaken. Damn it! I should have played, should have kept the two separate units, and he would have been able to be able to cast onto one. Oh, they broke him already. Coward. We got this. I hope he doesn't think I'm going to cast another spell on me. Hopefully, we can break him before he casts another spell. That'd be ideal. Just die already.
A few more kills here. Played Zeech and Nurgle. Zeech and Corn, now I'm seeing Nurgle here and I'm thinking Demon Prince as well. Okay. Are we gonna catch them? I feel like we should be able to catch them. Why can't we catch them? Oh, I love how we slow them down. Meaning all four have the same UI. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe all the um, maybe all the demon factions have the same UI. Wormer three was running slow in testing. Brilliant orc decided to make everything red because red makes things go faster. Makes sense. Hey, processing. How you going, man? Can't sleep. Check you about YouTube, and Messi's still here. That never changes. It's like war. War never changes. All right, if this guy comes back next time, we'll just like drill him with our um, drill him with a uh, assault. Um, ah, what are we doing? Um, sure, actually, we're going to be low on infections, so we'll grab a few more. Um, yeah, actually, we'll delete this guy because that way, um, that way the rebels will come to the other. Oh, nice book of Ashura. I mean, that's crap, but we can melt it down. Red go vroom. That's true. Oh, nice. That was a lucrative little rebel farm. Yeah, so we got 75 growth on there, which is good. growth on that one. 75 growth on that one. So yeah, we're doing pretty good on the growth in this particular settlement. Oh no, we don't, oh right, it's all in the same, right? So we don't have a 50 growth there. Not no growth there. Um... Do that'll spread. Um, oh yeah, so the interface. Um okay, so nothing cornate about this. Nothing cornate about that. It's generic. Nothing going on about that. No, yeah, okay, yeah. No, so all the yeah, so all the demon factions do have just a generic, generic interface, but it's not it's not coordinate. If it was coordinate, there'd be corn symbols everywhere. But yeah, but every faction in the game, regardless of which uh, whether they're demonic or not, all of the UIs are red. But the and the demonic factions all have the same UI. Um, that has this like kind of chaos symbol thing around here. 
Um, but you can see this is not specifically for Nurgle or Slanish or anyone, it's just generic. But um, if you play as Kislev, obviously they don't have that. And Cathay don't have that either, they have their own different UI. But yes, everyone has a red UI, that is true. I don't feel bad for my Forsaken. Toxfighter, right. Um, I'll give you a curse of the leper, why not? Give it a try. Balpus, plague ridden of death. Uh, yeah, you can go especially during that as well. Think about that. Think about that. Oh yeah, we're trying to be uh, still trying to be friends with Keros. Supreme sorcery. Now, Keros is not really digging us, is he? Even though we're trying to go to war with all of his enemies and be the very best friends that we can be. Do you come to befoul them? This. Right, surely now we're going to be friends. All right, yeah, he seems like open to uh, some, you know, moderate friendship. I shall consult the fates. Hopefully that's enough to get a, like a non-aggression pact. At least, um, you know, start the start the uh, like get bring him to the table, you know, start the talks. So we go. Corns does have corn symbols. Oh, really? Oh yeah, because Corns has got yeah, Corns got a different UI because Corns got that extra thing at the top that they can use to give skulls to the skull throne. Is that the only thing that's different about it? All this talk about orcs making the red UI go faster is because Terif just posted a meme about it. Oh, okay. Makes sense. He's very influential. Hey, Brandon Carolina. Hey, Messi, thank you for the positivity and creativity. You love playing the game alongside your streams. Keep on keeping on. Oh, thanks a lot, man. That's really nice. And that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly the intention. That, yeah, well, I guess I guess you can do whatever you want. But yeah, play play games alongside while I'm playing. Have a chat. Hang out. So, um, yeah, it's good times.
Yeah, this is my this is my spot over here. Hang out over there. Um, see, I don't know if we. No, I'll set up a tower here anyway. Let's see about that. Yeah, it's drilling in pretty hard already. I kind of wish I had to put the other one up now. Man, that one tower's killed half the unit already. Yeah, shit, I wish I had to put this other one up too. I'm just going to build the mega bomb towers. The big, the ginormous one. Or the, the biggest, give me the biggest one. This bad boy. Shoot six missiles at once. I mean, absolutely, I mean, I mean, nothing else but the absolute biggest fuck off power will do. Will do. <laughs> Take that one. Um, yeah, th thanks a lot for the super chat, man. Really generous of you, Brandon. No, uh, yeah, appreciate it. And I uh, and appreciate the kind of the uh, nice uh, comment as well. I wanted to see them get blasted by this tower. Six. Is that six? That was two. One, two. What the hell? One, two. I feel like that's not six. I feel like that's two. I mean, I don't know if my counting's off or what's going on, but. I feel like their idea of six and my idea of six are radically different. I feel like this tower is doing much better than the tier one tower. To be honest. Um, so great. I keep learning more stuff about this game like um, a lot of it from you guys as well like like I've learned yeah even just the last week I've learned a whole bunch of new stuff about Cathay about how about today I've learned heaps of stuff about Nurgle um, and I suppose all of you guys that didn't know the stuff that I learned and I learned it as well um, so yeah it's um, it's been really good I still think I'm going to run out of content about, like I still I'm dreading like you know do run out of content you know um then like to for me to play i mean um and i get bored of it but because uh you know i feel like there's just not enough factions and stuff but but like that's not dampening my enthusiasm right now you know but i just i'm, I'm worried because i know i know the fun's going to be over at some point i don't think ca is going to be able to bring out content fast enough to keep me satisfied you know yeah so i'm dreading that day when i like kind of you know run out of new th run out of things that i want to do but Happily, that has not happened yet.
A lot of plagues going around. Could do the custom battles fill some of the Mortal Empires gap. Yeah, we could do um could do like multiplayer and stuff as well. So grade twenty five, grade seventy, that's what we want. Grade fifty eight, grade twenty seventy five there. These two don't have it yet though. But yeah, we've still got pretty good growth going on here. <clears throat> oh. Oh, wait, we're on this one. Do we? So do we have the? We don't have the guy. We have to wait three turns till we get the soul grinder, right? <clears throat> I love your stream so much. I'm off to work with PTSD. Hence the hundreds of hours of Nurgle, and I've spent hundreds of hours watching them. So I know that your chilled attitude has made a difference. Oh no worries, David Barnes. Um, you're um, you've given me some lots of good advice about Nurgle as well. So appreciate all the good advice and um, the thought provoking questions about different spells and all that kind of stuff it's um yeah it's 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 really i feel like it's interesting talking about different spells applications and you know it's like one person likes to build character build them this way and another someone else wants to build them that way you know it's uh, yeah it's cool yeah we're not, we're not gonna make it it's okay um, probably could have done an ambush trap here, it would have been nice, but... Not to worry. Yeah, we won't worry about doing any plague spreads. Don't worry about doing any plague spreads this time. Still barely touched some factions, just starting ogres now, and I don't even know what to do with my camp right now. Um, yeah, um, the the ogre camp, the ogres are amazing, man. I've made a couple of videos about ogres, I think. You might want to check them out. They're both really simple, really short, I think. I might give you a bit, a couple of ideas. Think of like free food stations, so you build them at focal points. Yeah, yeah. There's like there's two things. You basically like your your camps are basically your capital cities that you're going to put up to tier five. Like they're your main capital cities that are going to be the big big ones that make you the big money makers, recruit all your badass, you know, units and stuff. So in like your capital, like Altdorf, if you play an empire, that's like your camps. Your camps are like your big capital cities. Um, and you want to put them in a safe place where they can be protected and, and uh, build up and everything. Um, but also, you can also use your camps for like throw away, um, like throw away temporary structures. Wherever you're attacking, you just drop that a camp, gives you an AOE, basically replenishment. So you can get replenishment anywhere in Chaos Realms, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so they, yeah, they're camps are everything. Camps are all things to all men. They're life and love. So, should I be putting down, like, should I perhaps put down a, another soul grinder building here? And then, like, we can level that up as well. I don't know if it's point, any point leveling that up, but, you know. So here we go. How are we going with growth? So this one's got uh, no growth. This one's got 50-25. That's good. This one's got 50-25. That's good. This one's got nothing. Um, <clears throat> right, maybe we'll drop another one on here. We're getting very low on um, infections. We're going to have to um, start transferring. I have a soul grinder building and carnivorous compost building in every minor settlement. Yeah, nice. And that'll give us decent money as well, really, won't it? So it's not really a bad idea economically either. Cool, 
speak, father. Must fight Hmm. Still going pretty well. These guys just never learn. It's making a good, pretty good money, pretty good infections. I might actually, yeah, it's giving us good infections actually. This time, I might build more. Yeah, well, we do. We'll do the two. Oh, this has got like two furies. Those furies are going to be useless. What are they going to do? I think you can disband the camps. Yeah, you can disband the camps. Yeah, they cost two two thousand to build, and you get nothing back when you disband them. But um, oh, they're still it's still really good. Alright, we'll go with the two small towers again because I feel like one tower, one small tower, just absolutely wrecked them last time. See how much damage these towers do before they even get to anywhere. Like one of them killed like half a unit of Chaos Warriors before they even got inside last time. Yeah, I'm just gonna build them everywhere. Just build like 500 towers everywhere. And that way as well, if they run away, then we can... Um, Oh yeah, they're doing the other AI where they just bypass everything. So they're just going to leave the towers up this time. It's pretty cool. Might take out this middle one. Yeah, we got this. Oh, is that? Oh, you know, we didn't build anything there. Wait, that's so weird. They first function like slow cavalry. Yeah, kind of. But they've got they they kind of like almost like single entity monsters in a way. Like when they get into melee, uh, they probably won't work against these guys, but. Against like normal infantry, they kind of like get in and like smash them around everywhere and stuff. Like I don't know if Cav really do that. Well, they're taking, they are taking this. Yeah, I was gonna say and see if we I don't think you can't build new towers after the um you can't build new towers like after the thing's over, but we can just like wait, like run out the time and the tower like we built like a bunch of towers all over the place, right? So they should just drill these dudes as they're trying to run away. Oh 
Uh, very few dogs survived. Damn it. Keep shooting them. 43. 41. 36. 34. Shoot them again. Ah, no. Uh, so 34 dogs got away. That was infections there. The Taos seem way strong for 500 supplies. Yeah, they're pretty good. They are pretty good. I'm not sure if the um, the level 2 ones are more powerful, but the level 4 ones definitely did not seem very good. Like, the level 4 ones say they hit with 6 missiles, but you can only see 2 missiles coming out. So I don't know what's going on there. And I didn't feel like they were doing heaps more damage either, but I'm not sure. 321. So does that mean we're going to get 321 infections? I can't remember whether if it's like the full amount or half of it or... I oh, know it's like a percentage of it's like yeah it's like a random amount I think it's whatever captives you get I think so it'll be like between like half the two thirds maybe of that or so, around half like a bit random oh what the fuck? so there's some weird in there's one thing when, weird thing when you defend a settlement battle you only get the settlement infections instead of the full infections. Like, that should be like 350 or 400 or something, I reckon. You know, we'll take the money in that case. Still, it's a good little money maker. Extra 800 gold a turn. It's better than any other, uh, you know, any other building that you could get to make money. <coughs> it's just annoying you got to fight a five minute battle every turn, but good for money. We've got the plague spreading. Um, and next, mm, yeah, um, plague site I really want to get, and don't really need any of the other stuff on here at all. Um, probably take the replenishment for the noglings. We're in 19. Yeah, we're getting dangerously low on infections. After we take this, we'll do we'll do the infections trading thing with these because we've got all of our armies here, so we can get as we can get the like maximum amount. Um, and that will um, actually make us should make us a profit of like 50 to 100 extra infections. So. If we start doing that every turn, we can just keep our infections up by spreading. I don't think we can really deal with the Forsaken right now because they are too, they're too flimsy. We'll see how they go, but I feel like they're not going to survive well, even in the in the blob. If we had like an AOE um, regenerative healing aura thing that affected everybody, not just Nurglings, then they'd probably be alright. But yeah, with the Nurglings getting like double regeneration and, you know, them just not. I don't think, like Nurgle doesn't, yeah, no, Kugath doesn't get regeneration, does he? I think the fourth tower might be bugged. Oh, really? Is the third tower all right? Because if yeah, if the third tower is good, I wouldn't mind trying out the third tower. I think a lot of people just aren't doing the campaign. Very hard ogres was like 0.4 percent. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think a lot of people just aren't doing the campaign. I've never, I've not, I've not finished the campaign. I, yeah, I haven't even tried finishing it yet. Um, I've, I've, I've like started to do it and then just you know got bored with that campaign and started a different one. Did I decide? Hmm. I feel like that, that entryway there is pretty direct. Actually, this one's not bad too. Actually, yeah, this one's not bad. Let's try this one. So 
something different. It's pretty solid. Fly boy, I'll blow everything better, but I want to get some um some um uh, black uh, what's it called? Black Sun? No. That's the um I can't remember the death the uh higher level death spell is. What faction is the tier four tower actually worth buying? I haven't played one two here, it's not worth it. To here it's worth it. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, apparently somebody said that the um, tier four, the yeah, Overlord two said he thought that the, the fourth tower is bugged. Purple Sun of Xerxes, yeah, Xerxes, Xerxes, yeah, Purple Sun, yeah, correct. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I haven't really tried out all the towers, but yeah, I felt like the tower, the tier one tower, is doing some good work. Um, I couldn't really perceive that the tier 2 tower was doing any better than the tier 1 tower. And I couldn't perceive that the tier 3 tower was doing any better than the tier 1 tower either. So, yeah. Dash Dash was explaining... Oh, somebody was explaining that they, like, what they do in a bit more detail, but... Let's drill these aspiring champions. Now that I've started landing the play drones, they're actually doing all right. towards bloodthirst is with noble hero single unit spam with heals is great yeah for sure i feel like it's a bit like too much though like i don't know i don't know it's just that's just a personal thing i just like i kind of like troops and stuff I like like having little lots of little dudes um just in general like i don't mind if they i like i like heroes but i prefer heroes the little dudes not like ginormous monsters and stuff just as a general rule Some, this is some diff got a bit of trouble over here.
I'm sure what's going on with these guys, they're going to be getting shot by the towers. It's hard to disengage with the blade drones, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting some more of them, actually. That's a good idea. So, yeah, a big, uh, a big blob of plague drones. Hmm, a big blob of plague drones would be interesting, because they'd have such low entity. There's only 10 of them in a unit. So they'd have, like, heaps of health. They're very, very healable. I'm trying to get a good heal in here, um, but I'm trying to kill this guy as well at the same time, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on. You need at least four of them for his weapon quest. Quest? Oh, really? Miao Ying is apparently a monster from Beastman Rosto. <laughs> okay. Well. together. I'm going to put this power reserve to wear off. It's bonkers hard. There are flamethrower dwarfs and artillery everywhere. Oh my god, that sounds crazy. Especially versus Nurgle, that's like the worst thing you could have. Flamethrower dwarfs, that sounds like a nightmare. Well, your Nurgling's getting screwed. As well as better bring some brutal machines. This is gonna be so hot. It's gonna be so good. Be excited. I wonder if we could go. If we gave Kugath another. Go with this. Maybe we could get two heals in. That'd be pretty good. full heal. Oh well. We can do one more little heal on um, we got.
All right, beautiful. Chaos Dwarves will serve as another buffer between Kislev and Cathay. Um, right now, the Ogres drag Cathay into a war with Kislev, if you aren't careful. Ogres drag Cathay into a war with Kislev. Oh, really? Hey, Brent. Brent Smiley says, do you have another Forbidden Rod? Mm, not sure. Get another Forbidden Rod in there, you reckon? Might be a good idea. More magic. Once we, uh, so I, that's just, we're just doing like the poor man's infinite magic at the moment. Um, but once we level all these characters up a bit, we'll be able to do the, the proper stuff. Oh, physical resist, very nice. This to so I can have infrastructure or probably plague spread. You're right. Yeah, plague spread is probably the thing to get. Okay, let's get some more spreads happening. Um, I don't know if there's much else we need to unlock really. Um, oh yeah, we really want to unlock uh, mucus for the Vanguard deployment. This is really nice. If we get a Vanguard deployment on our armies, it's going to be super super good. Um, this oh yeah, this physical resistance is good as well. Uh, well, we need um, we need limb blight for that, so that's cool. And this one's got mucus runs. That gives casually replenishment experience, but today oh, we don't really need that. But yeah, it's still it's cool. We get all the plagues. Poor man's, poor man's winds of magic. That's great. I'm going to start. Let's call it, let's start calling it that too. Yeah, it's poor man's infinite magic. That's right. Hey, Andrew Tobias. Andrew Tobias doesn't want to hear any of this dirty talk about forbidden rods. Everyone get your hands off your rods. All right. So we're going to do this one. And uh, infections on Kugath. Oh wait, before we get too crazy, we've got to get rid of all of our other spreads first. So, over here, get this guy. Then we're gonna give this guy to this guy. Then we're gonna give this guy to this guy. This this guy to this guy. Yeah. Now I think we're good because we I think we're good because we when we did that when we did that battle, it did it like everyone spread their plagues back and forth to everybody when we fought the battle. Because if you all fight in the same battle, like it's a really good chance that you'll spread the spread it to everybody else that's involved. So we don't have to we so yeah, so we probably didn't need to clear our um clear our plagues this time but that's all right better safe than sorry get them get them cleared now i'm going to give kugath the biznich so this is the plague egg we've currently got zero spreads so we're starting completely fresh and um, we'll put our plus five infections on oh yeah just double check so we've got 363 infections right now so we'll see if we can come out with a net profit we should come out with more than we spent um yeah, so we give him plague pox, and we give him plus five infections when plague is spread. Um, yeah, we don't need to worry about any of this other stuff. And that's going to cost us 50. Boom. Um, so we already got um, we already got 10 back from just that one spread to give it giving it to Kuga. Um, so this should have been three 
three, one, three. So we already got ten back, so that's good. And uh, this this guy will get it. And he gives it to this guy. Oh, yeah. oh, I've got a double spread there. I don't know if that's that might be bad. Might have stuffed it up. We're done now. Just do one more circuit just to make sure. Oh no, there we go, got another one. I think we're definitely done now. I might do one more circuit just to be absolutely sure. Just really scrape the bottom of the barrel to get every one of those spreads that we can possibly get. How do we go? So we started off with 363 infections. After we spent 50 to give Kugat the plague, we actually ended up with 413. So we ended up with 50. We got the we got the infection for free, and we got 50 back as well. So we made a profit of 50, and we got a total of 16 spreads in one turn. So at that rate, we'll be able to get the full 50 to unlock down to here in like three turns. So that'll be good, or four turns, maybe. And one time we think we got 19 in one turn, so that's pretty good. Plus we can get spreads over the end turn, because all four of our armies have got this plague now. So they can all randomly spread it, you know, over the end turn. So that's cool. Alright, now Kugath is on his way to his next target. So this, um... <clears throat> yeah, so this... This, um... Area... Um... Yeah, we're just going to keep doing this, building these in every settlement. I don't know. It seems a bit crazy, but... I mean, it's just what you do. Um, so, should we go... So, 50, 75... 50, 75... 50, 75... Yeah, so all three of these have got the maximum growth. So, we're getting 395 growth. Pretty solid. Um, let's see what it is. Yeah, I was thinking about trying to go this one for tier 4. We're nearly at tier 4, so it'd be cool. And we can make it like a fortress, so if anyone tries to take it, you know. Hey, David Barnes, you really have to go to bed now. No worries, man. Yeah, thanks for your contributions to the stream. Much appreciated, dude. Uh, I remember having a bug suffer attrition plague, started working as my own army. Oh, no. Do you ever use plague symptom that provides extra money every time a plague spreads? Yes, I do. Um, yes, I do. Um... And now is about time to start using it as well. Although, I don't know if we really need to. Yeah, I do I do use it, Bryant. Um, like, um, so yeah, I've been, like, lately I've been thinking, I've been waiting till I get this one, the plague spread, plague duration spread as well. Um, plague duration, sorry. Um, not, not the plague spreading, not this one, because you're 5% plague spreading. Um, because that's only on Nurgle settlements, right? This is like on like all armies and settlements. Um, so yeah, so basically I just get um I just choose a random one. I don't care what this what this primary thing is. I usually do this one actually because that way if it goes back onto my own settlements, I get the I get the growth. Um, but uh, yeah, you could do some of these other nasty ones for the enemies or whatever. And then yeah, I'll do, like do so I'll do like that, that, and that. And then, um, yeah, or um, instead of doing... No, yeah, I do do that, yeah. So instead of doing this, you could do like that to get infections back. But I feel like the infections one's not really good unless you're like... Like, it's better when you're doing the transfer thing. Play, chance of plague spreading 20%. Do you reckon the 20%... I don't know how it works, though. Do you reckon the 20% is better than... Than the... Um, better than the... Um, 
play duration. But anyway, the thing about this, the thing about the highly contagious is you, you can't get it this early. Like just about just about now, a few turns ago, we unlocked um, Postulant. And like, I feel like once you get Postulant, that's when I sort of go more into this. But um, but yeah, you can just you can just drop this. Like if I just infect something, I'll just instantly get 150 gold, you know? Um, so you can do it like that. Um, yeah, I might actually do that. Um, what do we got here? We got 50-25, 50-25, yeah, and these other ones don't have it. Um, so yeah, let's 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 do it. Let's start spreading this shit. So we'll give it to Stormbreak Mountain. And yeah, you'll see like, so we've got 15, 250. <clears throat> now we've got 15, 500, so you just instantly get 150 gold. And then if that happens to actually spread anywhere else, then, you know, we'll get 150 gold each time. Yeah, I don't know uh, whether we should build money or what, yeah. It's quite good to have one anti scaven building in each province. You then use it as your plague spreading building. Why is it a plague? How is it a plague spreading building? What? Chance of spreading plague plus 50%. Oh, yeah, that's that's um, that's um cool, David Barnes. I hadn't thought of that. Didn't you go to bed? Um, but yeah, yeah, good idea. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it kind of makes sense because all the other scaven buildings say, you know, reduce chance of plague spreading, but of course the Nurgle one increases chance of plague spreading. So that's pretty cool. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'll wait till this gets to tier 4, I reckon. Um, I'm trying. I don't know whether we should like in every one of these because we're not. We're probably going to lose all these settlements eventually, right? Like fairly, probably not even that far away from now. Um, so I'm kind of thinking it's probably not worth. It's really not even worth building. Like, we we'll just build growth in these ones. And so basically it'll just be money. If like if it keeps going for a while, it'll give us some money. Um, so it'll be cool. <clears throat> it's not that he lied, it's just that he failed to go to bed. Just like me. Yeah, that's it. You were, you were doing your best. You just couldn't quite manage it. I feel like I need some sustenance, but I'm not like allowed to eat food because I'm, I'm on a diet. I'm allowed to eat food, but I'm just not allowed to eat any carbohydrates, which is like the exact thing that you want to eat like most of the time. But instead of that, I'm going to get some salami. So I'll be back in a second.
All right, I'm back with with my salami. I think 100 grams of radish has 15 calories in it. Oh, really? Radishes sounds pretty good. Actually, what I've been eating is like tins of tuna with um, three, there's this like three bean mix you can get. It's got like red kidney beans mixed with like uh, I don't know. I don't remember all the names of the beans. Wow. Different types of beans. There's like four different types of beans. You get them in a can, and they've got. I mean, they've got a fair bit of calories, but not as much as like, you know, know rice or something. Do I play Cathay or Dawn of War Dark Crusade? First world problem. Uh, you should play. Don't play Dawn of War Dark Crusade. Play Dawn of War Two co-op campaign with one of your mates. I feel like Dawn of War 2 is like the best action co-op game ever made. It's so good. Love it. Is there any garrison in here? Oh yeah, there's a bit of garrison. Alright, so this guy's not going to do shit. He's not going to do shit. Plus he's taking attrition, so he's having a bad time. So, okay, so how's the best? So we've done, we've like conquered our first off, uh, our first guy. We rescued these lands um, and gave them back to our ally. We've wiped out this, his enemy that was like pretending to be a loyal, you know, a loyal partner up until now for 13 turns. But we knew that he was going to betray us eventually. So we, uh, we beat him to the punch. Corruption, Nurgle, Nurgle corruption's already a hundred percent. Like, blam, straight away, hundred. So, does like does Nurgle corruption not get rid of like un, that other corruption? I'm not sure what's going on there. Confused. I've got twelve turns remaining of that one. Eight turns remaining of that one. Seven turns remaining of that one. Twelve turns remaining of that one. How good's that? Those, those um, growth ones just stay around for ages. Why'd you surround him instead of zone locking him with Kugath? Oh, I didn't have enough movement. <laughs> yeah, Kugath didn't have enough movement. He would have only been to like right here. <clears throat> I'm not, and I'm not trying to surround him. I'm just, yeah, that's just where they happen to get to with their movement. Except for this guy. Do the corruption's attrition stack? I think the corruption attrition's are. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. That'd be pretty crap if they did. But I mean, to be fair, like places that are extremely heavily chaos corrupted probably aren't really places that you should be hanging out anyway. Yeah, so anyway, like, yeah, so I was talking about the uh, money. So, like, yeah, you get plus 150 from this, and you get plus three plague duration from that. You don't unlock Highly Contagious until later. Uh, I'm not sure how much later. Um, so you get, um... Wait, when do we get... When do we get it? Uh, yeah, you get Highly Contagious here. You get Contagious Horde, sorry, here. And then... We get highly contagious the next year. So in a few more turns, we can get that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether the 20% or the plus three duration would be better for the... Um, I guess the spread is... No, the spread is better, isn't it? Obviously, because it's only spreads that gives you money, not the duration. But I'm thinking like if if the spread if it, if the spread's really low and it doesn't stay... Like the plague doesn't last long enough to spread. Like maybe the three more turns gives you more chance of getting a spread. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I don't know. But then again, if the spread's like high enough to give you more spreads before you run out, then the spread's going to be better because it can bounce back and forth. Um, so, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to try that maybe later on. But um, what was going to say? But yeah, right now we're making heaps of money because we've got the the 250% sack income one rolling on um, Kugas Main Army every time we take a settlement. And um, plus we've got this um, pet rebellion going on here that we can just farm every turn for like another 800 gold or more, I think. Actually, we get the battle gold, then another like 800 
after the battle as well. Um, so yeah, but um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, yeah, but anyway, um, but yeah, I, I probably will like start doing the gold thing um, once I don't care about growth anymore. Like I want to make all, all make sure all my growth's happening at maximum speed as long as I've got money. If I started to get low on money and you know my growth was all capped out, then you know I've changed my priorities. I guess that's that's kind of my thinking about it now. Anyway, hey, learn pledge. Go with 20% spread. For me, it seems like once you get that tech done, your plagues will always transfer to multiple settlements. Okay, yeah, that's well, that's what you want. That's what you want, isn't it? And that's the feeling you don't really get with Nogal, like all through the early game. So I think, yeah, that's that's cool. We got Slave Father. What are we going to go for now? Um, I want that buff, but I also want... Um, well, that fitted stench AoE of leadership's good. I'll, I'll get the buff because it's a one point error and it's right here. And then we're done with this. I don't think I'm going to take... I'm not going to take Eagling Grenades. Not yet anyway. I'm not going to take that probably at all. Because the because uh, the AOE get, does damage to your own units apparently, um, so it's really bad. It's sort of like only very situational when Kugas on his own that you could maybe use this, um, you know. Like, because if you cast this in the blob, you won't be able to get them out. They'll be all stuck in your blob, and you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah. Anyway, got that. Then we're gonna go uh, personal for Kugath. And then we're going to go red line to buff our Nurgle, Nurglings more. Nurglings and our um, Soul Grinders, probably. Um, so, yeah, speed, physical resistance for Nurglings, good. Can increase our tankiness. And armor and melee defense for Soul Grinders, yeah, that's pretty good. And then once we go up here, we get melee attack and spell resistance for Soul Grinders. Don't really care about that. And. Plus for melee attack and melee resistance. Oh yeah, no, melee resistance for plague um, for Nurgle wings. That's really important. Um, this is really nice as well. And this is really nice as well. Yeah, this is really nice. Minus forty um, melee defense. Yeah, cool. So we definitely want to max out our red line. I think like we should have enough points for all that, shouldn't we? Oh, uh, maybe not. We might be starting to run out of points. <clears throat> Oh, wait, no, we go, it goes up to 50, yeah. So, yeah, so basically just go to the end of his personal line and we'll go to the end of the red line, and then we'll be done. Need that missile resistance, too. Make sure taking that already. One turn away from getting our sweet um, damage. Arcane Conduit. Step one of our infinite magic. My, my level 50 Meow has zero points in blue line, not even the one in Route Matcher. Oh, why is that? Because you got to, um, is it because you were able to cap out movement without it? Look at that, another 1200 gold just for that crap. Oh, 1500 gold. This is like a great money maker, this thing. It's like just making heaps of cash. Yeah, we'll go growth all provinces. Yeah, not not that big of a deal, but Rising Fortress got a, got a plague. He received a plague. They received a plague. Hmm, okay. Now I want. I need um, a tier three minor settlement. So yeah, I'm thinking bleeding. Yeah, I'm thinking Bleeding Spire. We'll go for uh, making that a tier 3 settlement. 
so we can get some uh, get some cultist heroes. My test, my um, we'll just make sure every single every one of our armies gets to get into this fight, so we can get more chances to get magic items. Um, also, we can get our spreads. We can all get our free spreads from the battle. Oh yeah, they've got this. They've got the one on that gives us five. Um, gives us five. Um, five infections per spread. So if we spread this three times on this, which we should get, so three twelve we are now. Ah, uh, we didn't get any spreads. There's no spreads in that. Okay, well, damn it. And we took damage on our bloody rot flies again. Bloody death machines. Let's see, you already made a bug with lightning strike? Yeah, yeah. If you lightning strike, you get all of the, um, you get all the XP from all of the armies, even though you only defeat one of them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm seven cleansing waters and a silk weaver and a sycophant. Nice. Um, Shane the Smith just pointed out that if you take the uh, Blight Swarm here, you get four uses of minus 20 melee defense, 200 meter range. So it's um, it's uh, it's a single target, but it can spread um, up to five units. And this one um, uh, gives minus 40 melee defense, um, but you can only use it twice. Yeah, see, a lot of a lot of units don't have forty melee defense, so this one's going to be a bit overkill on it. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard call. Yeah, this one actually kind of is better in a way, isn't it? Because it's got only a sixty second cooldown on it as well. Well, this one's got a thirty second duration. This one's got a twenty second duration. Hmm. No, I don't know. I feel like this one's probably is better. Because I feel like you're gonna want to use it on you're gonna want to use it on a lord or something where you, you know something tough that's hard to kill. Um, so yeah, I probably would still yeah. I mean, good point that they both have their pluses, but, um, but yeah, I think I'll go for the the bigger one because I feel like if you have a really hard nut to crack, that's when you're gonna want that bigger. Yeah, we really need to do the spreading again. Glory for Blue Father. My bruised Oh, this guy's taking a uh, settlement. Look at that. So where's, where's Monolith of the Boy? I can't even see that. Um, Alright, let's just check out these actions. He's got two settlements. He's got two settlements. Yeah, so we'll take out both of those guys. Start off with Subtle Torture. These should be fairly easy to take out. This guy's angry with us. <clears throat> Tough titties. Right, I won't, I, maybe I won't spread this turn. We're going to be going up against um, Anish this time. <clears throat> I 
require to only the most infectious. We'll max out. Uh... Oh, what? Did I get the wrong Perfect. shit? You got like the wrong one or something. I think we got this now. Yeah, we'll do another spread out because I think we can do it without moving Cougar. So it won't cost us anything, sort of. Um, so yeah, we'll do this one again and we'll do this one. That's going to basically give us all of our infections back again, hopefully. So we started off with 312. to Kugarth this one and infections oh wait no, we need to spread we need to make sure we've got our spreads first um so yeah take the 36 this guy to that guy that guy gives it to Kugarth cool I think we're all good I'm going to Kugath, give Kugath this one and wow. infections. And this guy, I'm get from him. So this um Nurgling can just disband. Yeah, now he gets his move back. Kuga uh, can get a couple more Nurglings in there. And then Kugath can be like on his way to the here. <coughs> I just force march in there a bit further. And um, yeah, so we start off with 312, we're up to 362, so we got we got a profit of 50 again. So that's pretty good. If only the 150 gold wasn't bugged. I don't think the 150 gold is bugged, Matt and Matt's I think it's um I think it's maybe I think it only works on settlements. I think it's the tooltip is bugged. It's supposed to say settlement spread, but it just says all armies and settlements, you know. So yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean maybe it is maybe it is bugged. Maybe it's meant to spread every from everything. But um but yeah, it seems to spread from settlements but not from 
from Amis. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's bugged or if it's just that the tooltip's wrong. But yeah, either way, it'd be good if it spread when you did it back and forth between your armies, you could make heaps of cash. I was gonna eat this salami, but now I feel guilty. Maybe I shouldn't eat it. Alright, I've returned. I think they missed a cool opportunity for in-combat buffs for Nurgle based on deaths in battle, themed around 7 and scaling up. Maybe mods. Yeah, that would be cool if they had some sort of thing like that. I don't, oh, I don't know, I feel like deaths... Oh well, I got an extra plague ridden. Oh, we could get an extra plague ridden. Improvement costs for 50 of a greater and clean one units? What? We don't want that. We'll have the free euro for sure. It's probably not, you know. He may not be the hero, hero we want, but... <clears throat> Scarborough's armor plus six. Hmm. Once we get a few cultists in there, it's going to be good too. Bro, this is like never going to catch up with us gonna be like forever chasing after us. Oh this is nice they left his he left his army outside. Your interference ends today. Hmm. I should be good if we can knock him back towards there and then we declare war on them then they'll reinforce him then we'll be able to fight their garrison and him kill them all and then hopefully get all the infections from the garrison you know because if we fight if we attack the garrison if we take this then we won't get any infections from the garrison but if we can draw the garrison out and fight them on the field then we will so that would be really cool Yeah, if we attack from here, that direction. Then he should run back towards the other settlement, right? Unless he's a fool. Don't be a fool. God damn it! I'm <laughs> like, why didn't he retreat? What an idiot. It could have been so beautiful. How cool do these um, Forsaken of Zeech look? They look wicked. They look heaps snazzier than ours. Ours are all like bland and green and black. Those are all like fancy looking. Zeech and his fancy groups. Check out these uh, units. They, I feel like they're going to be like this thing. That's going to be horrendous. Yeah, these flamers of Zeech. What's the range on them? 90. They're going to do some severe damage to us, aren't they? I think they do good single entity damage too. Um, if we can... Oh, shit. Maybe if we... If, um, maybe we should try and send our heroes in first to kind of go through the trees and... Um, If they are really smart, they could nuke Kugath or any of your heroes. Yeah, for sure. They could definitely do that. But luckily they aren't that smart, so they aren't going to do that. 
Oh, actually, what we could do... Hmm. No. Actually, yeah, what we could do is, first of all, shoot shoot their flamers with Kugath. If we can knock down a few entities with him before we engage, that'd be super good. 13,000... No, it's me. 3,000. Uh, yeah, we could take out a few of those dudes, I reckon, before we um, before we engage. Alright, yeah, we'll see if we can knock them down a bit. You guys just in there and do your thing. Is he shooting? There we go. Ah, oh, they're not gonna. They're gonna like regenerate between shots. Oh no. Maybe not. Did you just wildly miss them? That was ridiculous. Come on, Kugath. Accuracy. They're regenerating. If you hit two shits, if. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're into health damage now. Yeah, basically, if we, can, if we can get these flamers down, I'm not really worried about anything else. Like, these guys are anti large, but they're not going to, like, do that much to Kugath, I wouldn't think. Oh shit. He's after me. We've got a crash. I actually got the Demon Chaos Demons campaign working thanks to you, Mercy. Oh, thanks a lot, Michael Sweet. I'm um, glad. Thanks for the feedback, man. I'm glad. Uh, glad you um, got it going. Um, but yeah, I think we got a crash. Um, that's okay. I mean, I think we've been going for eight and a half hours now, and um, yeah, I think a lot of people have kind of gone to bed now and stuff. So um, yeah, that's maybe a good time to end it. Anyway, we'll have this have that same little battle to start off with tomorrow. So we'll see how I go against those flamers. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for uh, hanging out, guys. It was a big stream today. Lots of people watching, and I was really excited to play uh, play Nurgle again. Figure out a few things about their campaign. Um, hopefully, you guys did too. And um, yeah, I'll just have a quick check and see if there's anyone anyone uh, streaming Total War right now. Uh, mm, 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 nah, no one streaming in English. Um, let's see if anyone's doing Battle Brothers. Uh, Arch Duck is doing a blind playthrough. Okay, well, I don't know if any of you guys have been watching my um, Battle Brothers playthroughs, but. Um, there's a, a uh, spear wall didn't work. There's a, there's a guy, um, Arch Duck. 
He's just playing some Battle Brothers right now. Um, I've been doing a lot of Battle Brothers streams lately, so if anyone's interested in that, I don't know if I'm going to do a Battle Brothers stream today, but if anyone's interested in checking out some Battle Brothers, um, go and support uh, Archduck Productions. He's only got he's got two people watching him right now, so if you know a handful of you guys went over even for a minute and just said hello, um, that'd be really cool. I'm going to go and say I'm going to go and say hello as well and see what he's up to in his campaign because um, you know it's always nice to encourage other small streamers and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you want to go, you guys want to come and check out Arch Duck with me. Um, we'll uh, we'll see what's going on in his uh, blind th playthrough of um, Battle Brothers. There it is. There. All right, I'm off. I'm off, guys. Um, come and uh, yeah, come and check out. Uh, go and go and check out Arch Duck if anyone's interested. Um, yeah, it'd be really cool if uh, a couple of guys would come over with me and say hello to him. South All right. Of course. Yeah. Um, anyway, catch you guys. Thanks a lot for the stream, and uh, yeah, I had a great time. So. Um, Catch you guys later.